Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to live coverage of round 10 of the Super 1 Series for 2022, 7th of August 2022, a very beautiful Sunday here uh, in Northamptonshire, Wilton Mill International, your circuit for today. My name is Andrew Mather from Double Dash Motorsport Media. Great to be back with you for another round of Super 1. And the tension is hotting up here around the 1200 meter circuit, 12 turns, 26 feet in elevation change established uh, 31 years ago because this is the penultimate two-day meeting of the season. It really is squeaky bomb time for if you're uh, competing for a championship or trying to get one of those major trophies at the end of the day. Weather forecast for today, perfect. Very sunny, few clouds in the sky, temperatures not too high. Uh, we'll be hanging around the low 20s, uh, which is a very good treat for karting here today. And uh, as we mentioned, championship-wise, we could see some champions crowned here today. And uh, if not, there'll be classes where drivers will kind of position themselves ahead of the final uh, meeting a few weeks down the road at Shennington. So we are going to be talking about championship points today, confusing you well, good and proper. Uh, but we'll try and work your way through that. Let us know uh, where you're watching from, who you're supporting, all of our classes in action today. And I think... Uh, with the senior Rotax qualifying having completed, let's get straight into our first race of the day for round 10. It'll be the first heat for the Bambino C50 classes. So C50 Bambino, new era and pro categories up first. Let's have a look at their grid. Uh, Austin Oman starts on pole position. Riley Murrow alongside on the front row. Ethan McClelland and Bertie Clark start on row two. And then you find Cole Teal and Harper Das on row number three. Alfie Mayer and Amelia Dial complete the eight runners in pro. Let's go through our new eras now. The two championship contenders on the front row in New Era, Chester Forks, the UK plate holder, and Chloe McGill. Charlie Page and Rex Michael Pooley are there on row two. Very good day yesterday in round nine for Rex. Lewis Kirkaldi and Cooper Earsman on the next row. Jensen Biglands and Mason Hibbert there in the top half for New Era. Henry Algar and Harry Chapman on the ninth row overall. And then we find Theo Poiser and Soren Gallagher on row 10. Buddy Hugo and Louis Williams Mabs are there on row 11. Toby Biggs and Sophia Page start on row 12. And it'll be Grace Mayer completing the 25 carts in total uh, racing here today. A big welcomes as well to uh, a few new drivers for this round in this category. So as we mentioned, Louis uh, Williams Mabs, the number 44 cart, and Sophia Page both make their first appearances of the Super 1 season. And there you see the glorious scene at Wilton Mill uh, this morning. I don't think you could get much better uh, conditions for karting. As I say, it's dry, it's stable, it's not too windy, and it's not too hot either. It's not like a couple of weeks ago when we had uh, the heat wave here in the UK. Uh, very, con very good conditions for what should be a fantastic day of racing. Let's talk championship, though. As we say, this is the penultimate meeting of the season uh, each meeting has two rounds we had one yesterday and uh, it really is hotting up in this category let's start with the pros uh, at the moment it's riley murrow leading that uh, with a 14 point advantage over austin owen uh, harper das is up to third some 50 points back so you've got to think that it's now between murrow and owen for the rest of the season bertie clark is in fourth uh, on 10 at 24, Cole Teal on uh, 10.09, Alfie Mayer on around 1,000 points, Amelia Dial on 772, Alice Wildchild not here this weekend on 719, and Ethan McClellan, who switched categories halfway through the season, there on 348. So the key number is 14 in the pros, that is the gap between Murrow and Owen at the moment, and uh, it was Ethan McClellan for the record who won yesterday uh, in the final. He's a proper disruptor in this competition for the pros. Austin Owen was second, Harper Das was third, Riley Murrow was fourth, but Murrow took both of the heat wins. Uh, so it's still very open there in pro. New era, slightly complicated uh, situation here. We'll try and explain it through. So 
at the end of today, everyone will have a season representative score if they've done every single round between the um, start of the season to now. Once they complete the 12 rounds, it's the worst two rounds worth of scores. So how that translates is a driver who's completed all races throughout the whole season, their two worst finals are dropped, and their four worst heats. Each round has two heats, two by two equals four. Except if you've had a disqualification or an exclusion from a race result at any point of the season, you can't drop those. So as a result, that's why at the moment... Owen McGill leads uh, with 1,072 points with some great consistency taking opportunities across the course of the season and the lead is some 19 points over Chester Forks who has been on this great run of victories in the new era category but had EQ unfortunately in round six could that come into play uh, between now and the end of the season we'll wait and see it's those two at the top of the order in New Era. 1,072 for McGill, 1,053 for Forks. Lewis Cacoldi still has an outside chance as well. A tough day yesterday. Uh, it's on 998 points. Buddy Hugo is next up in fourth on 956. Charlie Page fifth on 940. Carts going out on circuit then for their formation laps. Uh, it'll be a standing start for the Bambinos. And the format for today... Uh, for the returning viewers, you'll be familiar with this one now. If you are new, great to have you on board here for coverage of Super 1 2022. Each class will have two heats of seven minutes plus one lap, and then a final of nine minutes plus one lap. This morning session will be all of the first heats for the day. We'll then have lunch break at about half past 12. And we'll have, after the lunch break, the second set of heats and then the finals. Running order for today, Bambinos, as you can see, out first, and be I Army Bambinos second, Honda Cadets third, then Junior Rock, then Mini Rock, then Rotax 177, uh, Mini Max, Junior Max, and Senior Max to finish, and we'll keep that order throughout the course of the day. Carts lining up then for this first race of the day for the C50 Bambino category. Number seven, Sonoma on the front row on the right hand side of your screen. Blue cart number 38 of Riley Murrow on the left hand side. Pros denoted by the orange number boards that they have on the front of the carts. The new eras have the uh, black background number boards. As we say, this will be seven minutes plus one lap for the first race of the day. All the drivers will be looking for a consistent start to proceedings here at Wilton Mill. Looks like we are about ready then for the first race of the day. First race of round 10 for Super 1 2022. Seven minutes plus one lap and away we go for the Bambino C50s. The two championship contenders looking at each other. Good start for Murrow into turn one they go that is just what Riley had been looking for off the grid good start for everybody so far you can see Amelia Dial looking to the outside there I think Harper Das has gone back a little bit in the early part of this race feels streaming up into Christmas corner for the first time all looking to make it through looking clean so far in the Bambino C50s there may be a problem there for Amelia Dial who's falling down the order uh, at quite a rate but it's Murrow leading at the front of the field in pro perfect start for the championship leader took both heats yesterday good haul of points despite uh, not finishing in the top three in the final it's the kind of day that you would want as a, as a part of the course if you're the championship leader of course you would have liked to get a few more points in the round nine final but sometimes can't win them all, but it's been a good start here for Murrow. Let's count them round at the end of lap number one then here at Wilton Mill. Murrow leads, Bertie Clark second at the moment. Bertie Clark fishing around for an opportunity to get through. Third place for Austin Oman, then it's Ethan McClelland in fourth, and Chester Forks has had this very characteristic charge through the field in the early stages. Oman down the inside looking for second place here on Bertie Clark. Did that move get done? Yes, it did. Good move there from Austin through into second place. 
the Chester Forks. And you'll just be about able to see in the uh, fifth in this queue. Not number 38 anymore. In the UK plate recently in the Bambino competitions. Allowed to wear that plate now with pride. Chloe McGill having another great race as well. Walks down the inside, moving for fourth place overall on Bertie Clark there. In terms of championship, this is what Chloe McGill needs to do. Stay on that rear bumper of Chester Forks. Keep those points coming in. Comes to the field, it's still Moro from Owen. Welland up to third. Fourth now for Chester Forks. And Owen's looking down the inside here, getting a bit of help from behind. Textbook move there into Christmas Corner. Austin Owen into the lead. And good work as well by Ethan McClelland. Reading the situation, bump drafting through, gaining a position for himself as well in the number 23. That relegates Riley Murrow down to third. Murrow now under attack from Chester Forks. Now these two drivers are not racing for uh, the same championship points. This is a race with two classes running out there at once. This is the form that we've seen from Chester Forks. Very impressive. Uh, part of the class with the youngest drivers, the least experienced drivers. And being OC50 new eras. Quite regularly for the last few meetings, Chester Forks has been up there at the front, mixing it up with uh, the drivers in the pro category. Lead change confirmed then. So no one leads. Three and a half minutes plus one lap to go. Ethan McClellan now in second place. Riley Murrow third and Chester Forks in fourth. And that four seem happy at the moment to just work together, move away. They've dropped Chloe McGill there or thereabouts. There's a clock has slipped backwards. Rex Pooley is having another really good race. He's in seventh place overall at the moment, but third in class. And, uh, had good results yesterday in round number nine, uh, did Rex. He's currently sat in around 12th place uh, in the championship. Did miss, uh, I didn't score any points in round number four. He's slightly out of position in terms of championship scoring, but was second yesterday of pros in the final. To, uh, sorry, of the new eras, of course. Forks on Pooley from the Gill. One, two, three. In the new era category. Less than 24 hours ago. Two and a half minutes to go, though. Still Owen, McClelland, Murrow, Forks. One, two, three, four. Keeping this train running strong at the moment. Looking further down the order. Can see Cooper Earsman, and driver who had a good day yesterday is in fourth place at the moment in New Era. Just ahead of Lewis Capaldi who had a testing day. Heat 2 did not go the way of the Scottish driver. Have a good drive through the field though in the final to uh, get some points back. And just to let you know there has been problems I think out there for Jensen Biglands. Lost six positions on that last lap down to 19th place. And uh, Amelia Dial as well. We saw Number 27 cars in trouble in the early stages of this race. Very poor Amelia, but uh, has, I think, actually pulled off the circuit. I don't see it circulating on the timing track anymore. Here's a good battle. This is uh, the seventh place overall battle. Colt Hill at the front of it. Harper Dash with the yellow helmet just behind. I was thinking about, about a move down the inside into Christmas Corner. You can break very late into Christmas Corner. It's uphill. Lean on the brakes, lean on the front tyres. It is the best uh, opportunity to overtake around this World Mill international layout. See Rex Pooley there in the black helmet, cart number 31. It's really good to see Rex Pooley back on form. Running his best of the rest in the new eras. Find the two championship contenders. So the leaders coming over start finish now. And that should mean that there is going to be two more laps to this first heat of the day. See the timer there, 30 seconds for this group crossing the line. 
few moments ago. Still Cole Teal ahead of Harper Das and Michael Pooley. Sure. There's been a couple of changes this four position. Yep, Bertie Clark has fallen backwards. He's now being challenged by Lewis Cricaldi. Well, you also there's been a uh, a change for 14th place overall. Henry Algar has got ahead of Harry Chapman. That is a, a move in class as well for that sixth or seventh in class. This group of three working together very nicely as change back at the front of the field. Change at the front. Riley Murrow to the lead then. That happened off camera, but Riley Murrow back into the position that the number 38 cart was in. Uh, yesterday, took both heats yesterday. Last lap board is going to be shown. There it is, across the line. And Riley Murrow hold on here. Chester Fork sweeping across the back of Ethan McClellan there. Austin Oman seems to have been uh, dropped here. McClellan's going to look down the inside. This is for the race lead overall and in class on the last lap. Good stuff there. They're still side by side. A bit of contact as they go through the kink after Christmas. Chester Forks is trying to keep himself clean in all of this. Chester Forks is now looking down the inside into Ashby Hare. Been very tricky breaking zone downhill. All three of them have dealt with that very well. And McClelland has hit the front. Well, you couldn't have got any closer between those two drivers in the mix through there, Murrow's back down the inside looking into Odiers, good switch back, retakes the lead, brilliant racing here, the first race of the day at Wilton Mill can McClellan go round the outside into the boot, it is an opportunity Chester Fawkes is looking to go round and make it three wide, brilliant stuff, Murrow defends, got to close it down into the last corner, is McClellan going to have an opportunity there, it's going to be side by side almost through the last corner, a little bit of contact three wide, over the line, who's going to take it, it's got to be Murrow Murrow takes it by 33 thousandths of a second from Chester Forks. Both of them take class victories. Ethan McClelland, third place overall, second in class ahead of Austin Oman. Third in class, Harper Das, uh, good response at the end there from Harper. Fourth in class for the number 95. Chloe McGill takes second place, another big haul of points in the new era category for Chloe. Uh, Cole Teal in the top five in the pro category, another strong result for Rex Pooley. 8th overall, 3rd in class, ninth overall and 4th in class for Lewis Capaldi. Bertie Clark completes the top 10. It was a really, really fun, entertaining race there for the Bambino C50s. And uh, we'll see them again after the lunch break uh, for their second heat of the day. That uh, concludes that first heat of the morning here at Wilton Mill. We'll take a short break on commentary and be back very, very soon. First race of the day for the Iami Bambino. Time to go racing then in the Bambino I Army category. This is their grid for heat number one. Ronnie Carter has pole position. Charlie Clough alongside on the front row of the grid. Josh Cook and Grayson Wortley start on row two. Arthur Farrow and James Root on row number three. Dean Singh Pahal responding uh, well after a tough day yesterday. He has qualified on row number four alongside Fraser Anderson. Oscar Kenny and Darren Dimitrov start inside the top ten. Logan Rolfe and Logan Jones start on the sixth row of the grid. Daniel Ferguson and Eli Izyaki start on row seven. Freddie Fluitt and William Crombie start on row eight. Harris Barber and Albert Farrow start on row nine. And Ethan Coupland makes it 19 carts in this race. Championship situation. This is arguably the tightest category uh, across all of our uh, classes this year and uh, Josh Cook currently leads the championship by uh, some eight points so 1087 Grayson Wortley 1079 so both of those drivers start on row two for this race uh, Ronnie Carter is not too far behind himself on 1072 the interesting thing when I was looking at the maths and the points last night though is that the max possible score, so this is, imagine, a driver from today and winning every single race between now and the end of the season. Uh, three, uh, two points covers those top three, so Cook could score 
1246. Watley could score 1245. Carter 1247. Those scores are converging, very much converging as, uh, as drop scores start to come into effect. This is going to be a fascinating day's racing. Uh, just to run through the rest of uh, the major point scorers, Charlie Clough is currently fourth in the championship, 1,024, Ian Singh Pahal fifth on 912, Fraser Anderson sixth on 908. Results from yesterday, round number nine, it was Charlie Clough who took the round victory ahead of Ronnie Carter, Josh Cook and Grayson Wortley. And it's today as well for James Root, who was in the top five in the final yesterday. It'll be seven minutes plus one lap once again here for the first heat of the day in Ayami Bambino. Charlie Clough there looking for the start to this race in the GP. Plated carts, Grayson Wortley just behind in the green and blue. Ready to go then for seven minutes plus one lap in the Ayami Bambinos. And away we go. Good start for both drivers on the front row of the grid. Is it going to be Clough around the outside? Yes, it is. And Wartley's had a great start from the second row of the grid straight up to second position. Carter down to third. Cook in fourth place. But that was perfect from those on the driver's right-hand side of the grid. Getting that shot away from the grid and into the lead of the race. So Charlie Clough will lead down into Ashby Hairpin for the first time. It's been a clean start for... Uh, all of the drivers in this category, which is very good to see. Hill, in this situation, Grayson Wortley, second place in the race, has got to take advantage uh, of this situation now. Third, fourth and fourth yesterday across the three races for Grayson Wortley. He needs to find some of that earlier season form. Go back to rounds at Annie Gores, for example, uh, in the round four event took uh, two race wins and a second place as we say this is the tightest category this is the one if any of them are going to go down to the last race of the season in a few weeks time it's going to be this category every single race between now and the end of the season so so crucial Only Carter having a small look there to see if there was a move on Grayson Wortley Often a difficult thing if you're in a train of three and you're at the back of the three. Going into Ashby Hairpin, because it's downhill, it's not really a place where you want to be sending it and licking the stamp. Because if you're in a train of three and you do that to the driver in the middle, probably collect the driver at the front of the order. Patience required round this Wilton Mill circuit to get the line right, to get... He runs on drivers right. James Roots is having a good race here. He's closed it to the back of this uh, lead trio. Made it a quartet now. UK plate holder. Oh, down the inside there goes Ronnie Carter on Grayson Wortley. Grayson Wortley defends that well or responds to it well. It's something you can do around the outside there through Christmas corner. It's slightly cambered. Uh, in favour, and Grayson Wortley just held on the outside there, knew that he'd have the inside for the left-hander through uh, the kink locally called Boxing Day. Still your 1, 2, 3, 4 as before with Josh Cook now closing in, the number 77 uh, behind. Carter down the inside and the entry to the boot. Grayson Wortley trying to fight back, can't do it though. And may be open to attack here from James Roots behind. James Roots goes through. Carter up to second. Roots up to third. Wortley now in fourth place with championship rival Josh Cook just behind there in fifth. And good tight line there from Josh Cook. May have a run up the hill. Blue fine lady up to Christmas corner now. Slots in behind. Don't want to risk anything at this stage. Dean Singh Pahal having a good race there. Over in the number 23 in sixth place. Wilkins and Ozies. Two corners where, I'd say, the technical drivers uh, favour those two. Got to get the entry, the run through Wilkins right, otherwise, going to be slow through Ozies as well. Leave yourself vulnerable onto the back straight into the boot. All these drivers dealing with that 
very nicely indeed. Just over three minutes to go on the clock. Phil Clough from Carter. Great fight going on here for third place. Oh, once again. Little bit of contact there between Cook and Wortley. Cook trying to get the run up the inside into Christmas Corner. Same with these three at the moment. If they can keep uh, working as a trio, they can close the top two in. Oh, Cook looking down the inside again. You definitely feel that today is a, a different, uh, di different atmosphere to what we've had in the earlier parts of the season. There are drivers out there now thinking about championship positions and racing against each other uh, as starting community since April, since we started this championship at Rowra round the country since then you know how each driver round them competes good couple of corners there actually for Roots and Wortley they've got a gap back to Josh Cook now of some four tenths of a second Cook responds good run through Christmas corner there Carter still running as they should just line astern doing anything too dramatic they are being enclosed in though by James Roots this has been a very good effort from James Roots works well with the drivers behind closed in and it is now what you would say a, a three way four five way down the inside again Cook looking uh, at Wortley there seen flashes of this speed from James Roots in earlier parts of the season. Uh, round six, for example, took a heat win uh, in that round of the championship. It's today, all time is all oh, cooked down the inside of Wortley. Wortley on the outside again. We'll have the inside going through Boxing Day. Holds on to fourth place once again. Just go back to Roots. It was a difficult first uh, heat. It was classified 14th and responded back to third place in the second. Uh, heat and fifth in the final. A good haul of points as Roots looks to move up uh, towards the top five in this championship. 40 seconds to go then. And still Charlie Clough, yesterday's uh, winner. Soaking up the pressure very nicely indeed. To solidify top five spot uh, that Charlie currently holds in this category will be two more laps for the Bambino I armies. Only Carter driving this in a very sensible manner as well. I'd be surprised if Carter goes for it on the final lap of the race. Tactically, it's been spot on so far. Just kept pushing and bump drafting Clough when the opportunity arises. You know that there is a trio behind them they're all very competitive and all want to take that race win and get their 10th round of the season off to the best of starts coming down the back straight once again just to let you know Darren Dimitrov has got past Fraser Anderson for seventh place GP plate will take his round to start the last lap then Charlie Clough will now defend from Ronnie Carter. Ronnie Carter's got a gap behind. There may be an opportunity here to be brave on the brakes up into Christmas Corner. Clough's going to go defensive to the inside. And Clough try and go around the outside. He's having a think about it. Oh, he's there on the inside. Shuts the door, does Charlie Clough. Brilliant racing once again from our young drivers in the Ayami Bambinos. There's going to be opportunities here for the drivers behind as well. Wartley may be to the outside. There's a bit of contact between Grayson Wortley and James Roots and Josh Cook's trying to get involved also. Still at the front, Charlie Clough leading from Ronnie Carter. Ronnie Carter down the inside, gets the move. Ronnie Carter to the lead then with a couple of corners of this race to go. Defence to the inside, into the boot. Is that compromising the line too much though for the number six? No, brilliantly done by Ronnie Carter, three wide behind. Who's going to take these positions? It's going to be another sprint to the finish line, but it is going to be all on the line. I think, did Clough take it? Timing says that Charlie Clough got that. Ahead of Ronnie Carter, Grayson Wortley in third, James Roots fourth, Josh Cook in fifth, Fraser Anderson in sixth, Darren Dimitrov seventh, 
Arthur Farrow, 8. Oscar Kenny, 9th. And Dean Singh Pahal in 10th. Let's have another look at that again. That was very close on the line as to who got that. There was a good run to the line for Charlie Clough. That's too tight to call for me. Well, actually, no. You can see from the reaction, I think Ronnie Carter knows that he just got pipped to the line there by Charlie Clough. Well, again, a very good race to begin the day here for the Iami Bambino drivers. We'll see them again after the lunch break for their second uh, heat of the day. Very well raced by everyone involved there. And we're going to move on to race three on your schedules here at Wilton Mill today for round 10 of Super 1 2022. It'll be the first heat of the day for Honda Cadet. Time to go then for the Honda Cadet category and their first race of the day. Let's have a look at their grid. Hugh Roach, championship leader, has pole position here at Wilton Mill today. Jensen Walker, great qualifying from Jensen, uh, sits there alongside on the front row of the grid. Jensen Hookey and Riley Till form up row number two. Joel Bullen and Jack Collinson start on row number three. Difficult day yesterday for a couple of drivers in Honda Cadet. Thea Bradshaw starts on row four. Logan McAllister was one of those drivers who had a difficult one. Starts alongside him. Uh, Max Taddy and Daniel Butcher complete the top ten. Teddy Cooper and Tom Reed start on row number six. Andrew Dixon looking to refine that form that he had earlier in the season at places such as Clay Pigeon. Starts this one from row seven. Kean Sullivan joins on that seventh row. Thomas Butcher and John Richardson Go from row number eight, Austin Starley and Leo Livings are on the ninth row of the grid. And then we find Ella Dixon and Josh, Josh Parker completing the top 20. Maria Roberto and Kate Donaldson due on row 11. Donaldson did not complete a lap time. So, Honda Cadets, the pooled engine category. Here in Super 1 2022. Few new faces for the 2022 championship in this, uh, including Teddy Cooper, who took a clean sweep yesterday of the two heat wins uh, and the win in the final. Hugh Roach was second in the final, took a clean sweep of second places for Hugh Roach. So uh, that's a very good result for Hugh Roach uh, to be the biggest point scorer of those who've been regulars so far in 2022. Jansen Hook uh, was in third place, fourth went to John Richardson, fifth to Joel Bullen. Very competitive championship this. Hugh Roach, 1,084 points at the moment. Hooky on 1,056. Can Hugh Roach continue this great form from pole position? Away we go for seven minutes plus one lap here at Wilton Mill for Honda Cadets, heat number one. And it's a good start from second place on the grid. Once again, that's the third time that we've seen that today. Jensen Walker will lead up to Christmas Corner for the first time. Big braking zone for our Honda Cadet drivers here. Are they all going to make it through? That's looking good so far. Bit of a slide uh, for the number 63 of Josh Parker there, who looks to have made progress in the first couple of corners. But it's Walker leading. Roach in second place. Jensen Hookie to the inside. Has uh, lost a couple of positions, I think, in fact. The rest of them running through. Onto the back straight. A very good start for Jensen Walker. Best result so far this season, a third place uh, in one of the heats of round number six. Over start finish then, end of lap number one. Walker, Roach, Till, third. Good start there for Riley Till. Old Bullen up to fourth place. Jensen Hookie in fifth. Jack Collinson. Strong as well in sixth places. Down the inside goes Hugh Roach, takes the lead of the race. What we often see with Honda Cadet racing, especially around this Wilton Mill circuit, that it's all about... Oh, is there a spin there? The number 43 has uh, gone round. That's unfortunately Theo Bradshaw. The Theo Bradshaw is the first uh, victim of just getting the braking a touch wrong into the Ashby hairpin. It's so easy to do as you're braking downhill. It's effectively the opposite of... Christmas corner you can't really break too late into Ashby corner because momentum and gravity forces you down the hill and you can have a little spin as Theo Bradshaw has just had there end of lap two then 
Roach from Walker. Joel Bullen now up to third place as well. Just to note that, got past Riley Till on that last lap. Jensen Hookie in fifth place. It's a good run so far from Logan McAllister. And Logan McAllister's down the inside looking for fifth place there in the state motorsport number three. Very good stuff. Another textbook manoeuvre. What we like to view there into Christmas Corner. Needs a big day, does Logan McAllister. It was not a set of results McAllister would have wanted. 11th, 8th and 13th in round number nine. Down the inside there goes Bullen. Going for second place and getting it. Anyway, just go back to the point about Honda Cadet racing around this circuit. Momentum and working as a pack is a big, big part of Honda Cadet Racing here. I want to say at the moment, that is not happening. Hugh Roach is getting a bit of a gap here, six tenths of a second ahead of Joel Bullen and Jensen Walker. This group have got to get themselves reorganized. Otherwise, Hugh Roach is going to gallop on down the road and have a comfortable, comfortable position in the latter stages of this race. Another good move there from Logan McAllister down the inside. As we saw a lap ago on Jensen Hookie, this time it was on Riley Till, and it was for fourth place. Do the double left-handers then. Wilkins and Ozias. Now that chasing group starting to get themselves back into a formation. Where working with those extra engines that they have as a pack means that it is very, very difficult for a sole runner to break away from a pack and stay away from a pack here at Wilton Mill. That is what we're starting to see now. You can see the Bullens closed in. Took three and a half tenths out of Roach on that last lap. It's not a uh, criticism of Hugh Roach's driving. He's setting competitive lap times, but that is the trouble when you're on your own. Everybody else is working together behind. They have now pulled him back in. Bit of a scrap going on there behind. Andrew Dixon, number 22, was involved. Has got up to 10th place. Passing there with John Richardson. We've seen run strongly on Sunday streamed rounds here on Alpha Live in the past. If you're enjoying the coverage and if you've not done so already, please do consider pressing that subscribe button. Pressing it really, really does help us out here. Roach still leads. Bullen second. Logan McAllister now up to third place. Has found a way past Denson Walker on that previous tour of the circuit. Riley Till in fifth place. Andrew Dixon confirmed has got past Josh Parker on that last lap. Is now up to ninth place. It's been a tough race so far for Max Taddy, but as uh, a good move there from Max has got past Tom Reed. Is back up to twelfth place. Remember the time qualifyings from early this morning set the grids for both of the heats. All the opportunities for those who've uh, fallen back in the opening five laps or so of this race to have another go in heat number two. And have a look at all of those results. Results.alphatiming.co.uk forward slash super one. See the event page for today, round 10 at Wilton Mill. And all the results from the, uh, from the season so far. Go and have a peruse of those at your leisure. Meanwhile, front of this on the cadet first heat of the day. Still going well for Hugh Roach, but now down the inside goes Joel Bullen, and Logan McAllister pushes through as well. Very good driving from Bullen and McAllister there. Not much that Hugh Roach could have done about that. Hugh Roach is going to fight back. There was out of the race. Was that the number 38 of Maria Roberto? I think it was. And side by side as they go through into Wilkins, Hugh Roach to the inside, retakes second place away from Logan McAllister, Jensen Walker's still in this as well, at the back of this quartet, going towards the boot for what should be, no, I don't think it will be the penultimate time, I think we'll get another one in in this one, but great tactical play from Bullen and McAllister there work that opening, take Hugh Roach off the front of this field, but Hugh Roach is going to fight back here Always gets a little bit of oversteer, runs wide. This may be an opportunity for McAllister. Will McAllister get help from behind from Jensen Walker? Yes, he will. Down the inside. Oh, needs to get that right. Very close. Almost had too much help from Jensen Walker. Nearly careered into the side of Joel Bullen there. Very well dealt with by Logan McAllister. Back down the inside goes Roach. Retakes third place. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, been very quiet in this race by 
is Stanza Jensen Hookey in the green and black has appeared on the scene in fifth place. See the number 38 of Maria Roberto being towed away from uh, the circuit. Sad to see for Maria having some good results of late in this championship. Time has not quite expired. Last lap board has been shown though. So no, this is the last lap that has been shown from race control. Joel Bullen leads Logan McAllister in second place. Third place for Hugh Roach. Look how hard Joel Bullen's having to defend. Hugh Roach is going to try and go around the outside. Do a switch back to his out. Oh, that's brilliant. Orbit is going to be out on the grass. Forced there by Joel Bullen. Robust defending from Bullen. And uh, in the end, that means that Hugh Roach is out. Going to have to deal with the two Jensens. Hooky and Walker and Riley Till in there as well. Classic Honda Cadet racing here for the first heat of the day at Wilton Mill. Change for the lead. Change and Logan McAllister has found a way through. Has got past Joel Bullen. What a response this would be for Logan McAllister after a big disappointment yesterday in round nine. Round ten is going to start in perfect fashion. Logan McAllister takes the first heat of the day in Honda Cadet. Joel Bullen in second place. A swarm comes over the line, and it's Hugh Roach in third place. Fourth for Riley Till. Fifth, Jensen Walker. Jack Collinson, good drive in sixth. Jensen Hooky in seventh. Yesterday's winner, Teddy Cooper, finishes in eighth. And a big round of applause there for John Richardson, fighting to ninth place on the line. In number 32, Andrew Dixon completes the top ten. Well, that was your first time watching Honda Cadet uh, racing. That was pretty standard for it. That, that was ex excellent stuff. Uh, from Honda Cadet, just what we like to see here uh, at Wilton Mill, and we'll have another heat from all of those drivers uh, after the lunch break. It's going to be a very, very interesting day in Honda Cadet, uh, judging from that first appearance of them here today. Right, we're going to move on from the uh, Cadet Racing and move uh, into some categories, slightly older drivers. Next up, out on circuit, first heat of the day for Junior Rock. Here we go then for the first race, first heat of the day for the junior rock category. Alfie Briggs has pole position. George Barker alongside on the front row. Oliver Law completes the three carts entry here today. Very straightforward story here today in junior rock. Alfie Briggs, if Alfie completes each race, in fact doesn't even need to complete race, doesn't get disqualified. Doesn't get disqualified from any of the races today. He will be champion a very strong season so far uh, we did see the winning streak though broken uh, at, uh, at fullback had a couple of races at fullback where classification was fourth up to that point had been uh, having a perfect season but the scores are like this for junior rock with three rounds of the championship to go 1146 points for Briggs George Barker in second place on 1095 Oliver Law uh, on 1,069, Shane Collins not racing here today on 740. Uh, to explain, though, how, what do we mean in terms of Briggs being able to win uh, here today? Well, essentially, Briggs, uh, it's quite possible, will have a locked-in number of points for his championship tally by the end of today that is in excess of the max possible score for other drivers so at the moment as we say Briggs has 1146 points George Barker has 1095 at a max possible i.e. George won every single race now in the end of the season 1242 so once Alfie Briggs is beyond that tally he will be champion and we can do that today with Trio of third places that would be 1,266. Right, we are looking at Briggs today to wrap up this championship. As we say, not have any reason to uh, be excluded from the event. That would be uh, technical infringement. It's not going to happen. So it's a very professionally run outfit this on the number 47 looking to get 
job done. So Briggs on the right hand side of your screen there. Union flag at the top of his lid. George Barker in number 63. Away we go for seven minutes plus one lap here then in Junior Rock. Brilliant start for Alfie Briggs. And has already got away. Good start as well for Oliver Law. And the red suit and the white helmet there has got up to second place. George Barker down to third. And it's just the start that Alfie Briggs would have been looking for. Doing double duty this weekend. Racing in Junior Rotax and is very much on form. Uh, was here a few weekends ago for the latest round of the Wilton Mill Cart Club Championship. And watch here on Alpha Live. We go and have a watch of that uh, when you've got the three hours. Won the round in Junior Rotax. We'll see Alfie out later on today in that same category. Knows the circuit well. Based in Banbury, but, uh, not too far from this part of the world. Put himself into this rhythm that we've seen across the course of the season. Getting out in the lead, holding a gap, and then throwing down the gauntlet to the other drivers to get onto his pace. Good send down the inside from George Barker, going for second place. Beautiful. Very nicely done by George Barker. It's, it's harder than it looks, that kind of move. As we mentioned with some of the classes earlier, going downhill, the weight's transferring to the front tyres, you're trying to get the car to turn in through uh, a fairly tight right-hander. can easily go wrong, either you just get too hard on the brakes, understeer into the cart on your left, or bog down a bit off of the corner. The little driver comes back at you on the approach to Wilkins. That was spot on from George Parker. Now pulling away from Oliver Law with five minutes of this race to go. George Barker similarly looking to secure uh, second place in this championship. Do so with uh, a trio of second places. As you lead her over the line. Briggs, what is the pace like at the moment for Alfie Briggs? A 46.183. Consistently in those 46 ones, that's two of them in a row. George Barker, a 46.3. Uh, Oliver Law, a 47.3. We'll have more rock action later on today as well. We've got the Mini Rock Championship uh, moving towards its conclusion. Another category that I reckon is going to go to the wire. Won't be decided today. Drivers will be looking to get themselves in a position where they can fend a lead in the uh, in the point standings going into Shannington, where we will have our final two rounds of the season. The second of those we'll be able to watch here on Alpha Live. Looking to get those golden tickets to the Rock Cup Super Finals at Renato in October. Which we are very pleased to see uh, that uh, we'll have EDMM commentary at that event once more for 2022 in there the last couple of years. Very good event, so like you rock, Vortex Rock Racing. Do follow at the Dash MM across the social media uh, networks. Lots of info and content regards that competition coming up. Oliver Law here. Oh, having a bit of a bounce there. That is a that is a characteristic round uh, here at Wilton Mill. Tyres being asked a little bit too much there. Get that hopping up and down. As the tyres just cannot uh, cannot be given. You lose that compliance to get a cart round uh, the corner. Quite uncomfortable for the driver when that happens. Say that from experience uh, round here. Pace for George Barker at the moment, pulling away from Oliver Law. 46.0 last time around. Personal best. Alfie Briggs is dropping the hammer once again at 45.6. Uh, it's now the new fastest lap of the race. And George Barker gets into the 45s. That was a 46.188. 
Racing on the MS Cart, the Jack Flex Racing prepared machine at their home circuit, of course. And very, very well here, the ADR crew. These entries running is uh, independence of their own awnings. The meeting. Barker coming round to finish lap number seven. Setup of this machine looking good at the moment. Another new fastest lap of the race from Briggs, 45.612. Extends the advantage out to uh, some five seconds. Oliver Law is now into the 46s as well, 46.889. Oliver Law there in cart number 77. Track limit warning has been issued to the leader. Two areas typically around the circuit where track limits can come into play, and being the last corner. It is very much advantageous. Now uh, we can gain an advantage. Drop a pin, steering a bit open, a tad bit more than uh, is allowed. Use too much of that concrete runoff off the driver's left. Suspect. Where Briggs will have picked up that TLW. How long in this race to go though? 40 seconds. Alfie Briggs looking comfortable once again to take another Junior Rock victory here for Super 1 2022. Up one with the cart down the back straight. May sneak across the line with some seconds on the but yes he is going to get across the line with a number of seconds still remaining about seven of them there they go so two more laps then for Alfie Briggs another 45.716 good thing here for Briggs as well a bit more track time a strong yesterday in the junior road tax category we'll see uh, Alfie racing in that as well later on. Took a clean sweep yesterday. It's no mean feat in a competitive junior road tax category. I'd say that uh, drive that he had at Wilson Mill Cart a few weeks ago. Very much the man in form. And has he, as he has been the whole of this season in junior rock. The first driver to see the last lap board. Just needs to bring it home, move one more step closer to sealing up this title here today. The way the scores work, it probably won't be official until the final. Alfie Briggs won't worry about that at this stage of proceedings. Enjoying his driving out there, enjoying uh, this car with the Vortex Rock engine on it. I do hope we see that uh, Alfie continue with the rock categories. It's great to see him racing at Super Final later in the year. He's done some racing in Europe so far this season on Rotax machinery. But round the final corner, Alfie Briggs comes to take victory once again in Junior Rock in the first heat of the day. Moves himself to 1,180 points now. George Barker good again in second place. And a strong bit of pace at the end there. 45.798, a new personal best. Oliver Law will be in third place here's the running for Junior Rock in this opening uh, session for round number 10 as we say Briggs now on 1180 just got to score 60 more points across these next two races to claim that championship outright two rounds early see if he can do that later on in the day meanwhile we're going to move on now to our next category appearance, uh, first appearance of the day for Mini Rock. Mini Rock about to go out then for their first heat of the day. Let's have a look at their grid. Charlie Benson has pole position from time to qualifying earlier this morning. Connor Scarisbrick joins Charlie on the front row of the grid. Jacob Anslow and Marcel Popical start on the second row of the grid. Find Rook Thompson and Eddie Stewart on row three. 
Eight carts in this race, Cooper Sneddon and Alex Dole on that fourth row of the grid. Championship scenario at the moment with three rounds to go. Charlie Benson leads on 1,102 points. Uh, Connor Scarsbrook is in second place. Uh, some 12 points back. It's another one that is very, very close at the moment. Cooper Sneddon in third. 1,006 points. Tied on um, with Marcel Pottle. Depending on which way you put the cake, uh, Alex Gold is the fifth. Good scrap for that place. Rook Thompson, 964 versus 99. Result from yesterday, Connor Scarisbrick taking uh, a final victory, his first final victory of 2022 in this category. A season that really has been building from start of proceedings at Rara in April. Good number 28. Timing and charge of the championship just the right time. Charlie Benson was second yesterday. Instead in third. Work to do from the fourth row of the grid to repeat that uh, results here today. But here we go for heat number one. Seven minutes plus one lap. Good start for the drivers and a good start for Charlie Benson. First time we've seen a driver from pole position hold on to the lead on the first run up the hill to Christmas Corner. That was perfect and the other good piece of news is that Jacob Anslow has slipped through uh, past Connor Scarris Brick so at the moment Benson has a cart between himself and his main championship rival. That could not have gone any better for Charlie Benson. Scarris Brick trying to fight back though, good move down the inside, retakes second place as they go into Oziers, but we'll need to do a little bit of defending as they go towards the boot for the first time. Big couple of laps this for Charlie Benson. If Charlie Benson can get out a gap away from Connor Scarra's brick. Solidified the position in first place and maybe leave the number 28 vulnerable to those behind. The likes of Jacob Anslow and Rook Thompson. Good start for Cooper Sneddon up to fifth, but here comes Marcel Popical in the uh, yellow and black carts there down the inside takes fifth place back for the number 99. Mascara's brick pushing hard here, trying to close in the privateer from Ormskirk. Charlie Benson racing for HTR Racing here this season. Of the public chassis. Based up in Sunderland. Good long journey for uh, Benton and the team this weekend. The response has been good. It's taken advantage of the pole position at the start of this race. Leading out ahead of the rest of the field. Connor Scarisbrick is pulling back in there. This is a really good response from Connor Scarisbrick. He's caught up to the back of Charlie Benson now. Track limit warning for driver in third place, Jacob Anslow. See that he's pushing hard there. Brooke Thompson having a good drive up to fourth. On the Ricardo chassis. Best results so far this season for Brooke Thompson in third places, including one yesterday in heat number one of round nine. Four and a half minutes to go on the clock. There is that battle for fourth place. The number 11, Thompson, and Popical, 99. And Benson not too far behind as well as Popical down the inside, looking for a move. Very nicely done through Christmas corner. And the Polish driver takes fourth place. Could not have been done better by Marcel Popical now. And Marcel down the road and try and catch up with Jacob Anslow there in third place. And, uh, strong recently as Jacob Anslow had a good weekend as oh down the inside Brooke Thompson fighting back there for fourth place. Marcel Popacool protests. Cooper Sneddon's going to take advantage of all of that and gain two positions in a couple of corners. Very nicely done by Cooper Sneddon reading that situation well. Driver who went to Rock Cup Super Final last year through into the trophy final. 
Hoppercall down the inside once again gets past Rook Thompson through Christmas Corner. So that top end of the circuit, definitely strong for the number 99. But here comes Rook Thompson again down the inside, still side by side. As they go through Ashby Corner, Hoppercall's going to try and go around the outside, will be forced out wide there, and Eddie Stewart will cut underneath. He takes a position. Eddie Stewart in a very entertaining position. Carts all around him. You can get clean there. Uh, another driver on a Carts Republic chassis this year. Running as a privateer. Contact warning has been shown to uh, Rook Thompson. Bit of a slide through a uh, fine lady in oblivion there for Eddie Stewart. Cooper Snedden Sned is gone. He's bolted up the road. It's the other three uh, fights it out. And again, that is something that we often see here at Wiltermill. Particularly on the international layout, you can lose a lot of time You're battling and fighting. You head down, keep hitting those apexes and those marks, and you're breaking right. Gain a lot of time. Eddie Stewart looking down the inside of Rook Thompson. This is now the fight for fifth place. Two minutes to go. Still Benson, by the way, leaning at the front of the order ahead of Scarsbrick. Two drivers who between them, locked out the top two positions in all races yesterday. Looks like they're going to continue with that yet again here in round number 10. One minute and 35 to go. Slightly turning bump just heard uh, in my ears there. I hope that it, uh, we're having a bit of an off. That's all has been having problems uh, towards the back of the order. Some issues there for the number 50. That is uh, not the kind of pace that we would expect from Alex Dog. Down the inside goes Marcel Popical on Eddie Stewart. Gets back to sixth place. Not quite gone the way he would have wanted this race for the number 99. Back with our leaders at the front of the order. Benton and Scar is brick. Likely aware that Jacob Anslow is not too far behind. Two seconds is the gap between second and third. And we have seen uh, gaps like that close quickly. These two would start fighting at the front of the order. They'll have two more laps after this tour of the track. Charlie Benson. It's been great to see Charlie develop across the course of this season in terms of being able to soak up pressure. Had a rough patch in the uh, well, around round three and round four. I thought at that point, like, oh dear, is this championship bid, a strong start at Rowers, starting to unravel, but he's responded very, very well. Increasingly over the last three rounds, it's been always there, thereabouts. But here goes Scarsbrick down the inside. Decisive move, takes the lead of the race. How is Benson going to respond? Two there, the main title rival. 12 points between them before the start of this race. Connor Scarsbrick, this is good, good pace from Connor Scarsbrick in the number 28. Last lap board is shown. And Charlie Benson get a run going up into Christmas Corner. I think he's a little bit too far back, to be honest. Yes, he is. That's one opportunity gone. Another couple of corners ticked off the list for Connor Scarisbrick. Down into Ashby Corner. No opportunity there for Charlie Benson to slot it down the inside. It's got to be for Charlie Benson into the boot. That's going to be the best opportunity to get by but at the moment Connor Scarswick will have been talking about timing this run to the front of the order late on in this season has always been there or thereabouts across the course of the year but Connor Scarswick is going from strength to strength here in Mini Rock is going to come around the final corner and takes heat one in convincing fashion over Charlie Benson there in second place good points for Jacob Anslow in third fourth place will go to Cooper Stedden fifth for Rook Thompson Sick across the line is going to be Marcel Popical, who beats Eddie Stewart there to the line on the last lap of the race. Alex Dole 
will complete the eight runners across the line there, taking the chequered flag. Good stuff from Connor Scarisbrick. They took the win in Heat 1 yesterday. Will he continue that form? Can he get another final victory? We'll see later on this afternoon. And we've got the second heat as well after the lunch break. Next out on circuit, though, we'll say goodbye for now to the Mini Rocks and welcome out onto the circuit for the first time today. The Rotax 177 class, their first heat, is up next. First of all, four Rotax-powered uh, classes here today at Wilton Mill. It's the Rotax 177 category. Let's have a look through their grid for heat number one. Oliver Appleby has pole position alongside him uh, on the front row is his teammate Chris Thomas. Scott Clee is on the second row of the grid with Ian Branfield joining there as well. Alex McGee in a strong couple of rounds recently starts this one from row three alongside Sammy Milam. Better. Uh, look so far he's had this uh, season good uh, morning and welcome to the Rotax 177 uh, crew for this year Costa Kriatsis a uh, familiar name to us here at DDMM starts on row 4 alongside Ben Johnson Simon Kavanagh and Max Davies on row 5 Andy Ward completes the 11 entries for this race So take to the uh, Rotax 177s yesterday. It was a, a return to form, a big return to form for reigning champion Chris Thomas, who uh, took a clean sweep of results, two heat victories and the final. First time Thomas has done that since Raura. Definitely need it uh, at the moment. Points look like this. 1,082 for Oliver Appleby, 1,072 in Branfield, 1,068 for Thomas. Big day this in Rotax 177. This is all about positioning yourself for the run to the final round. Away we go for the first heat of the day here in round 10. Seven minutes on the clock. Great start for Appleby. Straight into the lead then. We run up to Christmas Corner. Scott clears, nipped through into second place. Chris Thomas down to third. All going on in the mid-pack there. And it looks like Ian Branfield has been shuffled down a couple of spots. Saw him behind uh, Costa there. Creates it, a regular driver on the Club 100 scene. And, uh, he's been known to race a whole package of different machines. Some supercarts every now and then as well. Braver man than me. Uh, to be taking part in those machines. It's the first time that we've seen him this season in the Rotax 177 class for Super 1 2022. Front though, Appleby. Great start. Leads by uh, nearly four tenths of a second over Scott Lee. Chris Thomas in third. Got to be patient, leaving the abilities himself and also the number one cart. Warning for the leader. APR Motorsports running first and third at the moment, very much working together uh, as a team. Appleby and Thomas. As, oh dear, Max Davies is out. Max Davies is out of the race in the number 87. He's had some great form recently. Had a, a difficult day yesterday. And it's been a difficult start to the second of the Wilton Mill rounds. Understandably frustrated uh, that something has gone wrong on the car. I, I just saw that he's got going again on the back straight. But looking like a pedestrian pace for Max Davis. There's also, I think, been a problem for Simon Kavanagh, because Simon Kavanagh uh, is currently being scored in 10th place and uh, off the lead lap. Not sure what's happened there to Kavanagh in the number 83. End of lap number three, then. Appleby, Lee, Thomas, one, two, three, at the front of the field. Ooh, Thomas wide through oblivion. It's it all back together, but it's not a good moment uh, for the reigning champion. Scott Clee building now. Putting Oliver Appleby under pressure, championship leader. Appleby uh, has not won 
a race, either a, a heat or a final, since his own clean sweep, round seven, that was the Saturday round at fullback uh, at the start of July. Needs to refine that form. Served him well in the middle part of the season. He's going to hold on to this championship lead and be the Super 1 Rotax 177 champion at the end of proceedings at Shennington in a few weeks' time. Doing all right at the moment. Pace is good. Chris Thomas in third place is not able to close in at the moment. 45.564 uh, for Appleby last time around. 45.6 for Clee. 46.0. For Chris Thomas. A warning for Ben Johnson, who's uh, in ninth place. Uh, good news for Simon Cavanagh. I understand that it was a transponder issue. He hasn't had a significant problem that's stopped circulating because he's now been scored in ninth place. Ten seconds off the leaders. Max Davis, though, is confirmed as out of the race. Not what Max would have wanted. Who's uh, competed for a number of years in Super One? Switched across from the Rock Categories here into Rotax. One of our British drivers at Rock Super Final 12 months ago. Sammy Marlon there. And a dab of Oppo on through Ashby. Only running in fifth place, trying to close up to uh, Alex McGee at the grid. The the peculiar thing, though, I think, in this race at the moment is the pace of Ian Branfield. It's not there at the moment. Sixth place for the driver currently in second place in the title. Hunt uh, ran very, very well. Manny Gores. Clean sweep of his own there. It's been one of the stories of this Rotax 177 season. It's uh, had days, I was on days where they have completely dominated into the rest of the field. Have not been able to carry that through the course of the whole season. Say, Thomas has had his days, Branfield's had his days, Appleby's had his days. It's got to be as well. This time we had uh, a streamed round. Quite do a clean sweep. Finished second in the first heat, and then followed up with uh, two wins in the second heat and the final. Could Clee be on for a repeat of that here today? At the moment. Could very much be the case. 90 seconds to go. Still Appleby ahead of Clee. He responded. This is really good from Oliver Appleby. This is the kind of statement KPR Motorsport would have been looking, to, uh, looking for from Oliver Appleby at the start of the day. Can he turn this form round and get back onto the winner's rostrum? Well, at the moment, a 45.217. Just what the doctor ordered. Fastest lap of the race from the race leader. Nearly half a second out ahead of Scott Clee. Branfield continues to try and find a way uh, past Sammy Marlam here. That's uh, trying to get past Alex McGee. And Branfield has started to turn the pace up in the latter stages of this race. This championship needs to find a way through, needs that fourth place to keep points ticking over. Cannot afford to be dropping positions now in the latter stages of this championship. 30 seconds on the clock. He defending very, very well, though. Just nicely positioning his cart across the circuit. Not defending too hard. There's positions to be held here with Sammy Marlon still not too far behind. Just arresting the momentum of Ian Branfield here. Two more laps to go then. Appleby still out front from Clee, looking comfortable, holding that 45.2 pace. It's going to be some, well, it's going to need to be something big from Scott Clee, Maybe even dipping into the 44s, close that that gap and put himself in a position where he can attack. And Branfield still trying to find a way past Alex McGee. Here are your leaders though. See the last lap board in about a third of laps time. Black flag for Max Davies. Now, what is that for? Uh, well, we saw Max Davies off the road earlier on in the race. And, uh, now has shown a black flag. Last lap then. We won't worry about that at this moment. Oliver Appleby at the front of the order. Ace has dropped 
tiny bit, 45-4 last time around. Just controlling things, taking care of the tyres, taking care of the cart. It's going to be a long day of racing here at Wilton Mill. All of these classes, but the Rotax 177s in particular, and still Ian Branfield trying to find a way past Alex McGee, you just saw in the background there. He's doing a brilliant job to hold on to fourth place, but here comes Oliver Appleby. As we say, hasn't taken a win in any kind of race for a few rounds, but he's back onto the top step. Just what the championship leader needed. Full points from heat number one for Oliver Appleby. Scott Clee, last year's runner-up, finishes runner-up in this race as well. Chris Thomas uh, finishes there in third place. More good points for Thomas. Alex McGee does hold on to fourth place. Ian Branfield fifth. That is not the result that the driver uh, who started the day second in points would have been looking for. Sammy Marlam in sixth. Costa Creatis in seventh place. Ben Johnson eighth. Simon Cavan ninth. Time into black flag for Max Davies. Well, a karma race there from uh, the more experienced drivers in the field, but Oliver Appleby, championship leader, converts from the front row, takes a uh, first race victory since round number seven. We'll see them again later on this afternoon for their second heat. Let's move on to the next race out on circuit. It'll be the first heat of the day for Minimax. Minimax out on circuit next then for their first seven minutes plus one lap heat. Here is their grid. Joshua Jarvis has pole position. Cameron Edmonds alongside on the front row. Max Hollow, great qualifying from Max. Puts him there on the second row of the grid. And welcome back to Super 1 for Kasper Tomalewski, the, uh, the former uh, Honda Cadet champion. Starts there on P4 on the grid. Jensen Powers and Jake Fluitt start on the third row of this grid. Find Ernie Overton and Leon Barlow on row four. Joseph Murphy and Jasmine Taylor start on row five. Championship leader Joshua Bagembe and Ben Horner start on row number six. On row seven, we find Charlotte Stanley and Logan Cowling. Archie Dyson and Reese Owen go from row eight. Emily Ackett and Yusuf Yakub go from row number nine. Ronnie Covered starting there on row 10. 19 runners in the field. Championship situation then with three rounds of the uh, the championship to go. Gembe, uh, very familiar with this Wilton Mill circuit. He's uh, a regular racer in the Park Club here. Leads the championship in 1,030 points. Has a decent lead over Ernie Overton on 985, Murphy on 977. And uh, could be helped as, as well by the fact that we've got a few new drivers not in title contention here today. The likes of Tomalewski, who took the final win yesterday. Barlow, who took a heat win in the second place. And ben Horner and Reese Owen as well. Welcome to Super 1 2022. All of those drivers. Here we go then. First heat of the day. Four minimax. Seven minutes on the clock. And away we go. First time. And it's a good start for uh, the whole field at the moment. Nobody making any errors. Good to see. On that run up to Christmas Corner for the first time. Bit of dirt being kicked up there. And no, it's not a good start. This is uh, our first restart of the day. This may have been for some drivers not quite in the position. Should have been. Grid or in terms of tram lines. We've got to think the uh, the story for again Bay has got to keep being consistent. It's been throughout the course of this season. Tough time at fullback. Uh, uh, crash, which uh, left him with a injured hand. Responded him, responded really well from. Saw him racing at Super Superbury a few weeks ago, looking in good form. Number 10 of Cameron Edmonds there on the front of the order. It's another start. Uh, there are some drivers out of position. Has it been called good? I think it has. Well, let's go up to the first braking zone. It is the number 22 of Joshua Jarvis leading at the front of the order. Hollows had a good start as well. Is up to second place. Down into 
Ashby for the first time in this one. Time on the clock still remained at seven minutes. And there in the bright blue helmet, Cameron Evans down the inside, going for third place. And that's the number 20 of Tomalevsky. Yes, it is. And down the inside as well, Max Hollor takes the lead of the race. Could Tomalevsky cut through into second place? Yes, Tomalevsky can cut through into second place. Well, this is like a roll back a few years ago to Kasper Tomalevsky, who raced with number 20 in the Honda Cadet category, took the championship. A bit older now, moving up through the ranks. This is the kind of stuff that we saw uh, from Casper. Took that title. Racecraft impeccable to work his way through the field. Five minutes and 45 seconds to go. Tolor, like this at the moment. It's fourth in points at the moment. 963. We're looking to try and close gap and try and get up to third place has not had a race win so far this season best effort so far got the second place is uh, on the Saturday round at fullback start of July this is a great opportunity to break that up there is championship leader number 52 Joshua Vigembe there's the circuit as I say so so well we watched Joshua race through the ranks in the last few years Always noted for his wet weather driving and being able to find grip around the circuit. He won't necessarily need those skills here today. Bright sunshine forecast uh, for the course of Sunday. Now in seventh place. Back with our leaders, though. That's Hollow. That's Tomalowski. Jarvis and Ernie Overton. We shouldn't forget that Ernie Overton, second in the championship at the moment. Is uh, the driver in the number 28. Tomalevsky looking down the inside of Hollor, going up to Christmas Corner. Begembe down the inside of Jensen Powers as well. Drivers started to make their moves then. Jake Fluitt as well, just behind in number 36. Limit warning for Jasmine Taylor, who's inside the top 10 at the moment. Bit of a scuffle going on there involving Leon Barlow in the number 42. There's your lead change confirmed, so... Tomaleski into lead in the number 20. And strong and uh, focused here, Milton Mill, so far today. Just to go back to Ernie Overton, 985 points at the moment uh, for Overton. And a great consistency so far this season hasn't taken that many race wins though like a few more of them towards the end of this season this is a great opportunity for him to do so sitting in fourth in this queue at the moment at the front of the field Back straight they go then opening the radiator flap there it's Tom Oleski watch out Joshua Jarvis had a look down the inside of Max Hollow there for third place and uh, defends well. I thought Ernie Overton is going to have a chance there to hop through into fourth place, into third place rather. The opportunity just not quite there. A couple of changes in position to let you know about. Leon Barlow has got past Jensen Powers for seventh place. It looks like Joseph Murphy and Jasmine Taylor have both got past uh, Jake Fluitz, Max Hollow had a look down the inside of Tomaleski there. Is that going to leave himself vulnerable to Jarvis behind? Potentially. Tomaleski saw that one coming as well. Just held that outside line, which he can do to Ashby. Put a lot of trust, though, in the driver attempting the move that they're not going to career into the side of you. Two and a half minutes to go then. Less than two and a half minutes, actually, just saw on the, uh, the clock there over the gantry. It's more like two minutes and 12 seconds. Marvis looking for a way past Hollow. Doesn't have enough of an overlap there. Only Overton still there in fourth place. The, uh, the driver from Newquay.
intrigued to see what Cameron Edmonds can do uh, in the latter stages as well. He's there in fifth place. Pace is good. 7.287 last time around. Faster than the leaders. They start scrapping towards the end of this race. There could be an opportunity for Edmonds to sneak through. Change for sixth place. Leon Barlow has got past Joshua Bagembe. Is also uh, the first driver into the 46s. 46.969 for Barlow. Fastest lap of the race so far. Murphy's got past Powers. Blewett has got back past uh, Jasmine Taylor. Scrapping. Oh, positions being scrapped for all over the field at the moment. Which is that we can't cover every single one of them on the cameras. Less than a minute to go in this first heat today for Minimax. Lasky and Hollow oh just they're almost at that point of breaking away from Joshua Jarvis and Ernie Overton behind a good couple of corners for Jarvis reels them back in 28 seconds on the clock will be two more laps of this one Tomalowski just starting to stretch the legs now leaving Mats Hollow vulnerable as down the inside goes Joshua Jarvis into Christmas corner got it done Really good stuff from Joshua Jarvis. Brave on the brakes. Compliance from Max Hollow on the outside didn't make it easy for him. But Joshua Jarvis up into second place then. Not long to go though. Got to get that rhythm going again. Close in. Like we've seen on previous laps from Joshua Jarvis. Otherwise this is going to be Kasper Tomalewski's victory. Another victory in Super 1 for Kasper Tomalewski. The change is confirmed. Joshua Jarvis has had a, a win so far this season. Took the final victory in round number six. Had a couple of second places in heat so far this season. It's what's been a very, very open category so far this season. Very difficult to predict who's going to be winning these races. That's for Tom Olewski on the last lap. Through into Ozzy's looking comfortable at the moment. Not panicking. It's a quick check over the shoulder. Sees that there's nobody immediately there. Doesn't need to defend into the boot. We haven't seen Kasper Tomalewski race for a while on the Super 1 stream. But here he is, race one, heat one of the day. Takes race victory. Great stuff from Kasper Tomalewski. Wins from Joshua Jarvis. Max Hollow in third place. Ernie Overton in fourth. Leon Barlow in fifth place ahead of Cameron Edmonds. Joshua began with good points again for the championship leader in seventh place there. Uh, eighth for Joseph Murphy, ninth against some power of the battling performance by Jake Hewitt, who into tenth place. Minimax completes their first heat. We're going to take a short break here on the competition. Next out on circuit uh, is the first appearance of the day, our uh, first heat for Junior Max. Junior Max then heading out for their first race uh, of the day. Let's have a quick look through their grid ahead uh, of heat number one here at Wilton Mill. Alan Briggs has pole position, comes in in this great form that he's been on recently. Jake Howarth joins alongside on the front row. Jacob Dukes and Alexander Adams acting are on row two. Harry Pullen and uh, Romarian Ubi there on the third row of the grid. Harrison Morrow and Aidan Hassan start on the fourth row of the grid. Freddie Ingram and Callum Gosh are there on row number five. Max Tomkinson and Max Cuthbert form up the sixth row of the grid ahead of Alfie Thompson, Harry Hurst Grover. Uh, they're on row seven. Oliver Bocock and Bartek Filipiak are on row number eight. Billy Edgecombe and Jamie Salter are on row number nine. Sam Arlino and Fenella Lane are on row number 10 and David Marshall are there, is there on row 11, 21 entries in the field. Championship situation then. This is one where uh, you definitely are going to have to get your abacuses out. Alfie Briggs leads it on 10.53, 13 points ahead of Jake Howarth. Those two are definitely in the title fight, but don't forget about Aiden Hassan. He's down uh, a couple of positions in points, but missed. Uh, a whole weekend so has used up his drop scores 
scores that he has got on the board are still very, very good. We'll be in the fight towards the end of the season. This is a big day for Junior Rotax. Away we go for the first heat. Seven minutes plus one lap. Great start for Alfie Briggs. Leads as they go through oblivion for the first time in this one and runs up to Christmas Corner. Aiden Hassan looking to the inside. He's in the middle of the pack. Needs to move through the order. Hasn't had the best of qualifyings by Aiden's standards. That is just what Briggs wanted. Hasn't been as plain sailing a season for Alfie Briggs in this competition compared to uh, Junior Rock. He's taken this championship by the scruff of the neck. Uh, did yesterday. Some great performances. Jacob Dukes is there in second place. A yellow flag as uh, at least one driver is out of the race. Oh, it's the number 23 out of the order. That's Billy Edgecombe. Billy Edgecombe out of the race. I think Max Tomkinson has had problems as well, as has Bartek uh, Filipiak. An incident there on the first lap of the race. That's a real shame for Billy Edgecombe. Having a good season. Consistent scoring, fifth place in points uh, at the start of things here today. That is not how Billy would have wanted his Sunday to start. Was seventh in the final yesterday. Here's your winner from yesterday. At the front of the order, Alfie Briggs. Control at the moment. Pressure coming in from behind. A few drivers in this uh, category here this weekend who have not raced so far this weekend. Including Rick Dukes there. He's third in all of uh, his races yesterday. Freddie Ingram as well, looking out for him coming through the field. was second in the final. Away though, that could help. Uh, the likes of Jake Howarth and Alfie Briggs in their title battles. If they can put some carts in between themselves and their other championship rivals. So for Aiden Hassani, work his way up through the order. Uh, good news for Flippy out, by the way. Transponder issue, so the number 66 is still circulating. Circulating well, is in 12th place. Changes for position uh, on lap number three. Alexander Adams Acton is up to fourth place. And I think I just saw Aiden Hassan has already got through into sixth place, trying to find a way past Harry Pullen for fifth place. Not quite able to do so through top end of the circuit uh, Sam Ardolino has gained positions as well, two of them that's Tomkinson and Bokok, so I think as well it's the same story for Max Tomkinson that an issue with the transponder that he's now slotted into 13th place was not involved in the incident on the first lap just for the edge who had problems uh, it's been, he's out of this race Nick Howard up to second place. He's got past Jacob Jukes. Alexander Adams Axon still there in fourth place. Big test this for Jake Howarth. Had a great season and very consistent, very clean. Uh, but uh, I'll say for the most part, because yesterday did not go well. Was classified 19th in the final now. Jake would hope. That becomes a drop score towards the end of this season, but has got to find the form now to uh, pull back through this order. Some good points uh, for him today. Number 76, you just saw on your screen. Freddie Ingram, got past Harry Pullen on that last lap. Up to sixth place. This race getting into a good rhythm now. Briggs still leading from Howarth. Dukes in third. And Zaxon in fourth. And Hassan there in fifth place. Hassan currently the fastest driver out on circuit. 45.469 last time around. Max Cuthbert has got uh, through as well. Has got past Artek Lithiak on that last lap into 16th place 45-4 for Briggs, 45-5 Howard, 45 in fact exactly the same lap time for Howard and Jukes on that last uh, go round this Wilton Mill International layout 
to the hundred uh, thousandth of a second. There's a yellow flag out down at Ash Corner. That's why the number 32 is out of the race. That's Max Tomkinson. So Max Tomkinson in the JWR machine goes no further. Number six is uh, uh, seven, rather, is when he retires. This has been a very good drive so far from Alfie Briggs. No points so far in this race as he looked under threat. And from the cart being immediately there on his bumper. Oh, a bit wide from Jake Howarth there. That may offer the opportunity for Jacob Dukes to go down the inside, but no. Dukes doesn't have the waft up to Christmas Corner to get into position to go for that move. Still yellow flag down at Ashby Corner. No overtaking through this portion of the circuit. In Hassan, another new fastest lap of the race from number four cart, 45.354. The gap is some three tenths of a second to Alexander Adams Acton. And this is the thing for Aiden Hassan and the story of of his season. Missed the full uh, weekend meeting. And when it comes to two rounds worth of drop scores, that's very easy to calculate. That weekend is it. All drop scores used. Every single race that Aiden Hassan takes part in this season counts for points. He's had some very good results, of course, so far this season. A clean sweep, round two at Rowra. Uh, he did so again at GYG in round number four. And a fantastic uh, weekend at fullback at, uh, a month ago. Six races, five of them race victories, and the only one that didn't, he didn't win. Second place in the final uh, on the Saturday round, so he very, very much in form. On a final result he would have wanted yesterday, was 15th in the final, after the second place in both of the heats. What we mean, every single race is so important for this championship campaign, the drive from Milton Keynes. Good points at the moment here, but we'll be concerned looking up the road and seeing uh, not just both of his title rivals in Briggs and Howarth in first and second place, but also two drivers uh, between him and them. The points being lost. Time is up. Last lap will be, uh, last lap board will be out for Alfie Briggs in what has been a very mature drive here in this first heat of the day for uh, the Rotax categories for the juniors. Got a good gap to Jake Howarth behind. Can Jacob Jukes find a way through? Little jink to the inside from Howarth. Just makes Jacob Jukes think about that. No dive down the inside there on the number 39. Alexander Adams Acton has had a really good race here. This has been one of his strongest runs so far this season. Very good to see from Heathfield driver. But Briggs, well, it's been a perfect weekend so far for Alfie Briggs. Took the clean sweep yesterday. And this is going to be another race victory for Karts number 47. Alfie Briggs takes heat number one in junior max. Ahead of Jake Howard, Jacob Jukes in third place, and Alexander Adams Acton. Great result there in fourth place. There's been an incident on the last corner involving Harry Pullen. Uh, fifth place for Aidan Hassan, sixth for Freddie Ingram, seventh for Callum Grosh, uh, ninth for Harrison Morrow. As I say, there were a couple of drivers there involved on the last corner. Uh, Romarian Ubi finishes in ninth, Oliver Pocock inside the top tens. So is Harry Pullen. And apologies, I didn't quite catch the other driver who was involved there on that last corner. But yeah, very, very frenetic stuff in juniors and a good result victory uh, uh, for Alfie Briggs. One more race to go then before uh, we go to the lunch break. It's the turn of senior Rotax. Senior maps are out for their first heat in a short few moments. Here we go then for the final race before the lunch break here today at Wilton Mill for round 10 of Super 1 2022 and it's the turn of seniors to head out on circuit. Alex Eads has pole position, William Young joins him on the front row of the grid, Harrison Gibson and Ryan Mickleff start on row 2 
big row three. Ben Page alongside Joe Weaver. They've been fighting throughout the season so far, and they're going to continue things here today at Wilton Mill. Start there from fifth and sixth. Carl Dunford and Ben Davis will be interested parties from row number four. Max Fitton and Isaac Lord complete the top ten on the grid ahead of Alex Holgate and Lewis Wild there on row six. And then moving further down through the order. Uh, on to the seventh row of the grid, we find Tom Taylor and Jack Davies. Joshua Valance knows this place very well, but hasn't had the best of qualifying. So starts there on row eight alongside Kieran Pepper. Daniel Jones and Kieran Janali start on row nine. Alicia Bradshaw completes the 19 cart entry here for Senior Max today. Uh, Billy Edgecombe's cart being recovered, so we'll have a slight pause here. And that's good because it will give us a bit more time. To, uh, to talk through the championship situation in uh, in seniors, and at the moment it is a very very good situation uh, for Joe Weaver. Uh, it's been exemplary so far this season. Uh, One thousand and sixty one points for Joe Weaver ahead of Joshua Valance on one thousand and eighteen. Uh, Carl Dunford there on nine seven six. Uh, Tom Taylor on 9.70, Ben Page on 9.59 has had some good results so far this season, Daniel Jones on 9.29, but here's again where we find an interesting story, similar to what we, we've talked about with Aiden Hassan in the juniors, Ben Davis, cart number 86, missed a full weekend, missed uh, rounds 5 and 6 at Clay Pigeon, and what that means is that at the moment he's got 855 points, but, but, had a perfect weekend at fullback, uh, last time out, six races, six wins. And was second in all the races yesterday ahead of Joe Weaver. Alex Eads was your winner uh, yesterday. Uh, it's his first Super 1 weekend of 2022, so he is not uh, a title contender uh, this year. Again, took a clean sweep yesterday of two heat wins and a final. Uh, and also, we should say, there's a number of drivers uh, fresh to Super 1 2022 here this weekend. So, big welcome to Lewis Wilde, William Young, Harry Gibson, Max Fitton and Ryan Mickleff all joining us here at Wilton Mill. All experienced drivers in their own rights, of course. So, again, just to reiterate with the champion situation, are we talking about the convergence of the scores and the, the dropped scores and how that all works out? This, again, is another very, very tight affair. If uh, Joe Weaver was to win all of the races... Excuse me, between now and the end of the season, it would be 1,237 uh, for Joe Weaver in the number 40. Uh, also, Ben Davis, if he was to win every single one of his races between now and the end of the season, it would be 1,239. So that's what we're looking at here. But, uh, high class performances from both Weaver and Davis. It's going to result in a very tight championship battle. Which, um, say I don't see being completed today. This one will go to Shennington. Very well, may well go to the last round at Shennington, which you will be able to watch here uh, on Alpha Live. You click that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, uh, and the notification bell and the like button, all the YouTube buttons. Thank you for your continued support, particularly this weekend. It's very very busy weekend uh, for Alpha Live. Uh, Across the country, plenty of content uh, for you to enjoy. Hope you're having a very good uh, Sunday afternoon. Go to not done a, a check in with the comments uh, for a few races, so hello to a lot of support for Jack Allison in one of the previous races. So hello to Alan uh, Gaza. Crowley as well, hello to Nicky Stewart, uh, racing, we saw racing earlier on in Mini Rock. Uh, Stacey Cooper is cheering on Cooper in Iommi Bambinos, uh, and Simone will be cheering on in uh, as well. Keep the comments coming in. Beautiful day here at Wilson Mill. A few fluffy clouds in the sky. So we're going to take a short break here on the commentary and be back in a few moments' time with the final race before the lunch break here at Wilson Mill. Welcome to Alpha Live, the live streaming service where you can be part of the action from home. 
you can watch via your smart TV, phone, tablet, or even your gaming console. We've got you covered. Just head to the YouTube app on any of your devices and search for Alpha Live. Here, you can watch all of the events as they unfold, or you can choose from our vast library for those lazy days in, all in beautiful HD. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Welcome back, everybody. A uh, short delay here at Wilton Mill is uh, now over. The senior Rotax drivers going out on circuit for their first heat today. Hello to Harry Rogers, cheering on Joe Weaver. Uh, one is a big, big day for the JWR crew. There's a number of classes at least here in senior Rotax. Seven minutes plus one lap, rolling start. Uh, what can anyone do about the form of Alex Eads so far this weekend and superb has pole position part number 22 there he is yeah the, uh, the white helmet It'll be a very fast race this ready to go for senior Rotax in their first seat of the day no we're not going to go around again the parts at the back of the field weren't quite in the correct position So the uh, the timings for the rest of the day. The lunch break after this uh, this one from 12:20 to 13:05, and we'll be back for a second repeat of uh, the heat. Big thanks as well to all of our sponsors uh, for Super One 2022: CWG Choices Limited, AST Signs, JKH, and RI Helmets. Chip uh, provide opportunities for these drivers without that support from those companies so thank you to all of those and we give them a thanks as well uh, if you're watching from home field now under starting pace for the start of heat number one for senior max here today all set to go and away we do go for seven minutes plus one lap great start from Alex Eads, cuts through the middle there. Wanted to assert his dominance at the start of this race and has done so. It's like Young is trying to go around the outside there in the number 24. They've all made it through Christmas Corner for the first time here today. Defensive line into Ashby from Eads. All through now into Wilkins and Oziers. Good clean starts throughout all of the races this morning, and put a spoke too soon. That's Joe Weaver. Joe Weaver off the road, going through a little bit of rally cross, and he's going to lose a stack of positions there. Kept calm with it. Very lucky not to roll over there, Joe Weaver. And he's going to force him a long way down the order and leave him with a lot of work to do. He's gone all the way down to 18th place. Interesting to see a replay of that and see who else was uh, was involved in that incident. We will not be happy about that. It's into uh, into Ozias it was. Who was it down the inside? Uh, and it was the number 86 there that went for it. It was Ben Davis. It I thought it was. Well, there we go. The two championship contenders coming together on lap one. The saving grace at least for. Joe Weaver is that Ben Davis 
also lost out heavily in that. So both of the big championship contenders down into, and that is out of the race. The number 50 of Kieran Janali is a, a difficult spot to recover from as well. I hope Kieran's okay. Well, this has shaken things up a little bit because both of our drivers who we've been talking about having this great fight through the course of the season and being very close together on track got a little bit too close on track. What can they do now? This really opens up things. Nice oh, Ben Page. There he is in the number six. Good position this. Here in Ginelli off to driver's left. Maybe a, a Ben Axel there on the number 50. That part is going to go no further. Kieran Peppers had a problem as well. Or no, he hasn't. It's a transponder issue as Kieran Peppers just hopped back into position on the time of screen there. It's number 66 of Carl Dunford. Page defending to the inside there. Four and a half minutes to go. Really is the drivers who uh, guest appearances so far this weekend dominating this one. Eads from Young, Mikhailov and Gibson, one, two, three, four, and Page the first of the regulars in fifth place. Carl Dunford in sixth place. Lord's having a good run as well. He's up in seventh place ahead of Tom Taylor and Alex Holgate. There is Gibson. Post in by Ben Page. Not at the rear end, not looking as settled as Harry Gibson would have wanted. I just wonder if he's having some issues with grip out there. These warmer temperatures. It's fairly warm yesterday. Forecast to get even warmer here on Sunday. Can be physical, can be tiring. Oh, as Ben Page goes down the inside, saw the opportunity and took it. A bit of weakness for Harry Gibson off of uh, Ashby Corny. He saw him running wide, just doesn't seem to be able to get the cart turned in the moment. Ben Page thought, yep, I'm having a piece of that. Down the inside, into Wilkins. Very good move indeed. Change confirmed for third place. Uh, fourth place, rather, because I think Nicholas had a, a transponder issue. I've not seen uh, his car falling off the road. Yep, sure enough. Pops back up into third place in timing. No worries uh, for those supporting Ryan in the number 21. Two minutes and 40 seconds to go. Track limit warning for Lewis Wilde. Currently running in ninth place in the number. 89 cart. Sen again just looks to be struggling with turning. Middle part of the corners. Able to rack cart around those turns. Circuit now you have. Got to be precise with your line in places. Alex Eads though still controlling this race very well. Half a second clear of William Young. Himself is half a second there of Ryan Mikulov. How is the progress of our championship contenders going? Well, Joe Reeve is up to 13th place, Ben Davis in 16th place. I wonder with the level of contact that the two of them have had have any issues for Ben Davis and the number 86 cart. For a while to get them fixed. Left sets the fastest lap of the race, 45.396. Well, Dunford happy at the moment to sit behind Harry Gibson. Conscious perhaps of Isaac Lord not being too far behind in cart number 57, the white helmet, yellow details on the front. Here's your race leader, Alex Eads. On serving at the moment, doesn't need to push overly hard. Keeping William Young at a safe distance. And there will be, let's see how many seconds we've got to go across the line. At least two more laps to go. William Young putting the pressure on though, new fastest lap of the race. Young there in carts number 24. Now that was until Joe Weaver came across the line and took it at 45.205. So. Clearly, uh, no significant damage to Weaver's cart, even though it has been 
momentarily up in two wheels and through the grass. Joe Weaver will at least have a know that he, he does have drop scores to play with. He's been ever present so far this season, hasn't missed any races, and has already got a good number of points on the board. Two laps to go then. Eight seconds on the clock. Is the wind down time on this tour of the circuit and then do one more. Let's see, you hear the chattering there in the braking zone through into Christmas Corner. Just very comfortable, very calm. It's having to wrestle the cart too hard. Doing exactly what he needs to do. Could be a chance for a clean sweep across the weekend, this. It's been very impressive. Last lap board will be shown shortly to Alex Eads. Saw that pressure coming in from William Young a few laps ago. Again, Eads has just taken it up a notch. And Page has got some good pace at the end of this race as well. 45.117, new fastest lap of the race of anybody out there. Uh, changes to let you know about. Lewis Wilder thinks he's had a problem on that last lap. Loses three positions to Alex Holgate, Joshua Valance and Joe Weaver. Ben Davis has gained a position as well. Has got past Kieran Pepper. Well, again, that could be a transponder issue. We'll check uh, shortly. Alex Eads. No nonsense. Got on with it. Great start. Asserted himself off, uh, off the green flag. Hasn't looked back since across the course of the last seven minutes or so. He's going to come around the corner, take his fourth race victory of the weekend. The first one here today in heat number one. Alex Eads takes the first heat for senior road tax. William Young in second. Ryan McLeff in third place. Good points for Ben Page in fourth. Harry Gibson holds on to fifth. Sixth for Carl Dunford. Seventh for Isaac Lord. Eighth for Tom Taylor. Ninth for Alex Holgate. Tenth for Joshua Valance. And the two big uh, scores there in terms of championship. Joe Weaver, 11th. And Davis in 14th after their collision on lap number one. Well, that completes the running for this morning and early afternoon session. We'll go to the lunch break now. Uh, if you've enjoyed the commentary, add Double Dash and then across your social media networks. And if you've not done so already, please do subscribe to the Alf Live YouTube channel. We'll be back, uh, just checking the schedule, at 13.05, five minutes past one in the afternoon or the start of the second round of heats with C50 Gambino's first, and then every 12 minutes going forward for another Gambino's second, Honda Cup, third, Junior Rock, Mini Rock, Rotax 177, Mini Max, Junior Rotax, Senior Rotax, take us through to just before 3 o'clock. We'll look forward to it. Thank you for joining us here this morning. Enjoy the lunch break, and we'll see you very, very soon for more Super 1 action here from Wilson Mill.
Welcome back, everybody, to live coverage of round 10 of the Super 1 Series for 2022 here at Wiltermill on Alpha Live. We're getting ready for the second rotation of heats uh, this afternoon, which will be uh, starting off with the C50 Bambino. So let's cut to the C50 Bambino as they're heading out in circuit now. C50 Bambino, New Era and Pro categories heading out on circuit. Uh, this is their second and final heat uh, of the day ahead of their uh, final race to decide who will be the winner for round 10 of uh, this championship. Let's have a look at the grid then. This was decided by timed qualifying from early this morning. Austin Noman has pole position in pro. Riley Murrow alongside him on the front row of the grid. Ethan McClellan and Bertie Clark on row two. Cole Teal and Harpadas on row three. Alfie Mayer and Amelia Dial form a row four. That is the last of the pro rows. We're now new era from here on in. Chester Forks and Chloe McGill, the two title uh, rivals, are on the first row of the new era's fifth overall. On row six overall, you've got Charlie Page and Rex Pooley. And then uh, Lewis Cacoldi and Cooper Earsman on row seven. Jensen Biglands and Mason Hibbert on row eight. Henry Algar and Harry Chapman on row number nine. Theo Poiser and Soren Gallagher form up the 10th row of the grid. Buddy Hugo and Louis Williams Mabs uh, are there on row 11. Toby Biggs and Sophia Page are on row number 12. And Grace Mayer is due to complete the 25 cart field. A result from this morning. Uh, all the results still provis uh, provisional, by the way, but can be reviewed on results of time in the whole cart. Uh, and it was Chester Forks from Chloe McGill from Rex Bully 1, 2, 3 in the new eras. Riley Murrow and Austin Noman are you 1, 2, 3 in pro. The cart's out on circuit, heading around to complete their formation lap. Be back with us here on Alpha Live. Hope you enjoyed your lunch break enjoyed mine and the weather conditions still absolutely brilliant here uh, Wilson Mill very sunny a few clouds in the sky nice and warm nice and dry perfect conditions for some cracking racing and we saw some cracking racing this morning in the first rotation of the heats if you did miss it don't worry you can go back and watch all of the racing here today and all of the Alpha Live streams uh, free and on demand here on the Alpha Live YouTube channel uh, after the Events. Subscribed, notification bell, like button as well. All of the Sunday rounds of Super One 2022 streamed for you here on Alpha Live with commentary from Double Dash Motorsport Media at Double Dash MM across social media networks. There's uh, a like, and subscribe, and all of that business for that course of the year. So the grid being formed up then for the Bambinos. Just a quick reminder, if you're just joining us, the pros are the ones denoted with the orange backgrounds on their number boards. The new eras are the ones with the black backgrounds on the number boards. Seven minutes on the clock. It'll be seven minutes plus one lap. Ready to go then for the start of this race. Standing start. Riley and Austin on the front row of the grid. And away they go. Good start from both of them on the front row. And a better start this time from Austin. No one has sometimes struggled with the starts. Here in 2022, great start for Harper Das, cutting through into second place. Where did that come from? Brilliant run from Harper through there in the middle of the pack. And Riley Murrow once again has the lead up into Christmas Corner for the first time in the C50 Bambino New Eras. Harper Das already there in second place. Now, will they work together to try work themselves up from the rest of the pack? No, Harper Das is going to go down the inside to take the lead of the race. Great bravery into Ashby Corner. Not easy downhill on the brakes. Harper Das has gone from the second row of the grid to lead in the early stages of this second heat for the C50 Bambinos. Austin Owens still there in uh, third place. Chester Forks is coming through in the uh, green detailed carts, the leader of the new era. And through to third place, it looks like Austin Owens on the grass there. That's going to be trouble for a number of drivers behind us. The all spray outwards to get round the boot and end of lap number one Harper Das leads Riley Morrow in second place third place on the road and first in class for 
Uh, Chester Forks looks like Chloe McGill has also followed through into second place in New Era, fourth overall. Harper Das to the inside, nearly three wide as they head up towards Christmas Corner. Not sure Riley Murrow was aware that Chester Forks was on his outside there. Both drivers dealt with that well. Ethan McClellan does a good start as well. He's up to fifth place overall, third in pro. Great start once again from the C50 and Bino drivers, our youngest group of drivers here in Super 1 2022. Two Ozies they go and onto the back straight. Chester Forks looking to the inside now of Riley Murray going for second place in the race overall. Gets it. Another really good overtake from Chester Forks there. And the final corner they go. Harper Das doing well with the pressure at the moment. Five minutes on the clock to go. There are thereabouts. Switchback being looked at by Chester Forks. Is there going to be an opening as they run through Oblivion past Fine Lady, which is the kink on the run up to Christmas Corner? It's two by two as they head up to Christmas Corner. Here comes Ethan McClellan down the inside in the number 23. Chloe McGill's in there as well. Contact with Riley Murrow. Nobody goes round there. Everybody's still pointing in the right direction. Rex Pooley's in there as well. He's having a cracking weekend is Rex Pooley in cart number 31. Black helmet with the white bodywork. Oh, my goodness, and off goes Rex Pooley. Contact there with Bertie Clark. Bertie Clark in the grass, number 21. Back on circuit now. Well, the good news is that that didn't result in a bigger accident, but that was a big airborne moment for Rex Pooley, who falls out of fifth place overall. Uh, the race, I think, is continuing from our vantage point here in the commentary box. Three minutes and 50 seconds to go. Meanwhile, up front, overall and in class, Chester Forks in P1 once again. Harper Das in P2 overall, but that won't matter in terms of points for the pro category. Points awarded by class position, not overall position in, uh, in these two competitions. Riley Murrow still there as well, and Chloe McGill in fourth place, cart number 15. Sating heat so far this from the Bambino C50s. Yellow flag is out into Ashby Corner. That's for the incident involving Rex Pooley. Side by side between the two leaders in pro. Harper Das and Riley Murrow. Riley Murrow trying to get round the outside there. Squeezing there. Straddling the white line through Ozies now. That's going to tighten on exit. Owen McGill still holding well there in fourth place. Now down the inside of Riley Murrow, looking for third place overall, has got it. Great move by Chloe McGill there. Took advantage of a compromised Riley Murrow off of Ozier's. Held the inside, held it calmly, taking the position. Two and a half minutes on the clock to go. Murrow down the inside once more on Chloe McGill. Gets back through into third place. Ethan McClellan's coming back into this as well. Fifth place overall. Down the inside goes Murrow on Das. Takes the lead in class. Second place overall. First of those in C50 Pro. And that is good stuff once again from Riley Murrow. Looking out for Cole Teal as well. It's been a strong weekend from Cole Teal so far. Carts number six in sixth place at the moment. Not too far behind this quartet. C. Teal flash through shot there in the background. Alpha live stream. Two minutes of this race to go. Chester Forks looking comfortable at the moment for another race victory, both overall and uh, in the pro category, uh, in the new era category rather. Uh, unofficial, and uh, that's unofficial with a capital U. Points at the moment uh, in the box. Hill on. 1105, Forks on 1087, the side by side go Ethan McClelland and Chloe McGill for overall position. McClelland gets through. It's okay though for McGill in terms of championship points, won't affect on that front. Uh, what other positions are we seeing being exchanged? Lots of positions being exchanged down the field. Jensen Biglands and Lewis Coldy have both been in positions, as has Bertie Clark. Harvey uh, Mayer has had a problem. Has fallen down to 12th place. Charlie Page has also been overtaken on that last lap. And the Algar has got past Mason Hibbert. Good to see Mason back out. There's some racing earlier on in the weekend. 
Herbie Biggs as well has got past Grace Mayer for 20th place. Oh, he's off the road there. That's Jensen Biglands, the number 66. Just cut to it there on shot. This is all over seventh position. Bertie Clark at the front of this order. Hearts number 21 with the orange plate. Running through the boots now. Miss Capaldi in there as well. Carts number 18. Yeah. Great start to the season for Lewis Capaldi at Rowra. A number of Scottish drivers in this competition. Fantastic to have them here. Lewis Capaldi looking for the inside now on Bertie Clark. There's a gap there. Is there enough drive to get the inside line into Christmas Corner? Not quite. Charlie Page is in there as well. The number 33 going down through Inkermans now. It's a flat right-hander downhill into Ashby Corner. Bertie Clark covering back through the field after that contact with Rex Pooley. Now into the devolving Rex Pooley, shall we say. Uh, in the early stages of this race. Unfortunately, one of those where there was just too many carts all trying to fight over one piece of road. It's Capaldi. Big racing family, the Capaldi's, of course. Racing well there inside the top ten. Here is the fight at the front of the field. Two class leaders as well, Forks and Murrow. Both understanding their championship situations. I would not be surprised at all to see these two drivers just calmly bring this to the uh, chequered flag on what is the last lap. There's nothing to be gained in terms of championship points by finishing ahead of one another. Both scoring the maximum 34 points for a heat win in this scenario. Well, for... Uh, Chester Forks just keeps chipping away at that championship lead of Chloe McGill's. Riley Murrow extends. It's looking better and better with every single race. Coming up to the last corner then, it's going to be class victories for both Chester Forks and Riley Murrow across the line. Two from two from both of them and a flying finish over the line there. Harper Dash, great result there. Third place overall, second in class. Ethan McClelland, another strong run there. Fourth overall, Chloe McGill Again, great points for Chloe McGill. Fifth place overall, second in class. Cole Teal finishes in fourth place in class, sixth overall ahead of Bertie Clark. Charlie Page, third of the new eras ahead of Luke, uh, Lewis Capaldi and Cooper Eersman. That is your one through ten. A good race. Again, from the Bambino C50 category. Field piling over the line. I think they're eight laps. The line is uh, Toby Biggs, another 65. A few more parts to get to the end. Grace Mayer in the number 51 and the 34 of Sophia Page. That's the first time in Super 1 this weekend. And uh, that leads it. But if you go and wreck probably the two clubs in that race. We will see the Bambino C50s uh, back out again, if we're staying on schedule, around 14.53. So uh, just going up to 3 o'clock is when their final will be of 9 minutes plus 1 lap. We'll look forward to that. Next out on circuit, though, is race number 11 in your schedules. It's the second heat of the day for Ayami Bambino. Here we go then for the second heat of the day for the IAMI Bambino category. Ronnie Carter has pole position for this one. Charlie Clough took heat number one and has a chance to take heat number two there from the front row of the grid. Josh Cook looking to bounce back after fifth place in the first heat. Starts on row two alongside Grayson Wortley. Arthur Farrow, the first of the Pharaohs, starts on row three alongside James Root. He's been in impressive form so far this weekend. Dean Singh Pahal and Fraser Anderson start on row number four. Then it's Oscar Kenny and Darren Dimitrov starting on row five. Logan Rolf and Logan Jones start on row number six. Daniel Ferguson and Eli Lizieki start on row number seven. Then it's Freddie Fluitt and William Crombie on row number eight. Harris Barber and the second of the Pharaohs, Albert Pharaoh, start on row nine. Ethan Coupland forms up the 10th row of the grid, 19 carts due in the 
field. Recap from earlier. Uh, Charlie Clough claimed the, uh, the winner of that first heat ahead of Ronnie Carter, Grayson Wortley, uh, and James Roots in fourth, Josh Cook in fifth place, and still incredibly tight. This is the closest uh, championship battle that we've got for Super 1 2022. I'll state this again. These are unofficial scores in the box. Please don't shout at me if I'm wrong. Uh, but Josh Cook, uh, by my calculations, has 1,117 points on the board. Six points ahead of Grayson Wortley, who himself is six points ahead of Ronnie Carter. Still having close though in terms of possible points that those three drivers could get. It really is going to go to the wire in this one. We're looking out for James Roots as well. James Roots has had some very strong scores so far this whole uh, weekend here at Wilton Mill. Third place in the second heat yesterday, ahead of a top five in the final. He's in the top five again uh, this morning in the first heat. To move up from the position of eighth in the championship. Some strong scores towards the end of the year. Keep your comments coming in as to who uh, you're supporting. Gary, who's cheering on Les Clark in that previous race. He's the second heat of two for each of the categories. And we'll move on to the finals later on this afternoon. Formation lap underway then for the Miami Bambino category. Remind the folks at home, we've got two rounds of Super 1, uh, two meetings of Super 1 this month. Uh, this 2022 championship in a few weeks' time. Not too far from here, down the road at Shannington. Weekend of the 27th and 28th of August. And you'll be able to watch the combination of the 28th here on Alpha Live. Grid forming up for this second heat then for the IAMI Rambinos. A standing start as ever seven minutes plus one lap for the drivers to take heat one will be a really crucial race I have a feeling that this plus the results from heat one are going to be very important for getting those positions on the grid five second board is shown we're ready to go racing here at Wilton Mill for the second heat of the I Army Bambinos lights on lights out away we go and racing good start from both on the front row of the grid Carter and Clough side by side. Good start as well for Grayson Wortley. And through into second place goes Grayson Wortley on the inside. Running up to Christmas Corner then it is. Clough with the GP plate and Grayson Wortley going for the lead here. Down the inside has got a statement of intent there from Grayson Wortley from the second row of the grid. Takes a brilliant lead in the early stages of this race. Down into Ashby Hairpin then. This is more like it from Grayson Wortley. This is what we've... Uh, come to believe can be driven by Grayson Wortley. He's perhaps been a little bit off colour in the middle part of this season. Needs to get back onto that top step. Start taking wins in these heats and that is the perfect way to deal with the start of this second heat here at Wilton Mill. And the final quarter of the go then, over start, finish. The attack coming in there from Clough, and Clough goes down the inside, takes the lead into oblivion. Bit of help, I think, behind from Ronnie Carter. Bump drafting their way through, and now side by side, Cook and Wortley for a split second there. Cook returns into the slipstream behind Grayson Wortley. He's had a good start in all of that. See, Harris Barber has gained a couple of positions uh, towards the back of the field not such a good start that time unfortunately for uh, James Roots lost three positions is down uh, into around seventh or eighth position now it's the top four he's top four we all saw at the front of the order in the first heat earlier on this morning it is Clough in the GP plated carts and the number six of Ronnie Carter the number 70 of Grayson Wortley and the 77 of Josh Cook Good run as well so far from Alpha Faro in the 
number 24 cart. In fifth place at the moment, James Root starting to return back through the order, has gained a position and has the fastest lap in the early stages of this heat. Oscar Kenny has also got past Logan Jones. Uh, Eli Lizecki past Daniel Ferguson for uh, 13th place and William Crombie as well has also gained a spot past Albert Farrow for 17th. Luff leads them onto the back straight. So Ken has, oh dear, off there is Dean Singh Pahal, the number 23. Looks to be up at Wilkins. And that's a shame for Dean Singh Bear there to just lose a few positions. And circuit safe and town for rather the number 23 part there. You see the 23 start to double down the order. Here's a good scrap going on. Uh, on fifth place down, so James Roots has gained two positions there, past Arthur Farrow and Fraser Anderson. Justin Wortley currently the fastest driver out in circuit, 56.215. Just sitting there in third place. Okay, good spot to be in. Middle phase of second heat for the I Army Bambinos here today. It's almost forming into one of these, these classic heat pursuit races. Group of four at the front of the order, a group of three behind, and both groups needing to work together right now. Solidify positions. You know, battle over later on in the race. If we pop forward to start fighting, this uh, trio on the screens at the moment would start catching. Just the relative pace between the two of them now as Faro of Faro's moment down the inside of James Roots. 56.8 last time around for Roots, Farrow and 57.0 for Anderson. Say the, the front quartet doing a fantastic job. They're all in the 56 twos and the 56 threes. They're dropping the group behind. Harris Barber has got past Daniel Ferguson for 13th place and William Crombie as well has gained a position past Freddie Fluitt for 15th. Two and a half minutes on the clock. Still James Roots defending uh, from Arthur Farrow. Moving on to that fifth place right now. They're designed to uh, try to go with this fifth place. Big move for third. Just confirmed on timing though. Josh Cook has got past Grayson Wortley. That is quite a story in terms of this championship. Josh Cook having a good response here. They've been a tad bit disappointed with fifth place in the first heat. He's got back on the horse and is charging here. Now start to look at the rear bumper of Ronnie Carter and think, is there a way through past that number six cart? Still a bit of time remaining in this race. Plenty of opportunity to make some overtakes for any of these four drivers. It's Charlie Clough still down the back straight, leading. As Charlie's done since the early stages of, uh, of lap number two. So, time on the clock. That'll be about a minute and a quarter. Three more laps then. Two more laps on time and then the plus one. Up to Christmas corner they go. Josh Cook having a think about going for second place there. Thinking better of it. And I think that was the right choice to make. Mason Wardley's looking for a move down into Ashby though, that's brave. Can he get the braking right? Yes, he can. Very good stuff from Grayson Wardley. That's the move into Ashby, which we've talked about so far today, is a lot easier than it looks. Sorry, a lot harder than it looks, I should say. But uh, third place then for Grayson Wardley. Got that spot on. That'll give young Grayson some confidence. Trying to get past Ronnie Carter, trying to get past Charlie Clough. Say this title battle is so close. 20 seconds on the clock. New fastest lap of the race from Grayson Wortley. 6.151 is the opening there. Oh, there was half a look for Wortley as Carter ran a touch wide on the initial run through uh, turn two. Ashcook looking to be dropped here as the 
Starting to be some struggles in the number 77. Perhaps so. Still got to keep holding in there. Anything could happen amongst the three ahead. Washington, a number of opportunities so far this year has read situations like this very, very well. Time is up. The final lap board will be out next time around. Uh, I can tell you that Arthur Ferrer, by the way, behind this uh, group has got past uh, James Roots. William Crombie has continued to make gain positions. He's now gained 14th place off of Daniel Ferguson. Last lap board is out then. Can Charlie Clough hold on to this victory? It's been a great day for Charlie Clough so far. It's been a great weekend. The winner of the final yesterday in round nine was second in heat number two. It's all down the inside. Is there a gap there for Ronnie Carter to go down the inside? Yes, there is. Is there going to be an opportunity now for Grayson Wardley to go around the outside? Wardley does take second place. So it's Carter to the lead. Wardley to second place. Carter defends into Ashby Corner there. Charlie Clough, there wasn't much wrong that Charlie did there. Still in third is now going to be on the inside. It's going to be three wide. It's a Wilkins. What a move by Charlie Clough back into the lead of the race. Josh Cook down the inside now. It's Oasius takes second. Any one of these four drivers could win. Wardley's on the grass. Forced there by Ronnie Carter. Brilliant finish here in the Iami Bambinos. Round the boot for the final time. Can Charlie Clough hold on for victory? Take pole position into the final. Yes, he can. Charlie Clough takes a brilliant victory in heat number two here today at Wilton Mill. Josh Cook second. Ronnie Carter third, Grayson Wortley fourth, on the line, that was close as well, it looks like James Root's got it, uh, got fifth place, Arthur Farrow, great result there for Arthur uh, in sixth place, one of Arthur's strongest of the year so far, Fraser Anderson in seventh place, Darren Dimitrov eighth, Oscar Kenny ninth, and Logan Rolfe completes the top ten with a personal best on the last lap. Well, an absolutely superb heat there from the iArmy Bambino category and uh, if that's not that's the appetite for the final later on this afternoon I don't know uh, what will to be honest uh, we should be seeing that final around uh, 5 past 3, 15.07 the 24 hour clock uh, on British summer time but for now we'll uh, thank the Bambino iArmy uh, class for uh, very entertaining racing, we'll see them later on Next out on circuit, race number 12 on your uh, schedules for racing here today at Wilton Mill. It's the second heat for Honda Cadet. Right, it's time for the second heat of the day for Honda Cadet. It was a brilliant first heat. Here's the grid for uh, the second one, Hugh Roach has pole position. Jensen Walker alongside on the front row. Jensen Hookie and Riley Till on row number two. Joel Bullen and Jack Collinson on row number three. Theo Bradshaw had a spin in heat number one. We'll be looking for better things in heat two from row four. Logan McAllister, the winner of heat number one, uh, joins him on that one. Max Taddy had problems in heat number one as well. Has another opportunity from row five alongside Daniel Butcher. Teddy Cooper, yesterday's winner, goes on row six alongside Tom Reed. Andrew Dixon and Kean Sullivan start on row seven. Then it's Thomas Butcher and John Richardson from row eight. Richardson will need to do some of that overtaking again like we saw in heat number one. Austin Stiley and Leo Livings start on row number nine ahead of Ella Dixon and Josh Parker on row ten. Uh, there was a retirement in heat one from Maria Roberto and we uh, apparently said Thompson sadly will not take the start in this one so we uh, just a very brief recap of heat number one's results uh, Logan McAllister ahead of Joel Bullen and Hugh Roach that was your one two three it's a decent race for our championship leader in the number 11 cart this most rival it was in seventh place Very open championship for Honda Cadet 2022. Oh, is there a problem there? John Richardson, possibly. Arms in the air. It's going over. Advantage point here. The delayed start is. Uh, 
two. So no, we are good to go then for seven minutes plus one lap. Red lights are on for the Honda Cadet drivers. Out they go and away they go. Good start. Joel Bullen and Jensen Hookie coming through the middle of the pack. Great start for Jensen Walker. Leads in the early stages of this one has got a real run out of oblivion and on the way up to Christmas Corner. But we've seen before how difficult it is to lead out front on your own in a Honda Cadet race. Oh, it's a big incident. And the thing over the top there was that Logan McAllister going over the top of uh, may have been Riley Till, I think, the number nine. Yeah, Riley Till has not come through sector number one. It was uh, a very, very uh, scary moment there. Never like to see one park ride over the top of another. It all just bunched on the exit of Christmas Corner. Race continues to go the leaders. Theo Bradshaw's had a better start this time in the uh, Ferrari Tribute livery. And number 43, which is a position to Joel Bullen, though, at the front of the order. Walker from Roach. Uh, it wasn't Logan McAllister going over the top, because Logan McAllister uh, is quite clearly there in third place. Joel Bullen in fourth, fifth for Bradshaw. Good start as well for Max Taddy in sixth place. Uh, may have been as well. Tom Reed's fallen down a number of positions on that first lap. Uh, Jensen Hookey as well was involved. Jensen Hookey, it's uh, not been a good start to the race for number six. Holding second place in the championship. Change for the lead. Roach down the inside of Walker. Hugh Roach back to the front of the pack. Big opportunity this now. Got two of them together. Can work together. Hold out that gap. Ahead of Logan McAllister. We've seen the speed of Logan McAllister already today. McAllister slightly vulnerable. That there's no second car. It's just behind to push along. Drivers here. Both with uh, very nice helmet designs. Contributing to more drivers of recent past are on the current bit, of course. Both wearing a similar design to Lando Norris. Walker. Very similar to the main Jensen himself. 2009 for the one world champion Jensen Button. That's Theo Bradshaw, 43. From the Bradshaw disappointment in the first heat to spin early on and took away any opportunity of strong results. More like it. What we expect to see. Head of Gold Bullen there. Fourth place confirmed after they've conditions. They run as well. We said that Logan McAllister was perhaps a bit vulnerable there, third place on his own, but it's just that set of 53 6 6 9 flying along now and is starting to close in on the top two. To Ashby Corner they go. Still Roach ahead of Walker. Callister closing all the time. He's going to make it a trio. Now again, the third tactics I think at this stage would just be to continue working together. So they define the one, two, three. Battle out over as uh, there's some dust kicked up there on the exit of Ashby. This one wide. Thought process being solidify your one, two, three, find out who actually has the first, second, and third in the latter stages. But it's not quite done yet, though, because Theo Bradshaw's got that good pace as well. 3 8 3 6. And Alistair has now closed in, joined the duo, made it a trio at the front of the order here in Honda Cadet, heat number two. Performance out of the St. Motor Sport, the three cart so far today. Already seen a heat win for Logan McAllister. A strong performance, even just uh, things stayed the way they are. McAllister towards the front of the order in the final run. The final grid is uh, decided by the race results from heats one and two combined. You Roach looking good at the moment, though, very unflustered front of this order, two and a half minutes to go. Again, these three drivers know the job isn't done yet. 1.3 seconds is the gap back to Bradshaw. So from watching many races here over the years, a 1.3 second gap in Honda Cadet disappear very 
very quickly. Bradshaw, Bullen, Taddy and Cooper. They're doing their bit of the bargain as well. They're, they're working nicely as a group. But they've got Teddy Cooper now joining on the back of that second group. And Teddy Cooper is the fastest driver out on circuit. 3.296, the fastest lap of the heat so far. Less than two minutes on the clock. The screens are, or is Bradshaw. The drivers at the moment content with letting Bradshaw just lead this one out. Let's have a look at the, uh, the times. This is interesting, very interesting. The second group is quicker than the first group. That is quite clear. 55 fives and 55 fours as Bullen looks down the inside. Ooh, he's getting a bit impatient, and that's going to offer an opportunity. Oh, and on the grass there goes Max Taddy. It looks like Teddy Cooper has taken advantage of all of that and wide there from Joel Bullen now. I was about to say that the second group was quicker. They were all doing 53 fives or better. And uh, the first three were not doing those kind of lap times, but unfortunately, that, that second group uh, might not. Uh, see, that's what can happen often in this class, this category. One 50-50 move, low progress of a group apart, and now they've really got a lot of work to do to try and catch up to those leaders who have responded, responded brilliantly. Hugh Roach, 55-4, Logan McAllister has got through. Past Jensen Walker, down the inside there goes the number 79 of Teddy Cooper on Joel Bullen. That's a great move for fifth place. But McAllister has got past Walker for second place and has now taken the lead. Has now taken the lead, has Logan McAllister. This is great to see from Logan McAllister. This has been a return to form that we saw earlier in the season from Logan McAllister and not a moment too soon. Had a difficult middle part to 2022, but here today at Wilton Mill, things are going right. Time has expired. Last lap board will be out shortly. Roach is looking down the inside. Oh, that's a very aggressive chop across there from McAllister. Needs to be careful. That may get a contact warning from the race steward. McAllister leads. Roach second. Walker's got a run up the inside there. Great run from Jensen Walker. He's going to hold the inside. Roach trying to go around the outside, brilliantly done. But look at Theo Bradshaw. We said the job wasn't done. Theo Bradshaw is catching at quite a rate here. In fourth place, this fight's going on behind with uh, Teddy Cooper. Andrew Dixon's now involved in there. Has crept into uh, the well, the middle part of the top ten. Bit of a boisterous finish here in the. Uh, second heat for Honda Cadet, but Logan McAllister is going to come through the boot for the final time and make it two victories from two on the road here at Wilton Mill today. Good driving, good speed from Logan McAllister, takes the race victory. Hugh Roach will be happy again with more good points for the number 11 car. Jensen Walker on form today, quite clearly one of his strongest results of the year so far in third. Theo Bradshaw fourth, good response after disappointments in heat one. Great driving again from Teddy Cooper. Following up those results from yesterday, gets another top five. Andrew Dixon was sixth, Max Taddy was seventh. Joel Bullen eighth, Jack Collinson ninth, John Richardson again. Some good overtakes there. Moving up through the order, finishing ten plates. There we go. The Honda Cadet final could be a bit of a humdinger, I feel, later on today. And uh, we will be able to see that on schedule. Uh, around 20 past three. We'll stick around that. We're going to move on though from the uh, cadets and move to Junior Rock. Junior Rock in their second heat. Out next. have a look at the grid then for the second appearance of the day for junior rock alfie briggs will have pole position ahead of george barker and oliver law a story of the day alfie briggs looking to close out this championship here today for junior rock won the first heat second for george barker third for oliver law and mathematically the uh, championship can't be won in uh, this particular race but Breaks by uh, very simply 
any ground circuit without means for disqualification or exclusion or that manner uh, would basically give himself championship points. Uh, be one step away from winning the title. Barker, one thousand one law. Uh, similarly, Barker could put himself uh, in a position to uh, be able to take and secure second place in the championship come the final. For that customary breakaway at the start of the race uh, for their formation lap. Keep your comments and your messages of support coming in. We're cheering on uh, John and Riley in the Honda Cadets and earlier. Uh, and support from Victoria as well. Everybody for getting in touch uh, on the YouTube stream. You around here, enjoying the content. You can click that subscribe button on the live YouTube channel. And to read for the law and grades. Uh, Car. We're ready to go for the second heat for Junior Rock. Looking to the lights, and away we go for seven minutes plus one lap. Good start for Alfie Briggs. George Barker cuts into second place early on. Leads to second place in the first heat by Oliver Law. The point now to say let's try and close down Alfie Briggs. That is uh, very much one of those things that is easier said than done, it's particularly with the form that Alfie Briggs is in around this Wilton Mill circuit. Uh, this month, very, very strong in any of the races uh, that we've seen him competing in. We can go to Mill Art Club and the championship uh, progress you can follow here on Half Alive. Uh, my colleagues have on the cameras today on Ratcliffe, facing on that one, doing a fantastic job. You go and check, uh, check out that content, particularly if you like your racing around this Wilton Mill circuit so end of lap number one Alfie Briggs leads by 1.5 seconds ahead of George Barker George Barker looking good as well 0.8 of a second ahead of Oliver Law six minutes to go uh, the key point going to be some at home we won't like well, why are we making such a thing about EQs and exclusions well EQs and exclusions Cannot be eradicated from your drop scores. You have to carry them through. Briggs continuing doing as a team. Have a time through this championship. Racing clean. Now they've got the speed. Now they've got the performance. Now they've got the talent behind the wheel. What I will say is the. Uh, nature of these cars with the Vortec clock engine. It's easier said than done. All those aspects of car preparation correct. Racing clean as well. Alfie's definitely helped himself there with strong qualifying pace and particularly with these early laps that have become a signature trait for Briggs the last few months of get away from the rest of the field. Hold that two second gap and more. Almost time trial it to the end of these races. Keeping himself out of trouble. Say that, he's pushing. He really is pushing. Using every little bit of the circuit. 2.7 seconds is the advantage now for Briggs over Barker. And similarly, George Barker doing a great job. Low 46ers. Three seconds ahead of the law at the moment. If the race were to finish this way, we would leave Briggs on 1,214 points. And as we say, we would literally just need to roll out in the final. That would be title minimum number of points uh, fleeting 
final with uh, putting on uh, 70 to 30 points clear. Here's Oliver Law, AWR machine, single rookie uh, in this category. Rookies being drivers who have not competed in uh, the Super 1 series before. See them across the different classes. Ooh, big, big chunk of the uh, the inside curb on the uh, on Paddock Bend there. It is a monster. Yeah. Save from experience. One you want to be getting to custom with. And for a reason. Just to, uh, I was thinking, just slow down through the corner a bit. Not uh, take too much speed through that last corner and start exceeding track limits. Oliver Law here. To build that pace, build up the experience in this machinery. It's a tough gig against two very strong drivers. Here's George Barker, Elf, racing in Super One for a number of years, last champion in his own rights, previous editions. And running good pace, 56.237 last time around, which is a new. Crystal best in this race. We saw George get into the 45s uh, in the first race and we looked at do so again. Nice slide through Wilkins there. And those is onto the back straight. Less than two minutes to go. Second heat of the day for Junior Rock. Alfie Briggs leading. Oh, another new fastest lap of the race from Briggs. 45 3 3 6. He really is enjoying things out there 6.5 seconds is now his lead over George Barker a new personal best as well well in fact personal best from all three drivers out there at the moment George Barker did a 46.2 Oliver Law good pace as well 46.5 none of them at the moment neither of them able to deal with the exemplary pace of Briggs out front with a 45.3 down the back straight uh, goes Martin Briggs now, George Barker yeah, straight in a moment as well. And two finish another lap and another new fastest lap of the race from Briggs, 45.280. Barker goes quicker as well and is into the 45, so great work there from George Barker. 7.1 seconds now the lead for Briggs. Down to Ashby Corner. There seems to be no let up from Alfie Briggs at the moment. He knows he's in a good position. He knows he's very, very close now to completing and getting his hands on that Junior Rock Championship. Championship he missed out on 12 months ago uh, by the smallest of margins. A great fight with uh, still 10 seconds to go on the clock. Means we'll have two more laps, including the one that they're on. Another new fastest lap of the race from Alfie Briggs, 45.187. Just wonder, could Alfie Briggs in the final with a longer race, maybe even get into the 44s? We get into the 44s now in this one. He's still got this lap plus another one to go. The race has been dropping the lap times. He's going to get very, very close. And Oliver Law has set a new PB, 46.548. Briggs coming around then. We'll see the last lap board shortly. There it is. Absolutely perfect on the track limits. He's slowed down gracefully. 45.258. Uh, this will put Briggs in a position where he can complete things in the final and finish off what's been a great season for him in this competition and also give him confidence for the Rotax racing later on this afternoon. This will be one of the highlights of uh, this afternoon here at Wilton Mill for round 10. But here comes Alfie Briggs, round the boot for the final time, on point as ever, cart number 47 takes heat number two in Junior Rock here today and sets the fastest lap of the race to boot to 45.1. Three, five. George Barker 
ever consistent, is going to finish in second place with some great pace uh, for him as well. Third place for Oliver Law. Stuff there from the Junior Rock drivers who we will see uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, their final due out around uh, just after half past three, 15.35 on the schedule. The good stuff there from the Junior Rocks. We'll see them again later on. Next thousand circuit uh, on your schedule is race number 14. The second appears today for Mini Rock. Here we go then, here's the grid for Mini Rock Heat number two. Charlie Benton on pole position, Connor Scarisbury uh, alongside on the front row. Jacob Anslow and Lars Oppenheim on row two. Rook Thompson and Ed Stewart alongside on row three. We'll have Cooper Sned and Alex Dole completing the eight runners for Mini Rock Heat number two. So this is another one that is very, very close out there. 11.35 uh, at the moment. These are the unofficial scores. The box uh, for Charlie Benson 11 points is his lead over Connor Scarsbrick. You really do get the sense with Connor Scarsbrick who is hitting form at the right time, chipping away at that lead for Charlie Benson. I was on their formation lap then. Great race that we've seen so far uh, this and season for Mini Rock. It'll be seven minutes plus one lap once again. To, um, to the line then. Way to go then. Benson and Scarsbrick on the front row of the grid resuming battle that they saw had early on that's good stuff from Scarsbrook on the inside it's going to open up opportunities for Marcel Popical on the inside and Jacob Anslow as well who was strong in heat number one into the hairpin they all go they're all through it as well good stuff from the eight mini rock drivers out there on circuit down towards the Ashby hairpin they go Connor Scarsbrook leading at the moment uh, result this would be not had uh, Double win in the heats so far this season. It's had a lot of first, second, and thirds. Hasn't stamped his authority uh, on a round like he has so far. This one here in round 10 at Wilton Mill. Marcel Popperpool is fighting through into second place there. Charlie Benson trying to fight back for third. In fact, doing more than fighting for third place, nearly getting second place there through the final corner. It's a good start. Scars break from Popperpool. Benson, Anslow, Cooper Snedden's had a good start as well. He's up to fifth place already. And here comes Anslow. He's having a look down the inside for uh, third place there on Charlie Benson. Alex Dole's had a good start as well. Had trouble in heat home number one, uh, did Alex Dole. Good to see. Number 50 gained two positions on that first lap of the race. Five and a half minutes to go then. Instructions there from Charlie Benson. Wants to work together as a trio, not fight too much. Because at the moment, Connor Scarisbrick has really hit the opening stages of this race hard. Really hard. And has set a 50.32, has got a 1.5 second lead. That is going to be quite the order for Charlie Benson to pull back in here. He's going to need some help from behind. Trouble for Benson at the moment, though. It is a great scrap going on for third place. Very entertaining for the neutral. Uh, but if you want to have the multiple engines working together to close down a sole leader, Optical still holding on to third place ahead of Anslow. Anslow to the outside. 
Puts back to the inside, and here comes Cooper Snedden down the inside into Ozzy's. Great stuff from Cooper Snedden. Read that situation perfectly, took the opportunity, it's got up into fourth place. This does change things now. Cooper Snedden looking to secure third place in the championship. He's had a tough season. Had uh, an incident at the start of the year as Anslow fights back now. He's going to be down the inside and Cooper Sneddon doesn't find that too hard. As, oh, Anslow went deep there though on the exit of Christmas. Compromised his line a little bit and Cooper Sneddon's going to be back down the inside, retakes the position. Here comes Alex Dole. Alex Dole's out on the, the uh, dirt there and Eddie Stewart's going to cut through. Beautiful stuff from Eddie Stewart. Into position, but fortunately Anslow straight back through. For Snedden, tough start to the season, had a big incident at, uh, at Raura. Been racing slightly wounded ever since, but racing well. And he started to come on song at A Pigeon in the middle part of this season. A real fall on the side uh, for drivers later on in this season. Then we go to Shannington. In race with that all well, there before as well. Three minutes 15 to go. Still not a scar as brick. Reaping the rewards of a really good start to this race. And it's one of these things in these heat races that are so important. If you can get a gap out front of the rest of the field, leave the rest of the field to start fighting amongst themselves behind and sit there in a good, comfortable position. I said that the pace of scar as brick is supreme. 49.729 scar as brick. Last time around, nope, make that 49.663. 2.25 seconds now the lead. Scarsbrick over Benson. Popical and uh, Snedden now going over to third place. Is Snedden close enough for a send into Christmas? Probably not on this lap. They keep working hard. And Jacob Anslow is still there. In fifth place. Down the hill to Ashby Corner. Stewart there in sixth place, Alex goal seventh, and Brook Thompson in eighth, and down the inside goes Cooper Snedden. It's a forceful move. Through he goes into third place. Popical will protest. Anzalo through into fourth place. Two minutes on the clock then. I think these drivers on the screen at the moment, third place is as high as they will get uh, in this race. They're some 5.6 seconds behind the leader who continues to set incredible lap times. Here comes Jacob Anslow of the inside. We've seen this before earlier in this race. And he's done it again. So Jacob Anslow through into third place through uh, Christmas Corner. Eddie Stewart now looks to be attacking Marcel Popical coming down into Ashby Corner. Alex Dole's not out of it. It's a good response from Alex Dole. So he had a, a, a difficult first heat. Bounce back, good pace. In 10 seconds of the leader as we go into the last 90 seconds on time. And so still there in third place. Oh, Snedden down the inside with a classic block pass into the toe of the boot. Love to see a move like that. And that was brilliantly done by Cooper Snedden. Takes him back into third place. New fastest lap of the race has just gone in from Connor Scarisbrick. 49.628. Jacob Anslow trying to work an opening there on Cooper Stedden as they head up towards Christmas Corner. With some time on the clock, 50 seconds or so. I'll have two more laps after uh, this one. Like Eddie Stewart, has Eddie Stewart got ahead of Marcel Popical there for fifth place? Yes, he has, so Eddie Stewart threw in the number 45. Black yellow pass of Popical into sixth place, and Alex Dole still there in seven. Two laps to go then for all of our drivers out there. Yes, no, it will be two more laps on the time remaining. Scarsbrick. This, this is very impressive from Connor Scarsbrick. Jacob Anslow's down the inside. This seems to be where the number 29 is strongest. Through and up to Christmas Corner. Anslow back into third place, but can Cooper Snedden respond? We've seen it so far 
in this race go back and forth a number of times between these two drivers. Okay, at this time, Anslow's aware of the move that Sneddon can do into Wilkins. And the scar is brick. Built, built, built the pace across the course of this season. Which really will give Charlie Benson something to think about. There again, Cooper Sneddon. He's seen this do this before. Again, oh, there's a bit of touching there between Sneddon and Anslow. Last lap board is out for the leader. 3.2 seconds for Conor Scarsbrick over Charlie Benson. This great scrap continues for third place into the long straight on the run up to Christmas Corner. This is where Anslow has been quick. This time, Sneddon shows Anslow to the outside. No way through. Eddie Stewart, Arsenal Popacol and Alex Dole all joining in the front on that one. Here's your leader onto the back straight now. Well, I would go as far to say this has been the best performance I've seen from Conor Scarisbrook so far this year. Took it from the front row of the grid, got first place early on, got that lead and never looked back. Conor Scarisbrook will have pole position for the Mini Rock final with a brilliant win in heat number two. Charlie Benson will join him on that front row, I reckon, with that second place. Here's the tight battle for third. Who's going to take it? It's going to be Cooper Sneddon on the line ahead of Jacob Anslow, Eddie Stewart. Alex Dole takes sixth place on the last lap there ahead of Marcel Popical. And uh, Rook Thompson uh, finishes off the lead. I was classified off the lead lap uh, in eighth. Very good stuff from Connor Scarisbrick. Really getting up ahead of steam now in this Mini Rock uh, Championship. We'll see their final at 15.49 or there or thereabouts later on this afternoon. Next out on circuit uh, for their second heat, the second here is the day for Rotax 177. Let's have a look then at the grid for the second heat for Rotax 177. Oliver Appleby and Chris Thomas on the front row and all KPR Motorsport front row. Scott Clee is in good form today, finished second in the first heat, goes from row two alongside Ian Branfield. Uh, Alex McGee and Sammy Milam are there on the third row of the grid. You'll find Costa Curtis, the Greek god of speed, on row four alongside Ben Johnson, Simon Kavanagh and Max Davies on row five, Andy Ward uh, due there on row six. The story from this morning, Oliver Appleby took the heat victory ahead of Scott Clee and Chris Thomas. Alex McGee was fourth, Ian Branfield was in fifth place. And uh, a for the title challenge of Ian Branfield. It's uh, always needed in this second heat. Uh, the KF Sport driver on the red speed chassis is to keep himself in really in the mix and, and not have to rely on other drivers to have errors uh, and mistakes. Uh, clarification is It is the total round score. So add up the uh, round scores to the two heat scores final. It's the two worst round scores. So news for anyone with some exclusion from their score final. Yeah, the guys for that one. Rotax 177 now out on circuit. All their formation lap. Big race, you feel this, for Oliver Appleby. Got a win in the first heat. First time he'd done that since round seven. It's a tenacious owner of Chris Thomas, reigning champion. He's not done yet in this title fight. Clean sweep yesterday. You know how good he is. Appleby is to be champion. He is going to have to beat the man in his own stable. Everybody else. Ready to go then for seven minutes plus one lap here at Wilton Mill. Away we go for the start of the second heat for Rotax 177. Good start for both of the KPR boys. First and second as there's a bit of a moment there at the back of the field and into uh, the grass there. Might have been Sammy Milam. Not a good start. Uh, for everybody there, but that was a good start for Appleby. Thomas, Branfield's had a better start as well. He's up in third place already. Scott Clear's been uh, was just holding there in fourth place at the moment. 
Uh, Simon Cavanagh, apologies, he's not come through uh, sector number one. Rookie in cart number 83. Uh, it's going to be at least severely uh, restricted in terms of the number of points that we get in this race. Yellow flags clear at turn number one. What do you do here if you're Chris Thomas? You've got your teammate ahead of you and another one of your title rivals behind. Play this one very carefully. In the order they go. So here's Appleby from Thomas Bramford. Good start, actually, for Sammy Marlon. Slight bit of confusion earlier on. Sammy Marlon is there in fourth place. A strong results here. In the battle uh, for the points with Aiden Cater, who's uh, not here today. Transfer to move up through the order there. Scott Clee. Right there with Costa Kriotsis and Costa looking down the inside and a good move there by Kriotsis. Well, I can say for a fact that I've seen Costa do that move many times into Christmas Corner, confident on the brakes, slinging it up the inside, having good fun out there. First time that we've seen Costa racing in Super 1 this year. Great move. Right. The man simply known as the speed. You can see it's in there on the side of his helmet. Four minutes and 40 seconds of this race to go. Still Appleby leading from Thomas. The pace very close between the two of them. Both of them in the 45 nines. The crucial thing is they are quicker than Branfield Pine. He's in the 46.2. Sammy Milan trying to close in. A couple of tenths out of third place that last time around. Just a as a head of Scott Clee for sixth place. There they are. Sitting on screen. Max Davies. Good to see Max back out there. Had a disappointment in, in the first heat. Retired. Can't running well now. He's in eighth place there, just ahead of Ben Johnson. Big pace from the leaders coming in. 45.7 for Appleby. 45.6 for Thomas. New fastest lap of the race so far. 45.7 as well. Ian Branford, so recognising the situation, needs to keep on the two KPR Motorsport drivers ahead of him. Three and a half minutes to go. This warning has been shown to part from the 69, which is Costa Crisis. This is a real test now for Oliver Appleby. Reigning champion, teammate, Chris Thomas, closing in behind. Thomas has been back in good form so far this weekend. In tighter through turn two and through oblivion and fine lady there was Chris Thomas. Really starting to put the pressure on his younger teammate. Ian Branfield also hasn't gone away from this one yet. In fact, Ian Branfield is now the fastest driver out on circuit, 46.505. All three of them are in the 46.505s. A bit warning for Sammy Milam, who's it's only a little bit at the moment in fourth place. Second clear uh, of E and this is behind. Seven of the back of E Branfield. Two and a half minutes to go. Again, Thomas looking for that slingshot up the hill towards at Christmas corner still Ian Branfield is quicker this this will be a big big boost for Ian Branfield he looked a little bit off color if you ask me in the first heat didn't look himself maybe had to think about things a setup change perhaps here or there going into the afternoon because he's got the KPR Motorsport boys under a bit of pressure here of course he would like to be ahead of them We'll take this at the moment with two minutes on the clock. And Appleby and Thomas sustain the pressure. On well, the basis of that, the answer is yes, that is a 
good response from Oliver Rappaby, 45.431. In fact, it's a bit, it's a bit of a scruffy lap from Chris Thomas. Lost three tenths. New PBs coming in for Costa and uh, Scott Clee, sixth and seventh then right now. Oliver Appleby counts by the laps now, 60 seconds on the clock. I do wonder what the temperament and the, the headspace will be like for KPR Motorsport. Uh, when you look at the points at the end of today, who will be where and who will be looking for what when we get to Shennington in a few weeks' time? Not of a rapid win. You have, have a point in a situation where you can come home and not have to win races. That would be an official position, not having to push all out. Thomas, though, to get that gap down as far as possible. He's in his own hands. That's got to be the aim. Two laps to go. Eight seconds on the clock. Thomas is responding. 45.246, a new fastest lap of the race. He's got to bang in two more of them. They've got to be absolutely spot on. No mistakes now. If he has, he's going to have a chance of winning this race because Oliver Appleby just kept his eyes forward throughout the whole seven minutes so far. Deterred by what's behind him. It's been a very professional drive, this. Just got a lap and a bit to go. I've got two heat wins here today. And pole position, more importantly, for the final later on this afternoon. Final lap board out, then. 0.5 was the gap last time around. Still around 0.5. Very close between them. Appleby, new PB, 45.387. Was actually a tad quicker than Chris Thomas last time around. They've gone through Christmas Corner. It's looking good for Appleby at the moment. It's looking good for KPR Motorsport. A 1-2 on the cards here. You have to think a little bit about Ian Branfield behind. The pace that he had. He'll stay there in third place, unless something remarkable happens. But here comes Oliver Appleby. This, I think, has been one of the biggest tests of his season and his metal so far, and he's passed it with a flying colours. Oliver Appleby takes the second heat in Rotax 177, takes pole position as well for the final later on this afternoon. Chris Thomas is second, Ian Branfield third, Sammy Milam, good score in fourth place. Alex McGee, fifth. Costa Kritz is in sixth place. Scott Clee, seventh. Max Davies, eighth. Ben Johnson, ninth. One single retirement in that race. Simon Kavanagh on lap number one. There we go. Rotax 177. Their heat racing is completed. We will see their final later on this afternoon at just after four o'clock. Next up out on circuit. Second appearance of the day for Minimax. Millie Max heading out on track now. Joshua Jarvis has pole position for heat number two. Cameron Edwards alongside on the front row. Max Hollor and Kasper Tomalewski on row number two. Jensen Powers and Jake Blewett on row number three. Ernie Overton and Leon Barlow start on row four. Then we find Joseph Murphy and Jasmine Taylor on row five. Joshua Begembe and Ben Horner on row number six. Charlotte Stanley and Logan Cowling on row number seven. Archie Dyson and Reese Owen on row eight. And Yusuf Yacoub on row nine. And uh, Ronnie Coburn uh, is taking the start of this race, particularly the start of the grid. Rotax 177 drivers heading back into pit lane. Three more, eight, seven minutes plus one lap to go. Do hope you're enjoying your Sunday afternoon. Thank you for tuning in here on uh, Alpha Live. And uh, to subscribe. Hello to Phil Clark. 
I was just saying good luck to all the ex-cart drivers out there today. Got a few of them. That race here at Wilton Mill. Big thanks to our sponsors as well for uh, 2022. Without them, we can do what uh, we do here for Super One Twenty Twenty Two. So CWG Choices, AST Signs, JKH, and RI. Them. Uh, some of you want to give Alpha Live a helping hand on Facebook at Alpha Live Production. Same on uh, Instagram at Live LTD on Twitter. Thank you as well at Double Dash MM. A busy few weeks across June and July and into August. Plenty of events coming up. Across the course of the year, including as we mentioned earlier, Rockford Super Final in Renato uh, in Italy later on in the year. We will be there for those world finals for the rock competition. So I look forward to that. So do uh, join us uh, for those races and that event. Highlights of uh, the year. Slight pause in proceedings here whilst uh, we get ready for the next heat. Thanks for coming in. We'll take a short break of commentary and be back short. We're racing here. Series at Wilton. Welcome to Alpha Live, the live streaming service where you can be part of the action from home. You can watch via your smart TV, phone, tablet, or even your gaming console. We've got you covered. Just head to the YouTube app on any of your devices and search for Alpha Live. Here you can watch all of the events as they unfold, or you can choose from our vast library for those lazy days in, all in beautiful HD. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Welcome back, everybody, to live coverage of Super 1 2022 Round 10 from Wilton Mill here just outside of Aventry, Northamptonshire. Getting ready for the next heat, the second period of the day uh, for Minimax. Quality grid heading out there onto, already headed out onto circuit. It'll be a rolling start of seven minutes plus one lap uh, for this one. Lasky continue this great form so far this weekend. Number 20 starting from second place, your winner in heat number one. Away we go, though, for seven minutes plus one lap, heading into Oblivion for the first time. All looking good so far. Oh, there's a bit of a problem there between uh, Holo and Tomolevsky. So Tomolevsky going backwards. Joshua Jarvis, who leads into 
the first break, big breaking zone of Christmas. Looks like Cameron Edmonds is there in second place as well. Someone's got a loose exhaust because I can hear it uh, raining out across the other carts out there. It's a bit of a mix-up in the... Oh, it's actually quite towards the front of the order. Olo and Tomalewski, we mentioned, getting together. Both started on uh, on row number two, and a mechanical flag has been shown to the number 11 now. So that must be our cart, but it's got a lose exhaust. As here comes Ernie Overton. Good move there from the number 28. This is a big race for Ernie Overton in terms of championship. Got to get on top of this. Got to get a good round score in to put the pressure on Joshua Bagambe, especially around a circuit that Bagambe knows so, so well. Good move there from Ernie Overton into second place. Nearly a mistake there from Joshua Jarvis. Got very crossed up on the breaking phase into Christmas corner, but holds on to the lead. To Ashby Hairpin, they all go flowing through now into this technical part of the course where you've got to be so precise with all of your inputs as a driver. See the number 48 of Joseph Murphy trying to move through as well, was going for third place and has got third place. Here comes Begembe down the inside. Going for fourth has got it. Not a good couple of corners for Cameron Edmonds there. Down to fifth place. Leon Barlow's also on the move. Has got past Jensen Powers and is into sixth place. Kasper Tomalewski starts the fight back. Past Amelie Ackett for 12th. And the inside there goes Jensen Powers. Uh, track a bit warning as well for the number 84 of Jasmine Taylor. Five minutes of this one to go. Moving through now, Jarvis, Overton, Murphy, Gembe, Edmonds as well. Again, Joseph Murphy having a look down the inside on Ernie Overton. Has got Overton offline. That may work through the last corner. Yes, it will. So Joseph Murphy just managing to work Ernie Overton off the main racing line, off where he wants to be. Compromises his exit out of the toe of the boot. Sticks it on the inside through Paddock Bend. Good move. Gets up to second place. Here comes Bagembe. This is the first time we've seen Joshua Bagembe right on the front of the order. Has got through into third place. That will feel really, really good. Getting past the driver closest to Bagembe in the championship standings at the moment. Looks like there's another move going on there. I think that was uh, Leon Barlow going for one down the inside. Jake Fluitt involved uh, as well. Great race this for Minimax in the opening throws. Halfway through it now. Joshua Jarvis leads by less than a tenth of a second ahead of Joseph Murphy. Going through the first couple of corners now and heading up towards Christmas Corner. There is Bagembe. Murphy pulls out of the slipstream. Down the inside. Bagembe's looking for it as well. That's very bold. That's really bold for the championship leader. He's going to be on the outside. He's worked his way through. That was brave indeed. Calculated, risky, but good. And through goes Bagembe into second place. Let's have a look at that again. The door was opened up by Joseph Murphy going down the inside. This was a textbook manoeuvre. That was not, my goodness me. Jo and got to give it to Joshua Jarvis as well. Gave the room, gave the racing space. And uh, both of them continue in this heat. There we go then, Murphy from Bagembe, Jarvis in third, Leon Barlow is on the move, has got up to fourth place, has got past Ernie Overton, Cameron Edmonds is there in sixth place, Jake Blewett seventh. Kasper Tomalewski is coming through as well, and you look at this, it's a, it's a close pack, you wouldn't guess from that shot there that we were five and a half laps into this race, you would have thought we were still in the early stages. Kasper Tomalewski is up to ninth place, picking them off one by one, Still be on for a good finish here. Two and a half minutes to go. Joseph Murphy leads. Mechanical flag has been shown to Jasmine Taylor. There's a problem on the number 84 cart. This pace from Joseph Murphy. This is very good to see indeed. Driver who has had only one win so far this season in Super 1. That was back in round number four. It was a heat win. It was a heat two win as well. What was a very good day. Uh, the best day, I think, so far for Joseph Murphy. We're just second in the final as well. This is more like it. Uh, 
It's not completely out of the question at the moment for Joseph Murphy. Second place in the championship, still very much up for grabs. And the last unofficial count was only 12 points behind Ernie Overton. Embe is increasing the pace as well. Started to put Murphy under pressure. Maybe one lap too early for them to start fighting. They have a gap over Leon Barlow behind. Work together. Secure these positions. As the group behind continue to fight. Joshua Jarvis has been shut down a few positions on that last lap. Losing out to Barlow, Overton and Edmonds. Tomalevsky has gained another position. He's got past Benson Powers this time and up for eighth place. But time is running out for the former Honda Cadet champion here in Super 1. Less than a minute on the clock. Still Joseph Murphy and jo uh, Joshua Bagembe at the front of this order. Gembe into the initial part of the boot is very strong. Very, very strong. Seen Joshua pull off quite a few moves through there over the last few years. Another position for Tomalewski and the fastest lap of the race, 46.734. Oh, I thought Bagembe was going to go for it there. What better of it? You know, Barlow's still scrapping away in there. Tenacious driver has got up to third place. He's quicker than these two at the moment as well. 46.736 last time around. Took two tenths out of Bagembe. Now, are they going to see the last lap board on this tour? As, oh, mistake. That was there was a mistake there from Bagembe. He's going to be under attack now. And the last lap board is out. Not quite sure what happened there with Bagembe. He's just got a tiny bit offline. There's not much grip on the outside there through the boot. Ended off any kind of attack from you know, Barlow as they run up through Christmas Corner. Marlow's down the inside. I think if you're Bagembe, you've got to let that go. You've got to think championship. Barlow is not a championship contender. The driver behind, Ernie Overton, is. I'll take the points. This is what the story has been for Bagembe so far. He's in the lead of this championship through being the most consistent. Ernie Overton's going to stick it down the inside. That's a brave one from Ernie Overton. Joseph Murphy is going to take a second race victory of the season. Brilliantly done by Joseph Murphy. Second for Leon Barlow and a crucial third place for Joshua Bagembe by less than oh, what, a quarter of a tenth of a second, if that, uh, over Ernie Overton in fourth place. Let's have a look at that again. Big, bold move by Ernie Overton. Bagembe gives the space, gets the drive around the final corner, and it tightens the line on the inside, but it was Murphy's win from Barlow, Bagembe and Overton. Cameron Edmonds fifth. Good effort from Casper Tomalewski as well to finish in sixth place after a horrible start. Jake Fluid seventh. Jensen Powers eighth. Archie Dyson ninth. Joshua Jarvis in tenth. Very intriguing stuff indeed in the Mini Max category. Their final if, uh, to schedule will be uh, a little bit later, actually. We are about ten minutes or so behind schedule. Uh, so make it more like. Or I reckon or Minimax do be around for that. We're going to move on, though. Two more heats to go. First of them up next. It's the juniors out next. Right, so let's have a look at the grid for Junior Rotax and their second heat of the day. Alfie Briggs has pole position. Jake Howarth alongside on the front row. Jacob Dukes has been in great form so far this weekend. Starts on row two alongside Alexander Adams Acton. Harry Pullen had a disappointing end to heat number one. Starts this one from heat num uh, from row three. Alongside him is Romarian Ubi in sixth place on the grid. Harrison Morrow and Aiden Hassan start on row four for Hassan at the start is very, very important. Freddie Ingram and Callum Gosh are there on row five. Max Thompson and Max Cuthbert start on row six. Alfred Thompson and Harry Hurst over are on row seven. Oliver Bokok and Bartek Lipiak 
uh, start on row number eight. Billy Edgecombe had a retirement from heat number one. We'll be looking for better from heat um, in heat two from row nine. Alongside him is Jamie Salter. And then we've got Sam Ardolino and Fenella Lane due on row 10. Darren Marshall due to make it a 21 part field. A recap of earlier on this morning then for Junior Rotax and the Junior Max category. Alfie Briggs took the race victory, has currently uh, in this category got four wins from four so far this weekend. Jake Howarth uh, was second. But, uh, again, Mr. Consistency. Hasn't had as many wins as other drivers, but he's always there, always scoring good points. And, uh, looking to do likewise again in this one and uh, all of these results as well results dot alpha timing dot co dot uk forward slash super one go check them out he progressed the situation check jukes was the driver in third place and alexander adams acted fourth and was the top rookie as well in that race Comments and your likes uh, flowing in. Uh, hello to Aiden, who's uh, cheering on Briggs in this one. And, uh, we know who to almost taking the uh, rock category so far here today. Not going to be anything of that description here in this uh, junior uh, row tax category because it is a wide open one. Will go to Shannington. It'd be very, very exciting for us. Um, I would say it's down to one of three drivers Briggs, Howarth, and Hassan. The engine's firing up on the double grid. And out they go. All their formation lap. Drivers heading out then, already heading out for this formation lap. Heat into all the operating parts of darts. Next round, by the way, end of the month, Shannington. Great place to finish title battle. We'll be able to run this on. Sunday for round 12 here. Alpha We're ready to go though for the second heat of the day for Junior Max. Tires there, Jake Howarth as well. Ready to go racing here at Wilton Mill for seven minutes plus one lap. Good start for Briggs. Good start for those on the pole side of the grid. Jacob Dukes has already got through into second place, heading up towards Christmas Corner for the first time. They're all jostling around in the mid pack, trying to find a way through. And they have found a way through. Good driving from everybody here so far in the Junior Max category. Alfie Briggs leads down into Ashby Corner for the first time. The rest of them flowing through. Survive out there at the moment. Get a bit tight uh, on a first lap through the second sector here at Wilton Mill. It's a good start from Briggs. And it's going to be confident see a non-regular in this championship behind him taking points off the lights of Jake, of, uh, Jake Howard and Aiden Hassan he's had a very good start as Hassan up three positions to fifth place you see him there uh, in, the, uh, in the green helmet with Mark Mains Motorsport support and into go, the spinner towards the back of Pack. It was on the exit. It might be uh, Ubi. I think it might be Romero and Ubi, the number 77. It's been slightly delayed. Briggs across the line then, finishes lap number two. That's the field filing. Onwards, there's the number 72 of Harry Pullen having a stronger run of it this time. Got Aiden Hassan just behind. Got 
worry if you're looking at the timing. There is a transponder issue for Alpha Briggs, which is quite clearly visibly still there in the lead of this race. The race control will, uh, on that will be sorted as soon as possible. So through goes Hassan on Poland. Great races over the years remain Hassan around this circuit as Alexander Adams Acton is getting his nose in there and nicely getting through past Harry Pullen. Very solid in the first heat was Adams Acton. More than deserved his fourth place from that race. See Harrison Morrow there behind, running uh, some new. Liveries on the cart as well. Harrison Moran, another driver, and it's, it's often said about this Wilton Mill circuit. Location in the country, very accessible. Strong cart club championship as well here. One that a lot of drivers know well. Regular fixture on a lot of national karting championships. You have to work hard for your points and your results around this circuit as everybody knows it so well. And it's to go. Morrow looking down the inside. Lovely, lovely move there on Harry Pullen. Absolutely spot on. Puts himself in that position and he'll hope to just pull away now. Uh, apologies, no, it wasn't Harrison Morrow going through. It was Freddie Ingram. My, my apologies. So Freddie Ingram in the number 76, not the 75 of Harrison Morrow. There's Alfie Briggs doing what he's been doing so far this weekend. Just controlling things at the front, liking that gap. Out a quarter of a second to half a second. Putting himself in that position where he doesn't have to think about over-defending. Being too concerned with what's behind. Look relaxed behind the wheel as well as Alfie Briggs so far this weekend, which perhaps hasn't quite always been the case so far this season, in, or at least in the, uh, the road tax categories. Had a lot to, uh, to deal with in what's been a, the most open classes so far this year. End of lap number six then. This is the fastest driver out on circuit, 45.302. Dukes half a second back now. Not for Aiden Hassan though, because he's the other driver in the 45 threes at the moment. And Hassan has got time on his side to pick these two drivers off. Hassan will be focusing on that final. He has been hampered by the poor qualifying, but he's been able to race through. Well, Build confidence ahead of the final, and then we can put those overtakes in. Here's your fight over eighth place coming through the boots now. Alfie Thompson, the number 87 at the front of it. Oh gosh, Harrison Morrow. Yes, Harrison Morrow in the uh, standard uh, setup that we're used to seeing him in. I was for that confusion with the numbers earlier on. That's as well, not too far behind. This is number 34, Billy Ashcombe as well. Billy Ashcombe having a much stronger run of it this time around. Good to see. Just over a minute on the clock to go then. Rick still leading from Dukes. Arif and Hassan. I can't imagine that Jake Howarth will allow Aiden Hassan to get through with relative ease. Coming over start to finish now. 1.5 seconds covers the top four at the moment. 45 seconds as these drivers cross the line. Well, that will affect right there. Last lap gets called. But here comes Gosh down the inside. Looking for a move into Christmas Corner. And that was always going to be Callum Gosh's position. Takes eighth place away from Alfie Thompson. Very nicely done indeed. Unlikely that this group are going to be able to catch up to Harry Pullen and Freddie Ingram ahead. It's just simply not enough time left in the race to do so. 
Two more laps then. Maybe Briggs's transponder issue again, so don't worry. That is, uh, shouldn't be him falling down through the order. Uh, here, Alfie Thompson may have a go back at Callum Gosh in the same place where Gosh took the position a lap ago. Yep, there is Briggs. Actually, more, very comfortable now. Jacob Jukes is more having to think about Jake Howarth and Aiden Hassan behind. This could get a little bit spicy going on to the last lap of the race. Big points to be played for here. In through the boot they go. Leader will see the last lap board this time around. There it is. And Jacob Jukes, the blue helmet there, the x cart machine, hold on. Ahead of Jake Howarth. Well, Jake Howarth thinking more about Aiden Hassan behind him. May he well think about the number four there, because those are two drivers definitely in the fight for this Super 1 title in 2022. Good defence from... Uh, Howarth there. Didn't go too far to the inside. Didn't compromise the line on the exit. Oh, nearly through there from Hassan. That was inch perfect from Howarth on the defence. Had to get across. Had to stop Hassan going down the inside there. Alfie Briggs is going to take another brilliant victory here at Wilton Mill. He really is the driver in form at the moment. That is two from two here today. Five from five for the weekend. Second for Jacob Dukes. Third for Jake Howarth. Fourth for Aiden Hassan. Great drive there from Jake Howard to hold off the charging Aiden Hassan. We've seen how much overtaken he's done so far this weekend and today in particular, but he could not get the move done there on the, the, uh, the number 36 cart. Alexander Adams Acton is fifth. Freddie Ingram fights through to sixth ahead of Harry Pullen. Callum Gosh, Alfie Thompson and Harrison Morrow beats top ten. Very good stuff indeed from Alfie Briggs. He really is in form now. And this is uh, putting himself very, very much in title fight, taking that fight to the likes of Howarth uh, and Hassan. And we'll see their final. It'll be the penultimate race of the day. And uh, we do around half past four. Do join us for that. We're going to get ready, though, for the final heat uh, of this section, the last of the seven minute plus one lap. Uh, Races and second at the end of the day for senior road tax. Right, so the last uh, heat uh, for any of the classes today will be the second appearance for senior road tax. Alex Eads and William Young start on the front row, Harry Gibson and Ryan Mickleff. Uh, are there on the second row of the grid, Ben Page and Joe Weaver on row number three. Joe Weaver will be looking for a better start uh, than the first heat, as will the drivers on row four, Carl Dunford and Ben Davis. Max Fitton and Isaac Lord start on row five, Alex Holgate and Lewis Wilde start on row six, Tom Taylor and Jack Davies row seven, Joshua Balance. Kieran Pepper start on row number eight, Daniel Jones and Kieran Janali start on row nine. There are issues for Janali in the first heat. Let's see if Bradshaw leads the night of cards due in this one. Drivers out on their formation lap for the second and final heat for uh, the senior Rotax drivers. This line of the results from heat number one will set the grid uh, for the final later on this afternoon. Reminder. Top three from uh, Heat number one. It was Alex Eads, William Young, and Ryan Leff. Uh, the first of those who's a, who is a regular, who is a regular, Page, fourth place. Very jumbled up grid here today for the senior road taxes. And uh, this race will have a factor on, uh, on the final. We are around again now. So a few circulating fingers in the air. That's a whole start, and it is start and just looking at the results as well I know that uh, this as well regarding number 86 of Davis minus one lap for gaining advantage I'm not quite sure which incident 
for that. There's four. And it's four. He's there for anyone following the CD Rotax competition. Under starters orders then for Senior Rotax's second heat of the day. Seven minutes still on the clock and away we go. Good start for everybody at the front of the order. Are they all going to get through Oblivion and Fine Lady cleanly? Yes, they are. Good start. Go up towards Christmas Corner for the first time. It is Alex E to once again in the number 22 is on such, such good form so far this weekend. The driver with a green uh, helmet there. Look to control this one, but it's being attacked straight away by the number 24, William Young. William Young takes the lead. Well, let's see what the response is now. A couple of changes being done by the drivers there. The settings for the radiators, characteristic of no tax racing here. It's a really bold move from William Young. Ends lap number one in the lead of this race. See Alex Eze is already trying to find a way through. Better start this time as well for our key protagonists in the championship. Weaver is in fifth place. Davis, sixth place. Ben Page is there as well in seventh. Track limit warning to Joe Weaver. Down the inside again goes Alex Eads. Is it going to get this stopped? Yes, just about. But look at this. Around the outside comes the number 21 of Ryan McAuliffe. And it's Mikhailov into the lead of the race then. This is already turning into a proper senior ding-dong. So Weaver being forced out wide there, having a battle with Harry Gibson and Ben Davis in there too. Mikhailov leads, Eads in second, Young now third, Gibson fourth, Weaver fifth. And Page pulling out there, trying to put a move on Ben Davis. He's on the grass. Ben Page off the circuit there. Well, ben Davis may uh, protest about that. We'll feel that there was an advantage gained by uh, Ben Page. That one to the stewards. Very good drive by everyone in the midfield to, uh, to avoid Page as he turned back onto circuit. Very dusty. Uh, very dry the grass out there at the moment. Not conducive at all to the grip. Anyway, number black number three, left leads, Eads second, Young third, Gibson still fourth, and Weaver, Weaver still fifth. And uh, I don't know whether we've still got the 68 55. We've seen Alex Holgate and Kieran Pepper got on the order. Uh, they're still okay. Um, Gremlins. Go Weaver. Need to find a way here. Good place at the moment. It's got Gibson ahead. Down the inside into the boot. Very nicely done. We've not seen too many moves on the entry to the boot so far today. That was a very good one and a perfectly demonstrated way of getting passed by Joe Weaver. Puts him up into fourth place. Page two carts behind. A strong day. This is a circuit that he tends to run well on. And it's changed for the lead. It's Alex Eads is down the inside. As that always oh, locked together there. Oh, it's Young and Mikhailov. And Mikhailov is absolutely furious there with William Young, and they've lost a, a whole stack of positions. Tom Taylor's gone wide on the exit of Oziers uh, the, in the number 77. Well, I can only imagine that that was. As Eads open the door, and there's more contact going on now, this time between the number 18 of Max Fitton uh, and uh, and I think that was William Young again. Uh, sorry, no, it was Harry Gibson that he was uh, climbing on the back of. So all change on that lap. Alex Eads into the lead of the race. Down the inside there goes Fitton on, uh, on Gibson. Let's pick your, pick your places at the moment. All jostling around there. It's, again, it's more like a first lap than midway through the race. I only imagine Nicholas and Young just got locked together uh, after Eads opened the door. Maybe Nicholas tried to sneak through. Just on the exit of Ashby. Went wrong for them. Here's 
Tom Taylor being attacked by the number uh, 46 of Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones has flown through the order here in a number of positions. Joshua Balance is in there as well. Daniel Jones gained two positions there on, uh, on that last lap. Pretty good to see. Eads leads. Crucially, though, Joe Weaver up in second place. What's even more important is that his title rivals are not up there with him. Ben Davis down in eighth place. Ben Page in ninth. Al Dunford in 11th. It's a very good race. Number 57 goes past uh, there. That's Isaac Lord, who's had a good day so far today. His way. He's just got ahead of Ben Davis now. They're both getting past. Uh, how he gives it, he seems a bit exasperated because he's losing positions. Hand over fist, he's lost out to Ben Page. Alex Holgate's now going to have an attack. Uh, round winner from Clay Pigeon earlier on in the season. And indeed, Holgate does go through. It's helped by Carl Dunford on, uh, on the way there as well. This has been an absolutely crack. Oh, it's, uh, I think it was that Gibson pulling off uh, at the back of shot there. Struggling for a number of laps, 60 seconds to go. Uh, it's Kieran Peck. It's Kieran Peck. It's Kieran Peck. Number one, jostling through there. Number 86 of Ben Davis. Uh, but no, it is Harry Gibson, the number 29, out of this race. And uh, drive issues, I'd imagine, for Gibson. So just not have power, losing positions. A lot the last few laps. Ben Page looking down the inside, gets through past Isaac Lord. Slipped in there, found the space. Yellow flag out to Inkermans. The recovery of Gibson. Move by Page was done before the yellow flag, so that is okay. Ten seconds on the clock. He's our leader. Seeds is about to come over the line. Check. No, we are still running. So two more laps then for our leader. And we were there in second place. He's the main driver, the beneficiary to the championship in this race. Ben Davis trying to defend now from Ben Page. That's how important this position is. They're not going to be able to catch up to Mikolith and Young behind. That's why they're fighting. We're all queuing up behind now. Dunford's in there. Davis is having to work really, really hard. We've seen him do this several stages so far this season, but it's not often been for sixth place in a race. Ben Page is going to try and go around the outside there. He's going to have the inside for the toe of the boot. Oh, very good, but look through. There comes the number 57 of Isaac Lord. Ben Davis is on the grass. This is not a good moment. This is not a good race for Ben Davis. Remember the situation for him. He has no drop scores. He's missed two complete rounds. Every race counts that he competes in this season. He's already had a not good at all first heat result. It's going to be a, a best middle of the grid position for the final here for Ben Davis. I'll be music to the ears of the likes of Joe Weaver still up in second place. We're on the final lap now. Carl Dunford and Ben Page having a good scrap there over seventh place. But Alex Eads comes around the final corner, takes another victory. This chaos down at Ozier's 55 is off. Joshua Valance is off. There's carts absolutely everywhere here. Eads wins from Weaver. Fitton in third. Mikalev in fourth place. Young fifth. Lord sixth. Page seventh. Dunford eighth. Holgate ninth. Tom Taylor in tenth. It was Kieran Pepper at the number 55. He was round there at the end. Joshua Valance, as we mentioned, was uh, also uh, part of that. There was a third cart involved also. I didn't quite catch the size of who it was. Uh, there we go. Well, that is a big, big race, I feel, in senior Rotax this season because Joe Weaver has gained a good number of points there. And Davis has got work to do in the final. More great racing, though, from Alex Eads. Faultless this season. Uh, for, sorry, this weekend so far in his first appearance for the season. Alex Eads, very good stuff. That concludes the heats, then. That is all heat racing done. Two heats for each category, and we will move on to the finals now. The first final out in circuit. Five minutes plus one lap will be the C50 Bambino 
new era and pro category. Right, so it's finals time here at Wilton Mill and we start off with the Bambino C50 Pro and Bambino C50 New Era categories. Here is your grid for the pros. Riley Morrow has pole position 68 points from a possible 68. Ethan McClelland joins on the front row of the grid. Cole Teal, fantastic to see the number six on row number two. Austin Nomen there, also fourth place on the grid. Bertie Clark and Alfie Mayer will go from row number three. And then it will be Amelia Dial and Harper Das uh, on the fourth row of the grid. That's the end of the pros. Let's get into the new eras. Chester Forks has pole position. Again, 68 points from a possible 68. Lewis Cacoldi is alongside on the front row in new era. Fifth row overall. Next up is Charlie Page and Cooper Earsman. Jenta Biglands and Henry Alger start on the seventh row of the grid. Chloe McGill starts this, this final from the eighth row of the grid overall alongside Harry Chapman. So work to do for the championship leader there. Soren Gallagher and Rex Pooley alongside on row number nine. Mason Hibbert and Theo Poiser start on row 10. And it's Louis Williams, Mabs and Carter number 44 alongside Buddy Hugo. He's had a tough day so far in the number 11 there on row 11. Grace Mayer and Toby Biggs start on row 12. And then the last part in uh, the race will be Sophia Page. As you read, for your round 10 final in the Bambino C50s. I do believe we've got a little bit of a clear up at the end uh, of the previous race. So we'll go to a short break here on the commentary and be back soon with more action for Super 1 here at Wilton Mill. Round 10 of 2022. Welcome to Alpha Live, the live streaming service where you can be part of the action from home. You can watch via your smart TV, phone, tablet, or even your gaming console. We've got you covered. Just head to the YouTube app on any of your devices and search for Alpha Live. Here you can watch all of the events as they unfold, or you can choose from our vast library for those lazy days in, all in beautiful HD. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Welcome back everybody to Wilton Mill and live coverage of round 10 for the 2022 Super 1 uh, series. We're getting ready for the first uh, 9 minute plus 1 lap finals and uh, it will be 
the turn of the Bambino C50 categories, the new era and the uh, pro category. Just want to have a look uh, back at. Uh, oh, actually, I've recorded that. I hear we've got a poll in the chat. Where are you watching from? Here at Watson Mill, home or abroad? Abroad could be home. That's up to you. Whether we wish one you, uh, which one you choose. Well, let us know. Keep the comments coming in uh, for today. Uh, because of, yes, uh, the, the thing to note, as I say, through the results on results like uh Yes, I'm just looking to see what has been the trigger for coming over guilt a little bit further down the order than I was necessarily expecting. Yeah, uh, a penalty in the second heat uh, meant that the bill was going to be the first overall. So, just to clarify, apologies. I'll Mistake uh, earlier. Things have got huge um, with Car Club. Um, the complete round score is the uh, is is what gets dropped. So if you have two races, in it, particularly with the example of the exclusions, the exclusions can be dropped. The round score: so two wins, and a zero score in uh, the races across the three of day. Not to worry, we're at this stage to say we still will come a little bit for the particular uh, classes. This one, the C50, still very close, still very close to uh, what would happen in the course of the year. It hasn't been a problem for the course so far. So we just want to come back to see the neutrals in the box. Showing some close racing across the course. Of the season. The winners so far this season, uh, particularly, let's go through pros first. Mr. Noman has had a few of these final wins, took both finals uh, at Browra, uh, took one uh, round four, no, not round four uh, as well. Hasn't won. Since round number six, final wins, of course, for our championship leader. Great form so far this weekend uh, at Wilton Mill. They're all lined up and ready to go then for the final here for the Bambino C50s. Both categories, the pros and the new areas. Away we go for nine minutes plus one lap. Is Riley Murrow going to get that run from pole position? Yes, Riley is. Good start for uh, Riley there. Ethan McClendon has a good start also. Three wide almost as Austin Oman's gone up the inside, taking third place. All jostling and trying to just find where they are on circuit. See Chester Forks already coming up the inside. Four wide. Oh, that got very close indeed through Christmas Corner. How many times did you say four wide on the run up to there? They've all made it through, they've all given each other space. Down into Ashby Corner they go. A longer race this. You have to play it subtly differently. Round to the back straight they go already. This is the perfect start for both of our uh, drivers who've had maximum points so far today. Burrow in pros with the orange boards, forks uh, in the new areas with the black number boards. Burrow leads from Welland. Mr. Forks in third place overall, first in class. It's good to see Lewis Cacoldi there as well, number 18. Some troubles yesterday as uh, Austin Owen looking down the inside of Harper Das there. Going to be a bit of hard work, I feel, for Austin Owen. He's currently down in sixth place, place in the class. The driver competing for the title. Want to be a bit higher than that. And the inside of Harper Das, clean move there, gains a position. He's coming onto the back straight then. Over seven minutes to go, and here comes Chester Forks again down the inside on Ethan McClelland. He's going to take second place. 
and does indeed take second place. So it's familiar two at the front of the order then, Murrow and Fort. And it's a very good work in the second heat to make sure that they were in comfortable position for the latter stages of the race. Will they do likewise in this one? That push up the inside. No, this time Chester Forks wants to lead this out right down the inside, takes the lead of the overall competition ahead of Riley Murrow. Riley Murrow didn't fight that too hard, I can understand why. Again, yeah, the overall uh, the points in the championships are awarded by class position, not overall position. So, aware of Ethan Bellin's not too far behind as well these three at the moment. Bertie Clark having another strong run. Single rookie uh, of pros. Had some really good rounds this year. I, I believe a driver that with more years to come will develop and get quicker and more consistent. Right now, very nicely up there in fourth place. Mr. Coldy has got past Austin Owen as well. Fifth place overall start line uh, for going on to lap number four Charlie Page has got past Chloe McGill for ninth place overall that's third place in class as well it's two of the new eras going wheel to wheel Chester Fultz and Riley Murrow back to what they were doing in heat number two working together pulling that gap out over half a second over Ethan McClelland. It's going to be a lot more than that now because just going by the first set time to load in another three to four tenths uh, in terms of throwing out that lead. Here is your battle for third place in category in New Era. This is Charlie Page, the number 33, 15 of Chloe McGill. And uh, Rex Pooley, who has been Liverpool about so far today, has been, had, a, had a very good weekend in the number 31. Rex once again in the top half of the new era is quite comfortably. Arpinas and Cole Teal also fighting over positions. They're competing for fifth place in pro at the moment and seventh overall. And Bertie Clark going down the inside of Ethan McClellan that I just saw there for third place. There's a red suit off the racing line on the inside, which normally means uh, going down the inside for an overtake. There's two leaders on screen going down the back straight, Forks and Murrow. Both looking very calm, very collected. Checking over the shoulders there just to see is there anybody behind. Nope, oh, working together, He's pushing through. Uh, yes, Bertie Clark did get past Ethan McClelland on that last lap. Always run a touch wide though, and McClelland's going to be back at the inside. Here comes Lewis Cacoldi as well. Austin Oman for company. Two by two as they head up the hill. This could be a good moment for both Cacoldi and Oman, and it is very good stuff from both Cacoldi and Oman working together. Saw bit of a problem there for uh, Bertie Clark initially. Ethan McClelland not able to get over to that right-hand side. Oh, dear, as uh, Kukold is off the road. And a little bit long into Ashby Corner. Well, that's reset everything and put Austin Owen back at the front of this group. Bertie Clark, then Ethan McClelland, then Lewis Kukold. A bit of a gift for Austin Owen from... Uh, the vantage point here. Well, that was until Bertie Clark went down the inside. So, after a, all of those position changes on that lap, it's going to look like for third place, absolutely nothing happened. Uh, Bertie Clark still in third place. Now Austin Owen fourth. Lewis Capaldi fifth, and Bellens down to sixth place. Gas pulled away. Old Teal. Warning for Riley Murrow. That's interesting. Uh, between our two leaders clear leaders as well so Gallagher has got past Mason Hibbert uh, for 19th place 
be uh, 12th place in us, I believe. There is, there is the map in third place. Luis Capaldi has got back past Austin Owen for fourth place. As, oh dear, oh dear, out of the race there is Mason Hibbert. Some problems on that number 16 cart today. That's a real shame for Mason Hibbert to retire. Uh, with a couple of minutes to go of this final. A bit disappointed there, it's understandable. Back with our leaders, Forts and Murrow. First and second on the road overall, both leading their respective classes. Just so much quicker than the rest of the field. Both in the 63.0s last time around. Next, this driver is probably Picoldi in the fourth of the 64.2s. Back and forth going on now. Both of them want to take the overall win. Murrow, oh, contact there between Forks and Murrow. Well, the truce are working together no longer. And that was very lucky for both drivers that they've not sustained uh, high levels of damage or are out of this race. Say that, is there a little, is there a bumper on the rear right hand side of Forks that's, no, I think it's okay. It's just not slightly out of position. It's not hanging off, it's not a broken bracket. It's a scary moment for Riley Morrow being popped up in the air. Yeah, a warning if anything for both of them just to bring this one home. Good points on offer for both of them in these positions. Time has now expired. Last lap board will be out next time they cross start finish. Morrow's coming back again. Good in the middle part of this circuit. To Ozzy as they go. Lewis Capaldi. What a race this has been from Lewis Capaldi. Arguably his strongest since Raura, since round one. It's second place at the moment in uh, in the category. Third place overall. Ahead of a number of pro drivers. Last lap board out then for Chester Forks and Riley Murrow and a warm Wilton Mill. Here for round 10 of Super 1 2022. They hold station like this, they'll both get maximum points for their respective classes. But what we've seen so far today is both of them want to win overall. They want to say, no, I was the top C50 driver uh, of any kind, of any class here today at Wilton Mill. Down into Ashby they go. No move yet from Riley Murrow. There's a a group of drivers ahead are... Oh, no, I don't think they're going to come into play, actually. They're not going to be lap traffic. Just holding off there. Ooh, Riley Murrow may have a run onto the back straight. And I think they are now holding station. And uh, that's that's wise thoughts on such young, uh, young shoulders. There was that moment in the mid, mid part of this race, but it's going to be round victories for both Chester Forks and Riley Murrow. In the C50 categories, they both take maximum points. Both take class clean sweeps here uh, for the, the three races today. A great drive as well. Just across the line there, you saw hand aloft from Lewis Cacoldi. So it's uh, first and second in New Era for Forks and Cacoldi. First and second for Murrow and McClelland. Amongst them, that is your top four overall. Austin Owen, third place in class today, fifth place overall. A great try from Bertie Clark, sixth place and fourth in class. Uh, seventh place overall, Harper Das, fifth in class. Eighth place overall, sixth in class for Cole Teal. And a, a plethora of new eras coming in now. Uh, third place in new era for Chloe McGill, ninth place overall. Rex Pooley has been fantastic this weekend, finishes in the top ten again overall, fourth place in class. Charlie Page next up, fifth in class. Jensen Bigland in sixth, Henry Algar in seventh, Cooper Earsman in eighth, Harry Chapman ninth, Buddy Hugo tenth, Soren Gallagher in eleventh, Theo Poiter in twelfth, Louis Williams Mavs in thirteenth, uh, Toby Biggs in fourteenth, Grace Murphy in fifteenth, and Sophia Page in the sixteenth. Mason Hibbert was a retirement with one lap to go at the end, and to mention Alfie Mayer as well, finished in fourteenth place overall and seventh in class.
Well, great drives again from Chester Forks and Riley Murrow. And with the uh, scores on the doors, you've got to think that they will be in pole position uh, going into the last two rounds of the season at Shennington. Uh, in a few weeks' time, you'll be able to watch all of their racing for round 12 here on Alpha Live on the 28th of August. That well done to all of our Bambino C50 drivers. And, uh, rest ahead of the season finale in a few weeks time right we'll move on from the C50s and to our second group of Bambino entries next out on circuit their final is the I Army Bambinos time for the final then for round 10 of Super 1 2022 the I Army Bambinos taking out to the circuit in a short few moments' time. Here is their grid for the final. Charlie Clough, perfect so far today. Two wins from two, maximum 68 points. Ronnie Carter alongside on the front row. Josh Cook and Grayson Wortley both scored 63 points. Josh Cook takes third place on the grid virtue of a slightly faster uh, PB across the heat so far but that's your second row of the grid James Roots has been fantastic so far today and is rewarded uh, with a third row start alongside Fraser Anderson Arthur Farrow and Darren Dimitrov start on row 4, Oscar Kenny and Logan Jones on row 5 Logan Rolf and Dean Singh Bahal go for row 6 Freddie Fluitt and Harris Barber start on the 7th row of the grid Daniel Ferguson and uh, Eli Lisiecki on row Eight, William Crombie and Albert Farrow on row nine. And completing the uh, 19 runners in this Bambino final for the category. There are our drivers out on circuit. Good level, good level of support for today for the IRB Bambino drivers. So if you are tuned in supporting one of them, do let us know where you're watching from and who you're supporting. Victoria Anderson, Razor Anderson's mum. Earlier, Razor so far today. Well, this is a category that is definitely, we know, going to Shannington. Incredibly close on points. And we've got all of our key players at the front of the order. Engines fired up then. Nine minutes on the clock on the gantry. Ready to go then for the final in Iami Bambino for round 10 of the Super 1 Series 2022. Away they go. Good start for the GP plate. Clough takes the lead early on. And Grayson Wortley, we've seen good starts from Grayson Wortley today. And there is another one straight through into second place. Heading up to Christmas Corner. New plate of James Roots has had a good start as well. It's up into third. Down the hill they come. Into Ashby Corner. It's another good start. There's one driver off uh, off the back of the field. Maybe uh, Arthur Farrow, who's had a, a slow first sector. It's a shame because Arthur Farrow had started uh, in the top half of the order. There's Clough, front of the order. Wortley in second place. Roots in third. North four, Ronnie Carter as well. Josh Cook in his, his our top five route we've been seeing so far today. Into the order again. It's a touch wide from James Roots though on the run through Fine Lady. And yes, Ronnie Carter's going to be down the inside here and th go, thank you very much. I will take third place. No, this contact between the two of them. And round goes Roots. Round goes Roots. Spins full uh, 180s. Very, very frustrated. And loses all those hard-earned positions. Uh, there's a piece of debris as well uh, in the middle of Ashby Corner that's come off one of the carts. Well, I, I would tend to say that was a case of a racing incident on first viewing. They get an opportunity to see it again. On a replay as to what happened there between Roots and Carter. It's one of the uh, risks 
through Christmas Corner, and it does tighten up. And it tightens up to that curb, apex curb on the left-hand side as they go through the King Cavern Christmas. Not the first time we've seen a cart spin in that region of the circuit going side by side with another, and it won't be the last. Meanwhile, though, front of the order, Charlie Clough, Grayson Wortley, running very nicely indeed, first and second. Ronnie Carter, uh, not too far behind, and Josh Cook still there as well. Moving through the order now. Already down to six minutes and 30 seconds of this race to go. His route is still going, by the way. Unfortunately, he's down in 16th place. There's the number 73 of Logan Jones on the screen. Prepared machine, and a replica uh, Lewis Hamilton helmet design. 12, Chris Barber just behind. There is James Roots, the dedicated on the fight back through. To the outside, forced out wide. Uh, and the defending drivers ahead. This barber down the inside, three wide. Oh, roots around the outside. Very nicely done. A bit between his teeth now to try and uh, catch up to the drivers ahead after that spin. Uh, whilst in third place. Will be uh, roots to tenth place. Uh, be a top end, isn't out of the question here for James Root. Pace that Hart has had so far today. Jesus, Hart's ahead, Ackley. Sight of uh, Eli Lizyaki there in the number 99. And the new Liberty as well is the number 99. Is detailing? Uh, on that one, on the black and white detailing. Here's the group up ahead of James Roots on his screen. Meeting Powell, and Rolf, and Oscar Kenny, 7, 8, and 9. Halfway through on the time. Charlie Clough and Grayson Wortley still in control at the moment. Ronnie Carter's not giving it up, though. And in fact, Ronnie Carter really isn't giving it up. Ronnie Carter has just set the fastest lap of the race so far. He's got on the pace of those leaders and is only a tenth and a half behind now. More PVs coming in. And the roll with 7.801. There is Dean Sinkham out. Art number 23 heading up the hill now. What have we got going on here? Well, this is a change for fifth place. Fraser Anderson into fifth place. Gets ahead of Darren Dimitrov. In a very nice move up the inside. Got that uh, run up the hill. And, uh, that will please everybody watching uh, in Kelty. Up in Scotland. Get past Darren Dimitrov. Getting on the CRG chassis for driving from London. James Roots, though, still ploughing away, getting through and going past Logan Rolf now. And another 32. Three minutes to go, then. Drivers at the front of the order, controlling the pace. He's very much a 1-2-3, though, now. It's... Uh, has been Ronnie Carter has closed in and joined North Wortley, not been able to drop him. What does Ronnie Carter do here? He's got experience of winning these finals. But, uh, again, he's kind of held back a bit by having a weak first round. Now, that would be that that would get dropped. Uh, but, uh, the winner from round number three, Manny Gores. Also took the last televised final. And number eight is all oh, side by side. They're all contact there between Fraser Anderson and Dimitrov. There's a little too much wrong there. Uh, yes, it's, it's like misjudgment. 
on in a truck. Those things happen. Back in the front of the order, though. Change for the lead. Grayson Wortley up into first position then, ahead of Charlie Clough. Charlie Clough's going to go back down the inside. Retake the position, and Ronnie Carter's in there as well. Winner two rounds ago at fullback at this stage of the weekend. Must say, a, a, a finals victory for Ronnie Carter here would be a big, big move uh, in the story of this championship. At the moment, Ronnie Carter has... It depends which way you think about it mentally. I, I like to think about it in a positive fashion. That if you have had some weaker scores earlier in the season, that's better, more room for improvement. The score at this stage of the season is strong even with those performances, it would be actually a, a confidence booster the driver in Ronnie Carter's situation. There's more things in their control. Truck still running in fourth place, bit of a lonely fourth place at the moment. 2.2 seconds off the lead, but well clear. Dimitrov, Roots, Anderson, Kenny all behind. Oh, off there. Now, ah, that's the number 48 of Oscar Kenny. So that's one of the cards that we were just mentioning in that scrap for fifth place. Has had an off somewhere. Back on the circuit. But we'll have lost a number of positions as a result of that. Two laps to go. Charlie Clough still leading ahead of Grayson Wortley. Up the hill to Christmas they go. Ronnie Carter still close by in the number six. Ronnie Carter, just keep it calm at the moment. Get the feeling. Oh, now saying that he's going to go down the inside, go for second place on Grayson Wardley. Has he got it done? Not quite yet. Grayson Wardley's going to have the inside for the next corner. A left-hander, and he's going to have the next one as well. No, Ronnie Carter's had a go here, trying to get through. Last lap board is going to be shown uh, in a mere number of seconds' time for these three drivers. Charlie Clough still leads. Has Carter got the run down the inside? No, Wartley's able to sweep round the outside. Last lap board seen by the drivers then. Surely you've got to think that if it's Grayson Wartley, you're going to have a move up the inside into Christmas corner. Clough's going to go defensive. Is Wartley going to try and do a switch back? No, that's brilliantly driven by Charlie Clough. Very, very nicely done. Charlie Clough is half a lap away from a double final victory here at Wilton Mill this weekend. Took the final yesterday for round number nine. Ronnie Carter's getting the elbows out. Has forced, oh, the force the move through there on Grayson Wortley. Side pod to side pod from the angle that we had here. But can Ronnie Carter throw a move into deny? Charlie Clough a second final victory of the weekend. He's gone down the inside. He's got the move done. Oh, what a move by Ronnie Carter, takes the lead at the last moment, Josh Cook's here as well, he's going to take third place, it's going to be Ronnie Carter, who takes round 10 of the Bambino Ayami Super 1 Championship for 2022, and he takes it, no on the line, timing says Clough, timing says Clough, by six thousandths of a second, we had one of these earlier, in heat number one, that's going to be another one that is too tight to call, timing says Clough, by six thousandths of a second over Carter. Let's have a look at that again. Carter down the inside, gets the move done on Charlie Clough. No problems with that. Now let's just see here. Can we tell from this angle it's going to be the reverse angle? It was very close on the line. That is very, very close. That is a photo finish between Charlie Clough and Ronnie Carter. That is going to need to be checked, checked and checked again as to who took the win there. And at least on timing, Charlie Clough wins it by 0 0.006 of a second ahead of Ronnie Carter. That is unbelievable racing. They have been so, so entertaining today, the Ayami Bambinos. Full credit to them. Well, let's just give you what we've got on timing. This is, again, provisional with a capital P and then everything else. Charlie Clough wins by 0.06. 0.06, sorry. 
Ronnie Carter second. Josh Cook not giving in to the end, takes third place ahead of Grayson Wortley in fourth. Darren Dimitrov, a strong result there in fifth place. Fraser Anderson sixth. Dean Singh Pahal, after difficulties yesterday, responds well, finishes in seventh place. Eli Lidziaki, great drive by Eli there. Number 99 in eighth place. James Roots in ninth. Uh, Logan Rolfe completes the top ten. Arthur Farrow, 11th. Daniel Ferguson, 12th. William Crombie in 13th. Freddie Fluitt, 14th. Oscar Kenny, 15th. Logan Jones, 16th. Harris Barber uh, had problems, unfortunately, in the second half of the race, finishes in 17th place. Ethan Cooper, 18th. Arthur Farrow, 19th. Well, I'm dumbfounded. Absolutely, we generally do not know for sure who who got that one because that was very, very tight on the line. We'll need it uh, need it reviewed to make sure and everything is uh, is okay with that. So definitely look at results. Not have time enough credit UK for the confirmed result on that one. Driver ex reaction said that uh, Ronnie Carter took that, but on timing it says Charlie Clough. We'll wait and see. We'll see the Bambino IRB category again. At, uh, in three weeks' time, Shenington do join us for that. We're going to get ready for our next final out here at Wilton Mill. It's the nine minutes plus one lap final for Honda Cadets. Let's have a look at the grid then for Honda Cadet and their final here at Wilson Mill for round 10 of Super Bowl 2022. Logan McAllister has pole position, another driver to have had a perfect run through heats so far today. Hugh Roach, championship leader, starts alongside on the front row. A great opportunity this for Hugh Roach to put himself in a very strong position ahead of the finale at Shannington in week's time. Jensen Walker has been superb so far today. Starts on row two alongside him is Joel Bullen. Teddy Cooper, yesterday's winner, starts today's final on row three with Jack Collinson alongside. Andrew Dixon and Jensen Hookie, two drivers who have both tasted uh, success in these finals so far this year, start on row four. Max Taddy and John Richardson start on row five. They'd love to be on the podium once again here uh, in Super 1. Leo Bradshaw and Josh Parker start on row number six. On row seven, we've got Riley Till and Daniel Butcher. Tom Reed and Austin Stiley go from row number eight. Kian Sullivan and Thomas Butcher start on the ninth row of the grid. Leo Livings and Ella Dixon completing the top 20. Maria Roberto and Katie Donaldson due on row 11. So I suspect the 21 cart field here today big race this really really big race in the story that is the 2022 Super 1 uh, Honda Cadet Championship a wide open one I would say at least four drivers still have a realistic chance of winning this title Roach Ricky Alistair two of them on the front row two of them a little bit further back but it's a Honda Cadet final round Wilton Mill, and we know that anything can happen in one of those. Enjoying the coverage. Make sure you subscribed to uh, the live YouTube channel, your support on the social media network, at double dash MM, if you're enjoying the commentary. Big thanks to our sponsors, uh, Super 1 2022, CWG Choices Limited, AST Signs, JKH, and RI Helmets. Field coming around then to form up the grid for the Honda Cadet final. It will be nine minutes plus one lap. The international layout here at Wilton Mill. What could be a season defining race? Round number 10 of 12. Make sure that everybody is in the right position start of this race. Destination of the order. I'm not sure if uh, Hugh Roach is ready to go, but the lead lights are coming on. What's happening here? Uh, Hugh Roach has lost an engine. Yes, Hugh Roach has lost an engine. Right again, thumbs up now. Okay, I think now 
we are good to go racing. Five second board in the air. Nine minutes. Red lights are on. Red lights are out and away we go for the Honda Cadet final. Who's going to get the run into the first corner? Logan McAllister comes across the line of Hugh Roach to defend that lead. It's very tight as they run through and Joel Bullen's going to cut underneath. Joel Bullen takes the lead. McAllister and Roach so occupied with each other they didn't see the opening for Joel Bullen who sweeps through into the lead. Are they all going to get through the first uh, sector there or thereabouts? Good start for the Honda Cadets down into... The Ashby hairpin they go. That was beautifully done by Joel Bullen. Saw the two rivals running out wide. Got very, very tight to the apex of turn number two. This is a big opportunity for Joel Bullen now to lead. It's a big field, though, this. So before, very difficult to lead out from the front of one of these Honda Cadet uh, fields on your own. He's going to have some help from behind, though, between... Alistair uh, and Hugh Roach. So it's Bullen, Roach, Alistair. Good start for Teddy Cooper as well, up to fourth place. Andrew Dixon, good start likewise. Uh, fifth, Josh Parker, sixth. Not a good start for Jensen Walker, down to seventh position. Looks like everybody is running in this race. We're down to 21st place in Maria Roberto, which is good to see. Change at the front of the order then. Ro uh, Roach and McAllister have got both got past Bullen there, so Roach to the front here on lap number two. And uh, oh dear, uh, off there, that's uh, Maria Roberto in the number 38. I wonder if that might be Ella Dixon as well. Uh, we'll just confirm that in a moment. Uh, Thomas Butcher has also had a problem, he's not through sector number one. So, incidents out there on lap number two. There may be yellow flags on the run up to Christmas Corner this time around. Seven minutes to go. Length of a heat. And full course yellow is out for the first time today. So this will neutralise the race. Everybody uh, comes to a controlled pace is to get those two carts going again. It is Ella Dixon and Rio Roberto. Both going. Should be a fairly short full course yellow. Oh, he keeps sticking on through. Uh, now, the interesting situation here. Okay, that was just Hugh Roach being pulled back up. Hugh Roach is effectively now a safe part. Control. Pace. Wait for the green flag, which will be shown at the start finish to resume the race. Go back fairly quickly. Yes, we are. Green flag in the air. Back on the race. Six minutes to go. Oh, bit, big shot there by Logan McAllister. Right on it. Right on it indeed. Brilliantly read by Logan McAllister. That was a little bit like George Russell in the Formula 1 a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely on the ball and has taken the lead off of the full course yellow. Round the outside. Here comes Teddy Cooper going for second place. And has got second place. But that was brilliantly read by Logan McAllister. Five and a half minutes to go then. Hugh Roach has got back into second place and everybody is there. This is one of those Honda Cadet finals that could go anyway. Cooper back down the inside. Gets back past Roach. Roach is not happy at all. Feels that uh, he was aggrieved there. Andrew Dixon's now going to get involved. Round goes Cooper. Oh, right in the middle of the whole pack. He's going to go down to the bottom of the pack. Yesterday's winner is not going to take the win today. There's drama here in the Honda Cadet final. Logan McAllister, though, has got a one-second lead. Big opportunity this. Five minutes to go. It's going to be hard for Logan McAllister to hold out from there on his own on a solo run, but you never know if there's a bit more... Uh, overtaking and battling behind. They could let him get away with this. McAllister leads. Roach second. Dixon in third. Josh Park is having a great run as well. He's up to fourth place there. In the red suit and the white helmet. Carts number 63. Joel Bullen still involved in fifth place. They count out the likes of Theo Bradshaw as well. We know that Theo Bradshaw can race through one of these uh, finals in the number 43. Jensen Walker, we've known seen how good he is today it's a really strong pace there's a the number 26 going down the inside that's Kean Sullivan uh, making an overtake in the mid pack there being followed through by Tom Reed in the number 36 going around the final corner 
now. Good overtakes there on the number 97 of Leo Livings. That was for 13th and 14th places, respectively. Four minutes to go. Andrew Dixon is currently the fastest driver out on circuit. 53.889, side by side between Reed and Sullivan. Classic Honda Cadet racing, battles everywhere you look. Overtakes galore. This is why we enjoy this category so, so much. Pace at the front of the order as well. Let's just keep uh, an eye on that. At the moment, McAllister is doing the job. 53.9 last time around for McAllister. 54-0 for Roach, so just quicker. A quarter of a tenth of a second. Here at uh, Theo Bradshaw, who's got past Josh Parker. Uh, Josh Parker. Bradshaw up to fifth place now. Still enough time here. The race through. Remember a, a Honda Cadet final I watched here a few years ago. There were five carts all together. Cart in fifth place going into the boot won the race. That's how, how quickly things can change uh, here at Wilton Mill. This category in particular. All the while, past each corner, it's uh, navigated. McAllister gets closer and closer to round victory. The first round victory of his season in round number three. Hasn't been back top step on the full points race since. And in the season that just waned in terms of results over the past few rounds had a difficult weekend at fullback but, uh, the rest of the days yesterday this could be just just, just what Logan McAllister needs to get this title challenge back on track two minutes to go then Roach is starting to close though the, the last time around for Roach was good 53.449 took two tenths of a second out of McAllister Andrew Dixon still in third ahead of Joel Bullen, Joel Bullen in court there or thereabouts by Theo Bradshaw. You're on his screen going through the boot now. Second and third place for Roach. They've got to work together. They've got to trust their own abilities and the tactics of one of these Honda Cadet finals that with 90 seconds there or thereabouts on the clock, they can close this gap back. Leave it to a last lap dice with Logan McAllister. McAllister cannot afford to put a single wheel wrong between now and the end of this race. I've got to feel the run up through sector one is paramount. Not too bad at the moment. 17.286 McAllister. That's a purple first sector from Hugh Roach. 17.161. Dixon likewise following through. Changes for position further down the order to tell you about. Riley Till has got past. John Richardson for ninth place. Tom Reed past Austin Stiley also for 12th. Teddy Cooper after that spin earlier, trying to recover back through now. Jack Collinson uh, has been overtaken for 17th place. It's a shame for Jack because he's been quick today. Not worked out in the final. Two laps to go then. Another fastest lap of the race last time around. But Hugh Roach, you can see visibly that that gap has closed now. 0.3 of a second at the last count. It's that old adage. Catching is one thing, passing is another. What can Hugh Roach do here about Logan McAllister, who's taken both heats so far today? It's always cross the finish line first here at Wilton Mill for round 10 of Super 1 at 2022. They will see the last lap board. This time around, Roach has not been any closer. He's trying to find a way through there. He's to the inside. McAllister's going to have to hold the line round the outside. Runs very, very wide over the start-finish line. Last lap board out then. Andrew Dixon fighting his way in. Andrew Dixon trying to take second place there. Roach is going to be compromised off and up the hill. That's actually good news for Logan McAllister. Doesn't need to defend, but has defended. And it's been neutralised by the fact... Oh, look at this. Dixon around the outside of Roach. Brilliant. Dixon takes second place away from Hugh Roach. Worked him off the racing line. We've seen a few moves like that today across the different classes. This is all good news for Logan McAllister, though, because the corners are ticking on by. He's not under attack. 
Andrew Dixon's got to have a mega run through the boot to have a chance into the last corner. He is closing. Logan McAllister got to stay calm. It's got in under control at the moment. They're going towards the last corner for the first time since round three. It's going to be Logan McAllister who takes the win in the final here at Wilton Mill for round 10 of the 2022 Super 1 Honda Cadet Championship. A brilliant day for Logan McAllister. Back on form, we say Motorsport wins by less than two tenths of a second ahead of Andrew Dixon. Hugh Roach is third, Theo Bradshaw is fourth, Joel Bullen fifth, sixth for Josh Parker, seventh for Jensen Walker, eighth and a fast uh, personal best at the end there for Max Taddy in a 53.65. Riley Till ninth, Jensen, uh, sorry, John Richardson in 10th place. Jensen Hookie down in 11th place. That was not the final that Hookie was looking for. 12th for Tom Reed, 13th for Leo Livings, 14th for Teddy Cooper, 15th for Kean Sullivan, 16th off Austin Stiley, 17th for Thomas Butcher, 18th for Jack Norton, 19th for Daniel Butcher, 12, uh, 20th for Ella Dixon, 21st for Maria Roberto. Well, a really good day's racing. And uh, that is what this Honda Cadet category with the pooled engines, you know, keeping the control uh, on the engines is all about and the powertrains. Very well done to all the staff uh, here at Super One. A very entertaining final. We will see Honda Cadet in three weeks' time at Shenington for the culmination of this championship. You don't miss it. It is going to go to the wire feel here. And uh, very, very entertaining to watch. Right. Well, there we go. That's Honda's uh, done for today. Go back into the pits, have their checks. Most race continuing. I hope that all goes well for the drivers. Next out on circuit, the next final, and uh, potentially the first championship awarding of the two. Race out on circuit is the junior. All set then for the Junior Rock Final and uh, what could be our first decider for a championship in 2022. Alfie Briggs has pole position. Just needs to finish the race. That's all he needs to do. Classified and he will be champion for 2022. George Barker is second and Oliver Law is in third. Perfect day so far. Perfect weekend for Alfie Briggs in this category. Uh, the unofficial points stand as thus for Junior Rock. Uh, Briggs on 1,214 points. Mark at 1,161 points. Oliver Law on 1,133. Uh, the points working as, as, as they do at the moment. Max possible for uh, George Parker is 1,240. Briggs is simply a case of getting points on the board. I don't know if it's first, second or third, uh, as long as it's one of those positions and there's no reason to have a zero score, Briggs will be champion. Going to be two rounds early. Try and see if there are any so, on the final being retrieved. Just out there. It's 1549. There's our drivers in the middle grid. Got a law, 77. Mr. Palmer, number 47. The right hand side of your screens in the number 63. Whilst uh, we wait for the start of this one, let's we'll take a short break for uh, we'll a moment for these messages.
welcome to Alpha Live, the live streaming service where you can be part of the action from home. You can watch via your smart TV, phone, tablet, or even your gaming console. We've got you covered. Just head to the YouTube app on any of your devices and search for Alpha Live. Here, you can watch all of the events as they unfold, or you could choose from our vast library for those lazy days in, all in beautiful HD. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Welcome back everybody to live coverage of round 10 for Super 1 2022. We're getting ready for our final in the junior rock category. Alfie Briggs on pole position, George Parker P2, Oliver Law P3. Nine minutes plus one lap. And uh, right, we are about set to go then for the final. Away we go. Alfie Briggs starts well. And Oliver Law gets into second place straight away. George Barker will look to fight back as they run up towards Christmas Corner for the first time. Barker is on the inside, has got the overlap, will look to get it done under braking and does so. Good move there from George Barker to retake second place. In the early stage of this one, it is Alfie Briggs doing what we've seen him do so many times so far in Junior Rock this season. Bolt away at the start of one of these races and leave the rest fighting for second at best. Through the toe of the boot goes Briggs. Good at this point of the affair. 46.972 for the first lap out of the box for Alfie Briggs. Very good stuff indeed from Briggs. Another law I'll be looking to uh, break some PBs in this race. Had some good traps with George Barker across the course of uh, the season so far. Saw one in uh, heat number one earlier on this morning. enjoy these cards enjoy seeing them in action we'll have more of course uh, in three weeks time up at Shenning's we've got more today of course we've got mini rock following up after this race Shenning's will play host to the final rounds of this championship and then uh, very much looking forward to the world of EDMM to Go back to Lenato later on in the year for the Rock Cup Super Finals. We'll be able to follow all of the action over at the Dash MM. Obviously, social media networks for the international finals for drivers in these categories. All the best from around the world Italy, uh, America, New Zealand. Many, many different countries represented there. And uh, good as well for this year to be back to a full strength of nations after a couple of years with the travel restrictions with a number of drivers being able to make it to northern Italy in October. Six and a half minutes at this one to go. Alfie Briggs doing what he needs to do. Came so close to winning the title last year. Just out in the, uh, the very final race of the season uh, to finish second place in that year. But this year has been no stopping the number 47 cart in this category. And the control that Briggs has shown as well. Had a couple of technical issues at fullback. Broke the streak of victories that he's had. But the current rate, the current rate at which he's going, he's going to score a perfect score uh, anyway. Um, Ten rounds of competition counted 12 at the ma maximum complete 12 rounds uh, completed in 2022 2.5 seconds is the lead at the moment for Briggs pace at the moment 45 9 7 8 last time around for Briggs we saw uh, that nearly get down into the 44s uh, in the second heat this is a, a longer race though Being cranked up here, and there we go. 45.641 for Briggs that time around. 46.2 for Barker. 
new PB for Barker in the 60 and a new PB for Oliver Law as well, 46.566. Oliver Law, this is the closest that he's been to George Barker so far in these races today. 1.9 seconds is the gap. Plugging away, he's just set another personal best through sector number one, which is very close to the pace of Barker. That's what we like to see, the improvement of the drivers uh, in this category. Another 45.6 for Briggs, another another. another PB from Bark about time around there. He's on the screen, winning in second place. Experienced at junior levels uh, across various uh, different engine manufacturers. He's looking to enjoy his racing this year in the rock category. Uh, pulled four tenths out on Oliver Law last time around. But of course, we were mentioning a lot about Briggs securing. Uh, his first place in the championship with this performance by my calculations Barker is going to do likewise uh, for second place in the championship it's been really strong uh, throughout the year no Shane Collins here today uh, as well this weekend it's him out of contention for that second place so if the race was to finish now it would be on 1,274 points. Barker, 1,219. Both of them would have first and second secured. Overall, likewise, would have third place secured. 1,189. Three minutes to go then. Alfie Briggs still circulating at that pace in the mid 45s. 45.564, new fastest lap for Briggs so far in this final. 46.1 for George Barker. New PB, and we have seen Barker be able to get into the 45s before. New fastest sector one has just gone in from Alfie Briggs. A number of laps here. Can he get a 44 in? Will we see 44 from Alfie Briggs before the end of this race? Oliver Law, uh, good pace at the moment from Oliver Law. 46.5 last time uh, around. This is the strongest pace that we've seen this weekend from Oliver Law. Single uh, rookie entrance. Uh, first season of Super 1 competition for Oliver. Running on the JWR prepared. Machine. We'll see more JWR uh, parts in action in the latter uh, parts of this race meeting. Some of them coming in in, uh, in both junior Rotax and senior Rotax. Those races coming up. Also got the finals for Rotax 177 and Mini Rock uh, to follow after this race here at Wilson Mill. Keep comments coming in. Hope you're enjoying your uh, your Sunday afternoon. Hello to. RFR Motorsports. There's your leader though, and champion elect. Less than two minutes away from being able to say that. To say he was so close to it last year. Applied himself brilliantly in this championship to keep the focus. Things clean. 45.281 last time around. Or Briggs and uh, any of this one done as well I think we'll uh, give, give clarity of mind ahead of the Rotax final earlier uh, against the Rotax final later I should say um, and there's a big opportunity for this driver to move towards potentially a double championship bid in Super 1 for 2022 two laps to go Barker and Law both setting new PBs 46.001 for Barker, 46.381 for Law. This has really good, been good pace, the strongest pace that we've seen from Oliver Law so far this weekend, confirmed. With a 6.3 second lead. 
Matthew Briggs will see the last lap board in a few moments' time once he gets round the final corner of the penultimate lap. There it is. One more lap for Alfie Briggs to complete to sew up this championship. Up the hill he goes to Christmas Corner. Another PB. Uh, oh, no, sorry, no PBs on that one, but good paces again from George Parker, consistent in the 46 zeros. Down the hill into Ashby then. But the last time we'll see uh, in one of these carts, I hope. Love to see if we have a go at uh, the Super Final. He's already been testing himself this season against European competition. But at least this year in the UK, when it comes to junior rock driving, there has been nobody who's been able to touch Alfie Briggs. Alfie Briggs wins round 10 and becomes the champion for junior rock in Super 1 Series for 2022. George Barker finishes in second place and secures his spot as runner-up. Oliver Law finishes in third place. And uh, Alfie Briggs after 12 months ago and just missing out on the title. No problems this year. And uh, he was the first driver to uh, complete a 10-round score that is sufficient enough to not be beaten by any other driver. Well done to Alfie Briggs and the whole team behind Alfie and the efforts there in the MS cart from Banbury. Well done to George Barker as well. Great season for him. Uh, I thought to be second, second places today. Uh, Oliver Law as well, showing that spirit, that pace. He's growing every time he gets uh, into the number 77 cart. Right, that is it for Junior Rock here today. And uh, uh, we'll move swiftly on to the next category out on circuit, Mini Rock, and their final is up next. Time for Mini Rock to head out uh, onto circuit then. Uh, let's have a look at their grid. Another uh, event where we've had a perfect score through the heat. Connor Scar is break at 68 points from 68. Charlie Benson alongside on the front row. Big race this for both of these drivers. Jacob Anslow and Cooper Stedden start on row number two. Eddie Stewart and Marcel Papapool start on row three. Rook Thompson and Alex Dole complete the eight trees in this class. So again, this one uh, is a category that will go to Shennington, but this race in particular could be very, very important in deciding who's going to have the upper hand uh, going into those final two rounds of the season, particularly between our two uh, drivers on the front row, Thomas Scarsbrick and Charlie Benson. Charlie Benson leading the championship unofficially, I should say. It. I say this, 10 points is what I have as the advantage for Benson at this stage of the season. Thomas Scarsbrick getting stronger and stronger across the course of this season. Hasn't taken a clean sweep so far this season. Not really been many clean sweeps in this category at all. Is there going to be one today? Round the final corner they come. Nine minutes on the timer and away we go. Very good start for those on the pole side of the grid. Charlie Benson has lost a number of positions there. That was not a good start for Benson at all. Scarsbrick leads. Anslow in second place. Charlie Benson has gone all the way down to fourth place there. We had a, a slight problem on as the throttle went down. He's going to have to fight back here. And the problem for Benson, pace that we've seen from Scarsbrick today, one of those where he's been out front, simply cannot be caught. I, I'm worried for Benson here. There's a, there's a gesture, frustration off of, uh, of Ozias. Is there a problem for the number 25 that's restricting its pace? And anyway, end of lap number one. It's Scarsbrick, Anslow, Stewart, Benson, Snedden, Thompson, Dole, Popical. Contact warning for Rook Thompson in sixth place. 
looks like the number 25 is starting to come on song now. That was a good run up the hill and a catch up to Eddie Stewart in the 45. And Oscar Osbury not scarpering away at the moment. Jacob Hanslow keeping him honest at this stage of the race. In fact, Hanslow has just gone and set a very good first sector. There is Charlie Benson, number 25. Second in the final yesterday. Double final winner at fullback in the previous meeting. A number of uh, final wins. He's had four of them so far this season uh, in this category. Worry about the timing. And there's uh, a little bit of a wobble on the number 28 transponder. I've seen that a couple of times so far today, but he's still in the lead of this race. This is better though from Benson. He's got past Stewart now. He's closing in on Jacob Anslow. Just wonder is the power delivery from the Vortex Rock engine is a bit too cold. Sometimes have that the engines feel a little bit fluffy at the start. Uh, and they're not quite up to temperature but very much on form now. Closing in he's going to be trying to get past Jacob Anslow here. Anslow takes over the shoulder, aware that he's there. It's not going to be close enough into Christmas this time around. They go, oh, both of them go deep into Christmas. No major dramas there. Jacob Anslow, uh, best results so far for Anslow so far uh, this year. As I say, it's not always gone his way in the finals. Well, I thought Benson was going to have a little look down the inside there. Has been on the podium. And had a very good couple of finals actually at fullback. Both finals for Anslow on the podium uh, around a month ago. Contact warning for Cooper Snedden in the number seven. Not been the kind of race that Cooper Snedden would have wanted. Has had problems and uh, he's currently been scored 19. Uh, so that must have been on the last lap. Yes, that must have been on the last lap because he's just done a 68.9. So something's happened out there for uh, the Scottish driver. Relegated him down to seventh place. The Conor Brick still leading this race. The pace is good. He's the only driver in the 49s at the moment. Just see him there in the black and green helmet uh, ahead. And there's been that change for second place. So Benson has got past... And slow then. Big part of the race this now for Charlie Benson. He's going to have to, if he wants to win this race, he's going to have to dig really, really deep. He's got time on his side. And if Jacob Anslow is willing to help out behind and push along, he could potentially catch Connor Skarsbrick. But it's, it's, they're going to have to drive in tandem. They're going to have to not put a foot wrong, keep that pace up. Either of them are going to win this race. Worry about the uh, scoring at the moment. Alice Garsbridge transponder missed a lap out. He hasn't fallen off as far as we're aware. Um, still there consistently at the front of the field. Was a little, uh, still a little bit concerned. Charlie Benson has moments where he almost looked around himself and think, going on with the cards. Is there a problem for Charlie Benson? Or is it just those bits of paranoia that you sometimes get at the, at the far end of a championship? I have seen races around the circuit change on a dime. Particularly when you go on to the back straight, there's a couple of curbs here that if you use the curb, uh, use the curbs, use your own cart and the track limits can hurt you as it should in uh, my opinion and the Sky's Brick still leads this race the pace at the moment 49.679 last time around so he's pulling away uh, on the two behind it's kind of been the story of the day here in Mini Rock See steely determination, Charlie Benson there in his eyes. 
I reckon he feels he has the measure of Jacob Anslow through the mid phase of this race. Trouble is, as good as the pace of all three at the front is. And that for the guys in second and third place, it's just not coming down. That gap is still around 2.5 seconds. Scarf Brick over Benson. This result would do. Uh, change that 10 point lead, make it an 8 point lead. Bring it into a, a final weekend. That's effectively uh, nothing, if you ask me. Um, the one saving grace that you could say for Charlie Benson is he has scores on his scorecard at the moment. Uh, are nice ones that are droppable. It's round four. Uh, would be one at the moment that he would look to get rid of. Had a very good final, but not such good heats. That would be a score to be improved on. Uh, argue as well, probably he's, uh, he's around seven as well, where he had a uh, problem in heat number one. So there are scores that can be improved uh, within that pack for Benson. Norris Brick will be looking to uh, move up from round number three. A few third places on that day, but also an eighth in one of the heats. So that could be improved on. That's the weekend at Shenington. Minute 15 to go. 3.2 seconds now the lead for Scarves Brick over Benson. Rook Thompson having a really good race as well, we should mention. Fourth place at the moment for Rook. Just set a personal best, 50.347. is holding off Alex Dole there in fifth place. And Eddie Stewart has just got past Marcel Popacol. It's not been the day for uh, Oz Driver in part number 99. Problems and uh, work to do, you'd feel, ahead of the finale in three weeks' time. There is Rick Thompson in 11th place, running on the Ricardo chassis. There's your leader on a Scarra's brick. Looking on course for the best day of the season so far uh, for carts number 28. And the first clean sweep of the season. This lap plus one more to go. Navigating the way through two left handers there, through Oziers onto the back straight. Walking nicely across that exit curb onto the back straight. Smooth through the boots, keeping those engine revs up. Last lap board, I reckon, will be out on this pass. Yes, it is. There it is. What a feeling this must be for Connor Scaris Brick. As we say, he has been there or thereabouts throughout the season so far. But for a long time, it just wouldn't come right in one of these finals. That was until yesterday. And now today, it's gone from strength to strength uh, to become, as long as you can get around this last half lap, third driver to take a clean sweep in this category so far, joining the likes of Charlie Benson uh, and Jarrett Clark. It's not often been done so far this year, but Connor Scarris brick round the toe of the boot, round Paddock Bend, Round the final corner to the finish line, takes the chequered flag, and Connor Scarisbrick takes a brilliant victory for round 10 of the Mini Rock category for Super 1 2022 and really makes a statement ahead of the Shennington finale in three weeks' time that he is the driver to beat. He doesn't have the points lead at the moment, but very well could do so uh from the end of this championship charlie benson finishes in second place if you can't win them you've just got to get the points in and that's exactly what charlie's done today third place for jacob anslow fourth for rook thompson fifth for alex dole sixth for marcel popical seventh eddie stewart and eighth for cooper snedden there we go and it's all the vortex rock uh, racing done here today at Wilton Mill. We'll see the categories out again uh, for the finale at Shennington in three weeks' time. And we'll move into the next section of the order. Four races to go here 
at World to Mill for round 10 of Super 1 2022. Next final out on circuit uh, for their nine minute plus one lap final will be Rotax 177. Let's get ready then for the Rotax 177 final and uh, take a peruse through the grid for this one. It's another KPR Motorsports front row. Oliver Appleby on pole position. Chris Thomas alongside on that front row. Ian Branfield makes it three championship contenders at the front end of this grid. Starts on row two alongside last year's runner-up Scott Clee. Alex McGee and Sammy Marlam go from the third row of the grid. And then on row four, we will find Costa Kurtzis and Ben Johnson. Max Davies and Simon Kavanagh completes the 10 expected runners in this race. Andy Ward has not started any races so far today. And, uh, sure enough, we have got 10 carts out on circuit. You can see the timing there. A little bit of a delay for Alex McGee. Oliver Appleby soaked up the pressure brilliantly in the second heat from his KPR Motorsport teammate Chris Thomas. It's another series that will go to Shannington irrespective of the results here today at Wilton Mill. And Oliver Appleby close out. First final win since round seven. Away we go for nine minutes plus one lap. Aggressive start for those on the pole side of the grid. Ian Branfield has got through into second place. Chris Thomas has got work to do. He's got Alex McGee and Scott Clee on his rear bumper here and round the outside going there. That's a big attempt from McGee to try and make a way through. Down into Ashby Corner if they go for the first time. Oliver Appleby has done the first part of the job, has held the lead. This is Ian Branfield, who struggled in heat number one, was better in heat number two. Some pace came back, but uh, the KPR boys were able to respond. This time, he's got ahead of Chris Thomas. He's there in second place. How does he play this tactically? To try and lead it out from the front. We've seen how good Appleby is at leading these races out from P1. Got a, another little wobble on the transponder for Alex McGee, so slots him into fifth place. So it's Appleby, Branfield, Thomas, Clee, McGee, Milam, Johnson, Kavanagh, Ritzis, and Davies. All calm at the moment, though, in this Rotax 177 final. It's not quite got going yet. That will bother our leader of Oliver Appleby. We we'll just want to have a nice, calm, relatively boring race for him behind the wheel. Take another haul of points, extend his championship lead going towards the last two rounds of the season. As, oh, Scott Clee down the inside. That was a late, bold move and it worked. Great stuff from Scott Clee. Takes third place away from Chris Thomas. That really will give Chris Thomas something to think about now. His championship bid, which is still alive, he needs to win this race. He can't afford to see Branfield and Appleby pulling more points away uh, from him if, he, if he's wanting to retain that number one plate for next year. Six minutes and 40 seconds to go. I just feel like Scott Clee had a difficult start to the season, wasn't himself. Wasn't getting those same results that he did 12 months ago. The second half of the season has been really good, really, really good. And it's been great to watch him be back in that kind of form, the kind of form that he was the winner at uh, fullback. Appleby, though, continues to lead into the boot they go. Six minutes on the clock. 
quite at half distance yet. There is a track limit warning for Chris Thomas, the number one, and a track limit warning for uh, Costa as well. So that has just got past Simon Kavanagh. Simon Kavanagh who had that off uh, during one of the heats earlier on. Knows this track well though. And lots of uh, Club 100 racing around this circuit. Stepped up to uh, stepped across the Rotax 177s and spoke to him in the early point of the year and uh, to catch up with him and discuss what the plans were. And he said very much, it's like, well, I like the race craft, I like the racing. I wanted a bigger challenge. I wanted to race in something a bit faster. And uh, very much enjoyed the season in Rotax 177. Openly said, he's recommended it to anyone who's looking to step across into owner racing. Five minutes of this one to go. Over Appleby. This is a drive so far that's reminding me uh, of his final in front of the Alpha Live cameras at Glanny Gores. That was round number four. He led it from the front, he controlled it, he just kept that pace up. He never gave any of the other drivers even a sniff. Not a single chance of trying to put a move on him and just keeping Ian Branfield at that gap of about four tenths of a second. Each lap he can do that is a step closer to extending his championship lead. End of lap number six, 45.743 for Appleby last time around, 45.768 uh, for Branfield. Ace is similar. Lee there in third place, Chris Thomas in fourth. The four of them have cleared away from the rest of the field. Alex McGee, fifth place, Simi, Marlon in sixth. Move for seventh place. Costa has got past Ben Johnson. Through the boot they go. This has been a good lap from Ian Branfield. Just responded. I reckon this is touch quicker no nope. I was completely wrong Appleby was quicker 45 it, it, it was all the last sector uh, that did the job for Appleby this one just ticking the laps on by at the moment Appleby holding that position holding that four tenth lead and really putting the question to Branfield and Clee and Thomas behind of like, what have you guys got? What have you got in the locker? It's going to take a mighty effort to knock the number three cart off top spot here today. It's been a change for position in ninth. Max Davies has got past Simon Kavanagh. Branfield is trying. Put nearly two tenths out of Appleby on that lap. Is this the point of the race where Appleby really has to dig deep? It's not been the hottest day that we've raced on so far this season. It's still quite warm out there. This is a circuit that puts a lot of load on those tyres. Got to keep them in check. Having a, a strong handling cart underneath you is imperative around this place. A, a cart that can ride the kerbs. Ride the bumps, carry the speed through the high-speed corners. So far, all of these drivers are doing just that. Two minutes to go. Still Appleby from Branfield, Clee, Thomas. But again, Branfield, a touch quicker. A touch quicker that time around. Another track limit warning for Chris Thomas. That is his second of the race so far. Starty were in the battle for fifth place. Alex McGee holding off Sammy Milam at the moment. They're about three and a half seconds behind the leader. Uh, Costa pulled through. is in seventh place. 1.2 seconds behind the leader. A second clear himself on Ben Johnson. Uh, Max Davies is second, second and a half further back. Simon Kavanagh in tenth place. Potential opportunity this for Chris Thomas. He's got a half run on Scott Clee up the hill. We had to think about that. It's offline. 
Going down into Ashby now. And Chris Thomas find a way through and get back onto the podium, get back into third place. I've got long to do it now. With two more laps after uh, this one. So he is closing. So try and set this one up for a move into Christmas Corner. That would be normal way of doing it. Still 0.4 of a second is the lead for Oliver Appleby and he's controlled this race so, so well. Just acknowledges that Branfield is there over his shoulder. Doesn't need to do much more than that at the moment. Branfield isn't within striking range. Probably just needs to keep driving it true, driving it straight, smooth, as he has done for the last 11 laps. Into the boot then, final lap board about to come out. Oliver Appleby has done so much of the work. He's done 95% of the work, you'd say, to take a big clean sweep, his second of the year. Hasn't got the job done yet. He's got a very good run through the first couple of corners. Branfield's now going to have to think about Clee and Thomas. This should be race done for Oliver Appleby. Down into Ashby Corner for the final time. Clee not within range yet of going for a move on Branfield. He's got to think about Chris Thomas behind also. This is all good news for Oliver Appleby. He doesn't have to think about defending. Being worried about those behind. He is going to extend his championship lead into the boot for the final time. Oliver Appleby, KPR Motorsport are going to take another victory in the Rotax 177 category. The man from Colchester wins again, takes round 10 of the Rotax 177 Super 1 Championship for 2022 and will be the favourite going into the last two rounds in three weeks' time. Ian Branfield takes second place in the final. A good result uh, for him following up what he did yesterday as well. In fact, it's his third second place in a final in a row. Uh, third place for Scott Clee. Good to see Scott back on the podium uh, in front of the cameras. Once again, he did that at uh, fullback. Fourth place for Chris Thomas here today. A clean sweep yesterday. It's just not quite fallen into place for the reigning champion. We'll have work to do to hold on to that championship at Shennington. Fifth place for Sammy Milan. Sixth for Alex McGee, who will be the top rookie here today. Seventh place for Costa Kriitsis. Eighth for Ben Johnson. Ninth for Simon, uh, Max Davies. And tenth for Simon Kavanagh. A good race there from Oliver Appleby. A controlled drive from pole position. And he will take maximum points away from Wilton Mill here today. Very, very good set of races indeed. We'll see them in three weeks' time. Next up, we move on to uh, the uh, Mini Max final, race number 25 on your schedules. That's up next. have a look through the grid then for the Minimax final here today at Wilton Mill for round 10 of Super 1 2022. Uh, very mixed up order this. There hasn't been a dominant force through uh, the heat. So Leon Barlow has pole position ahead of Ernie Overton. Joseph Murphy is on row two alongside Joshua Jarvis. Championship leader Joshua Bagembe starts on row three alongside Cameron Edmonds. Kasper Tomalewski starts on row four, returning to Super 1 uh, for the first time this season. Jake Fluitt joins him on that fourth row. Max Hollor and Archie Dyson are on row five. Jensen Powers and Charlotte Stanley start on row six. Ben Horner and Jasmine Taylor start on row seven. Then it's Logan Cowling and Reese Owen on row number eight. Emily Ackett and Yusuf Yacoub on row nine. And, uh, that will complete those take has not been out on circuits. So we're in these finals, it'll be nine minutes plus one lap. Uh, I really hope not all this one. It's a uh, very entertaining race. I'm going to keep an eye on those drivers in with a shout to the championship. To uh, this championship stage, Overton. 
uh, and Murphy, very big names. Away we go then for the final in Minimax, nine minutes plus one lap. Really, really fast start at uh, the front of the field and Barlow's got the run up to Christmas Corner for the first time in the number 42 car. Everybody defending really hard to the inside of thing. But has got a very good start as well. He's maybe up to as far as second place. Yes, he is down into the hairpin. They go into Ashby hairpin. All trying not to trip over one another. And there's one driver off in the dust there. It is the number 20, I don't know, Tom Olewski. Contact warning for Tom Olewski. They're all jostling for position there as they went through Ashby Hairpin. Downhill run uh, to the end of sector number one, but Leon Barlow leads. Joshua Bigambi in second place. Ernie Overton third. Joseph Murphy, Murphy fourth. So the three championship contenders are all up there at the sharp end, and here comes Joseph Murphy looking down the inside. Thinks better of it. Slots back into fourth place. Joshua Jarvis is there in fifth. Max Hollor in sixth. And Horn has had a good start. Up so five positions to seventh place there on the first lap fantastic to see from the driver in the number 15 it's off in the background there was at least one car possibly more it is the number 60 and there's more cars like that murphy oh my goodness joseph murphy's been off and uh, that is one of the key protagonists he's going to lose out in this final big challenge you're in a big field like this go off road you lose one or two positions you're going to lose Quite a few more. Joshua gembe has been off, I think, as well as lost three positions. It was Jensen Powers, the number 16, who was off at Ashby. It's a bit of a scrappy final so far for the Minimax drivers. Not scrappy at the front, though, for Leon Barlow. Running very well at the front of the order. And the Overton. Big opportunity this now. It's got to capitalise. Championship rivals are further down the order. It's got to maximise the point situation that presents itself to him here in this Minimax final. Top rookie at the moment as well is Overton. Which Jarvis has got through there. It's into second place. Liak is trying to recover, he's got up to 15th place. Kasper Tomalewski also back on the move, trying to go back up through the order. We saw Tomalewski do this in uh, in the second heat. Do it again to get the podium trophy here today. It's down the inside. Was that ben Horner having a go? Uh, I think it was. And here comes Tomalewski as well in the number 20. He takes everywhere at the moment. The number 36 is now getting involved. That's Jake Fluitt. Gets past Ben Horner. Ben Horner's going up and down like a pogo stick at the moment through uh, this order. Six minutes to go on the clock. Contact warnings for both Joshua Jarvis and Ernie Overton. It is getting a bit rough and ready out there. Side by side between the 48 of Joseph Murphy and the number 11 of Max Hollow. That's good stuff for Max Hollow. And you can see as well what happens around this Wilton Mill circuit, particularly the end of a weekend where it's been dry, when you get offline. No grip for Joseph Murphy there at all. Loses out to both... Uh, Bagembe and I think Tom Olewski got through there as well. Real big slide through those very quick first couple of corners. Vivian and then fine lady. Five minutes and ten seconds on the clock to go. There is Kasper Tom Olewski. A few years back. there as well it's, it's okay for me at the moment the, the order of the day for the championship leader is keep those consistent points rolling in defending hard there not wanting to give an inch to joseph murphy holds it round the outside cabron edmonds is going to want a piece of this the driver in the number 10 car there with the blue helmet wick has properly been turned up in this race This means something to a lot of these drivers fighting across the last uh, bit rounds, completing 10 here today. Ooh, Overton's going to be in a bit of trouble here. Max Hollow's going to try and go through into oblivion. That is a remarkable move 
from Max Hollow. Commitment to the max there. Max Hollow through into third place. Looks like Kasper, to yeah, to Tomalevsky's taking advantage of that as well. Has got through into fourth. Full course, yellow is out. Right, okay. Not fully sure what that is for. Ah, that'll be what it's for. It's the 21 and 19. It's Archie Dyson and Reese Owen. Both been off uh, at the final corner. That's what it was for. It's going to be a very quick. It's yellow indeed. He's back to racing speed. But Leon Barlow there in the lead of the race. Joshua Jarvis, B2. And we are going to go back to green. This is going to be an opportunity again for drivers. We saw some changes early on, and it's again. Oh, Joshua Jarvis. Joshua Jarvis, it's his turn to do the George Russell trick and gain a position off the end of a full course yellow. Leon Barlow, well, you've got a feel from him there because he only really had one uh, opportunity to go over start finish under full course yellow, and it ended right there and then. I wouldn't have necessarily seen what the cause of the full course yellow was, but Barlow back down the inside, goes with the move on Joshua Jarvis, brilliantly done. Re great response from Leon Barlow to retake the lead through Oziers. With the classic, it's not a classic moves that you do around here at Wilton Mill, and that's one of them, sticking on the inside through Oziers. That's not a classic move, though, my goodness me, Joshua Jarvis. Second lap in a row, but this time at full racing speed through the entry. Oh, and Max Holland's trying to get involved and has lost out big time there. They got three wide on the entry to Christmas, and Max Holland is out. Just like that, was going for second place. It tightened up ahead of him. I think there was contact and a bit of damage to the front of the number 11. And poor Max Holland deserved something from this race, but he's out on lap number nine. So, it's Jarvis after that incredible move through oblivion on the last lap. Barlow second. Tamalevsky in third place. Murphy fourth. Bagembe in fifth place. Bagembe's going to look here. Not going to want to help Joseph Murphy too much because that's a championship rival. Up to those championship rivals behind Bagembe to close him down on points. He's quite happy in this situation at the moment. One championship rival, one position ahead of him, not losing too many points. Uh, the other one, in the shape of Ernie Overton, two places back. As Oh dear, what's happened there? Joseph Murphy's off again. Second time that Joseph Murphy has been off in the grass there. Was he encouraged or was, was that a problem with the cart that ended up uh, with the 40? Let's have another look at that. That was quite strange through Oziers. Oh, he just lost it on his own. He's just got crossed up too deep into Oziers. Again, gone out of the groove of where the grip is. That is a driver error. That is a pure driver error from Joseph Murphy and it's lost him a number of positions and points. Change for the lead. Barlow back ahead of Joshua Jarvis. Got it done on the exit of Christmas. Tomalevsky and Bagembe are back in this as well. So it's a quartet going for the race lead. 30 seconds to go. Bagembe's looking down the inside of Tomalevsky there for third place. Doesn't want to lose his cart on the front of a driver that isn't part of the championship battle per se. There'll be two more laps after this one. Crossing the line with, what would we say, 12 seconds to go. Barlow confirmed as your new leader. Back into the lead on the X-Cart chassis. Joshua Jarvis in second place. Tomalevsky in third. Maybe under attack from Bagembe here. The wise thing to do if you're Bagembe with this championship situation is hold fire. Because you're gaining today as opposed to you know, trying to go for a third, second or maybe even first. Risking it all and losing it all. That's warning for the number 48 of Joseph Murphy. Where did Murphy fall down? Well, he actually didn't fall too far. Fell down to sixth place after that mistake through Oziers. Leon Barlow is going to see the last lap board. There it is. Tomalevsky has just set the fastest lap of the final so far. 46.827. Up the hill they go. Barlow's surely going to go defensive. Actually doesn't need to. Switches back across. No overlap and no opportunity for Joshua Jarvis there to go down the inside 
into Ashby. Barlow goes defensive again. He's got to get the run off of Ashby correct. He's got to be defensive to the inside. J oh, shuts the door on Jarvis there. It's all stacking up ahead of them. Oh, it's contact and they're all off. Oh my goodness me. Now they've gone back on again. Tomalevsky has come out of that in the lead. I think Jarvis fell by the wayside. Bogemi survived. Tomalevsky survived and it's all opened up again. Chaos on the final lap here in the Minimax final. And it's gonna be Kasper Tomalevsky on the line takes it leon barlow second jake fluitt jake fluitt takes third place fights to the end what a drive from jake fluitt that has come out of nowhere brilliant stuff joshua bagambe takes fourth ernie overton fifth joseph murphy uh, in sixth place seventh to four jasmine taylor eighth ben horn and ninth cameron edmonds tenth charlotte stanley 11th for Amelie Ackett, 12th for Joshua Jarvis, 13th Jensen Powers. Just to run through the rest of the order, 14th for Max Hollow, 15th for Artie Dyson, and then two retirees, Reese Owen Logan Cowley. Let's try, if we can, have a very quick look at what happened there between Wilkins and Oziers on that last lap. Leon Barlow was defending hard. We got a moment of nearly four wide through... Wilkins uh, to Ozies, which I don't think I've ever said. And uh, didn't quite go to plan, but Kasper Tomalevsky is the first over the line. That's good to see Jake Fluitt really happy uh, with that third place in the number 36. Takes the award for top rookie as well. Uh, very good stuff indeed. All the Minimax Championship will go to Shennington. It's going to be one again. Now we're going to be calculating the points. Still open, still all to play for. We'll see them in three weeks' time. We'll move on, though, uh, from the Minimax drivers. Well done to all of them. Next thousand circuit, their final is the Junior Rotax class. Penultimate race of the day then, the Junior Rotax Max final. Alfie Briggs has pole position. Jake Howarth alongside on the front row. Jacob Jukes and Alexander Adams Acton on row two. Aiden Hassan, big race for Aiden Hassan. This starts on row three alongside Freddie Ingram. Callum Gorsh and Harrison Morrow start on row four. Harry Pullen and Alfie Thompson start on row five. Oliver Bokov and Sam Ardlino start on row number six. Marion Ubi and Max Cuthbert start on row seven. Harry Hurstgrover and Bartek Filipiak start on row number eight. Billy Edgecum and Jamie Salter start on row nine. And Max Tomkinson starting uh, on row ten alongside Ben Lane with Marshall uh, on row eleven. Well, this is going to be quite the race, I feel. This could be race of the day because, once again, we've got a Fawcett who's been on great form so far this weekend. Right, now, alongside on the front row, a driver who has been championship leader, has been very consistent, looking to bounce back from disappointment yesterday. Jake Howarth, the 19th final yesterday. But, uh, yeah, very much track and Lyman's hasn't had a final win so far this season. How good would that be to see, uh, to see that uh, record broken? And as we mentioned when reading through the grid, Aiden Hassan situation again has used up his box doors effectively because that missed one of the week, uh, weekend meetings so we know he'll be using his two box scores, two drop rounds, two wood scores for that weekend meaning every single race that Sam competes in counts. At the moment, it's not a good record, but he has been able to race very strong indeed. Apart from yesterday's final, it's 15 minutes to make the final. And, uh, you've got to think that for his season, for the one like that, has got to be going forward on fifth place on the grid. Otherwise, the pressure is going to be on going into uh, the final two rounds of the season. Could be handing the initiative to the other drivers. Could be great power. Could be 
this could even be uh, someone like Under Adams Acton. Mathematically is not out of this one yet. Junior road tax drivers out in circuit now. It'll be nine minutes plus one lap. Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. Just have a feeling this could be a good one. That tires up to temperature. I'm sure we'll be ready to go on this one. We may go around one bit. See how hard to work things to get it to temperature. Are we good to go? I think we are. We are good to go. Nine minutes plus one lap is away and good. Briggs gets a good start. Howarth gets a good start. Clean at the front of the order as they go up to Christmas Corner for the first time. See Freddie Ingram to the outside trying to find a way through and oh, there's a bit of contact in the middle of the pack there. That may have been involving Harry Pullen. Down into Ashby they go then. And it's once again, just as we've seen Briggs do in the Junior Rock races, that's the kind of style he likes. Fast, off the blocks, get a gap. Don't be under attack going on to lap two. And that is, look, that's looking like what Briggs has done here. Leave the rest to chase, fight amongst themselves. End of lap number one then, it's Briggs. Howarth, Jukes, Ingram, Adams Acton, Hassan. That's your top six. Great first lap that from Freddie Ingram. Now in the uh, blue or yellow cart. Lando Norris details on the side of it. It's very, very good for him. Trying to get the podium here today. We're looking down the inside there. There's Thompson having a go, and here comes Aiden Hassan. A Aiden Hassan has to make up positions. He's got to go and got to go now. He will feel with the form that Briggs is in, and Jake Howarth as well. He's got to be at least third. He's got to be in the mix. That was a good move on Alex Alexander Adams Acton. It's got him up to fifth. Harry Pullen makes a move there. It's past uh, Kalagosh. That was for eighth place. Enjoy the stream today. Do make sure you've subscribed to Alpha Live. On the inside there, responding, Callum Gosh gets back past Harry Pullen for eighth place. Two minutes of the final gone, seven to go. The edge can be trying to fight. He's gained position side by side there. And someone's going on the grass. It's going to be Freddie Ingram, forced out wide. Under Adams Acton argues on the inside and in control. He's through. Track limit warning, in fact, for Freddie Ingram. I tend to agree with that one. Six and a half minutes to go. The position changes to tell you about. Billy Ashcombe's having a good final here. He's already gaining positions before that last lap. has just gained another two. He's into the top ten now. Look out for cart number 23 coming through the order in the second half of this race. It's Briggs from Howarth. Jutes, Hassan. This is, the, this is going to be one of the problems now for Aiden Hassan, trying to take advantage of every single race that he's in this season. And down the inside goes Callum Gosh. Good move there on Oliver Bocock. Just got a little bit tail happy with the number 35. Oliver controlled it, lost speed. That was the door Callum Gosh needed to be ha have open for him to go down the inside, take that position. That is seventh place. Go back to Hassan, Jacob Jukes, not a championship contender. That clear. Hasn't been an ever present so far this season. Uh, the results was just racing for the trophies and the pride to say that he raced here on this day and had a good result. And he's going to be a hard driver to overtake, your Aiden Hassan driver that he's going to need to overtake in the context of this series. There is Alexander Adams Acton, number 16 in fifth place. Freddie Ingram just behind. Five minutes of the final to go. Good pace for the leader. 45.532. New fastest lap on the race so far. It's the fight over eighth place. We pull in Oliver Bocock. In the edge Look at Billy Edgecum flying in. And Bocock's off the road. Is there a problem? He's looking down at the cart. That looks like 
the Rotax that's expiring and out of the race. Oliver Bocock retires. The question would be, does that need a full course yellow? That's in a, a tight part of the circuit. We have seen some incidents so far today. Let's see from Harry or other Bocock going again. Already, and Alfred Thompson. Billy Edgecombe. Oh, I thought he was going to be on the move there. Just had to pull out of that one. There was a yellow flag out. That'll be for Oliver Bocock. So they're just covering it with yellow flags at the moment. There is Bocock's cart stranded side of the road. It's a real shame for Oliver. On for a good top 10. Ace here today in a circuit that he knows pretty well. Less than four minutes to go then. Race being controlled well at the front of the field by Alfie Briggs. Good scraps going on in the midfield. Still Harry Pullen ahead of Billy Edgecombe here and Harry Hurst Grover also nearby in the number 14. Harry Anubi as well. That pace. Oh, good qualifying from uh, the Marion. Not quite the look in the race. Around a bit there. Oh, Thompson getting into the rear of number 77. No flags out. 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 He's really all stacking up behind Harry Pullen here. Don't look over your shoulder, Harry. Everybody's out to get you, mate. He wants his eighth place. He has at the moment. 1.4 seconds down the road is Callum Gosh. That's warning for the number 23 of Billy Edgecombe. Now, the yellow flag and the uh, up-down cart have been recovered. This will be an opportunity. Yes, the yellow flag has been withdrawn here. Surely down the inside goes Billy Edgecombe. Been waiting for a couple of laps for that. And he's got through. Well held by Harry Pullen. Didn't let the door be open for everybody else to come through. Only loses one position as a result of that move. Billy Edgecombe. Racing with a freedom, I would say, in this final. It's not been his day. It's not been one that he'll probably remember for a long time. No pressure. Showing with the way that he's driving at the moment. Very well indeed. Putting himself through the order. Two minutes to go then. Alfie Briggs looking in that same form that we've been talking about over the last few weeks here on Alpha Live. Took the round victory in this category Wilson Mill Cart Club a few weeks ago. It's just looked so, so good. Trouble for the rest of the pack is we are going next to another surf that you know as well. Out from Banbury. We'll be down the road from Banbury at Shennington. There's a move. Uh, that looks like Alfred Thompson heading by. Mario Nubi. 1.4 seconds is the lead. There it is. Briggs out front. Aweth in second place. Jacob Dukes in third place. Aiden Hassan in fourth. Things to think about for Aiden Hassan before Nali in three weeks' time. Should be able to watch here on Alpha Live. Still in terms of points scored. Good if you took a, a best eight rounds after 10 completed here today. He's still scoring very, very strongly against Briggs and Howarth. They will argue that they've got the points on the board. This Hassan will need to go for an aggressive all out strategy, you feel, when we get to Shannington. Thompson confirmed has passed uh, Harry Hurst Grover, by the way. So that's uh, Alfie Thompson to ninth, uh, sorry, 10th place. Five seconds on the clock. Leader will see last lap board this time around. And be one lap away from completing a very good weekend's work. Secured the Junior Rock title. Took a clean sweep yesterday in this, the Junior Rotax category. 
and is one lap away from completing the perfect weekend, a clean sweep. Now we saw Finn Smith do this at Play Pigeon, it's, uh, Finn's home circuit earlier in the season. Aiden Hassan himself got very, very close to doing it last time out at fullback, all but for a, a second place in the final on the Saturday. This was a big weekend for Alfie Briggs, put a lot of preparation, a lot of time into getting ready for this weekend to see if he could do exactly what he's done. A double clean sweep for Alfie Briggs. Alfie Briggs takes round 10 of the Junior Rotax Max Super 1 Championship for 2022. Job well done for the man from Banbury. Wins by 1.7 seconds ahead of Jake Howarth. That is a very strong weekend for Jake Howarth as well. And he will tell people to not uh, forget about him in the championship fight when we go to Shennington in three weeks' time. Third place for Jacob Jukes has had a fantastic weekend. Aiden Hassan may have wanted a little bit more, but it's good points for fourth place uh, for the number four here today. Alexander Adams Acton has been solid all weekend, gets the top five in the final. Freddie Ingram in sixth, Callum Gosh in seventh, Billy Edgecombe fights through. Uh, from difficult heats to finish in the top 10 in the final. Eighth place for Billy. Ninth place for Harry Pullen. Tenth for Al Thompson. Harry Hurstgrover in 11th. Uh, Romarian Ubi in 12th. Max Cuthbert in 13th place. Harrison Morrow 14th. Uh, Bartok Filipiak in 15th. Max Tompkinson and Jamie Salter complete those uh, who finish on the lap one time that race of 18 drivers, which was over bottom there on lap number six. There we go, a very, very intriguing situation. A very, very intriguing situation there for the juniors. We'll see them in three weeks' time at Shenny. So let's move on, though, to the seniors. Uh, the last race of the day here at Wilton Mill. And uh, let's take a look through the grid for this final. Alex Eads is on also for a double clean sweep weekend, has been uh, cut above the rest so far in senior row taxi. has pole position ahead of William Young, also on the front row. Ryan Mikaleff is on row two ahead of the first of the championship contenders uh, in this category. Joe Weaver will like being there behind those three and look to work with them and uh, Grow his championship lead from the second row of the grid. Carl Dunford and Isaac Ford start on row three. Great opportunities for both of them to get a podium from there. Ben Page and Alex Holgate start on row four. They both have the speed on their day to get on the podium. Tom Taylor and Max Fitton go from row five. Keep themselves in the top ten and go forward. Harry Gibson on, and Jack Davies are on the outside of the top ten. How they love to move forward. Row seven is an interesting one. Joshua Valance, lots of experience round this circuit, particularly in Rotax machinery. Can he pull through and get a good result today? And Ben Davis, championship contender, a lot of work to do there from 14th on the grid. Has not had good heats here today. Lewis Wilde and Daniel Jones start on the eighth row of the grid. Kieran Pepper and Alicia Bradshaw start on row number nine. Kieran Janelli. 19 runners here for the senior road tax final. Coming in, uh, hello to Emma, who uh, wished uh, good luck to Harry Hurst over in the junior uh, final. Did very well. Did uh, Harry in the number 14. Last race of the day, as we say. This is where I... Uh, ...that we've got uh, on circuit today. Right then. Uh, Adam Chapman's been uh, your director and producer here today. John Rack out on the cameras. Uh, Jess, Jake, Darren all out there on the cameras as well. I'm sure that the ship not live has been sailing straight and true. It's been a very easy for the team. Lots of events on. Uh, thank you as well for all of you who've tuned in. You could have tuned into something else, but you didn't get tuned into here. Super One, so thank you for your support. Super One staff circuit as well, and the sponsors, choices, HST Science and Dry Helmets, 
Thank you to Wilson Mill, of course, as well, for hosting this for a fantastic weekend. Last race is going to have a restart. Thanks. That's all of our marshals here at Wilton Mill. Uh, we could not do any of this without them. The drivers safe out there on circuit. Missed any of the action today? Just here at Wilton Mill uh, across the country and watch all. Alpha live streams back on demand here on the YouTube channel. Make sure that you've subscribed. About set to go then for the final race of the day here at Wilton Mill or round 10 Super 1 2022 senior Rotax final. Is that one good for the start? Yes, it is, according to race control. And away we go. Good start for Eads at the front of the order. Running up to the Christmas hairpin for the first time. Oh, bit of contact there, and that's not going to be good news for William Young. He's going to lose a number of positions in all of that. I think that was contact with Ryan Mikhalev. Uh Just as they approached the braking zone, they kind of just met in the uh, just off centre of the second. Oh, problem for Joe Weaver. Joe Weaver on the grass and losing positions. That is a big, big problem for the championship leader. Cart number 40 in the wars on the exit of Ashby. That is not what JWR would have been looking for here in the senior final. Really has been a topsy-turvy day in this category. Eads leads. Nicolif second. Isaac Lord is up to third place. Great opportunity for Isaac Lord here. Carl Dunford as well in fourth place. Would love a podium round here. And Page, we've been saying, is he's had good pace all day. Running strongly in fifth place. Max Fitton's had a great start. He's up to sixth. And Davis has gained five positions. He's up to eighth already. Joe Weaver down in 17th. That is not where we would have expected... Uh, Weaver to be in, well, actually no, make that 80. Kieran Pepper's just been added back in manually on timing to uh, 16th spot. End of lap number two then. Eads looking in uh, just sublime control at the moment. 1.4 seconds clear of the rest of the field. Mikhlef in second, Lord third. Ben Page has got past Carl Dunford on that last lap confirmed. It's up to fourth place. And Max Fitton's having a strong run here. They're in sixth. Weaver making progress, fitting down the inside of Dunford, going for fifth place. That was a good move into Ashby. Got the braking right, turning right. Well, now set about trying to catch up to Ben Page in the number six ahead. Track limit warning for Jack Davies. Only in 11th place. This group here, up by Tom Taylor. Currently, I suppose in the top ten. Further back to see where is Joe Weaver in all this one. Joe Weaver's currently trying to get past Joshua Valance, looking to the outside. Uh, somewhat underwhelming day, unfortunately, for Joshua Valance. This is his home circuit. Down the inside goes Weaver for 14th place. Trying to get it done. Did he get it done? Yes, he did get it done. Just, uh, just balance there. of Harry Gibson. Over a number of pieces of action so far today. Maybe he's behind Lewis Wild. Big lap this he feel for me because he's got to get up into the back of his train and start putting him off. Time is of the essence now. Down the inside there goes Lewis Wild. Nice move that. Gets past Jack uh, Davies. And Davies in there as well. Ben Davies at the moment is in seventh place. Crucially, has moved up to the back of Max Fitton. Max Fitton, Carl Dunford battle. It's completely swung, you'd say, for those two title rivals. Start the race, we're talking about how it's a big opportunity for Weaver, or place on the grid. Title rivals further down the order. Now, complete turnaround. 
Weaver doing the mission invitation job. Uh, Alex needs a corresponding issue, so don't worry. There's a uh, real drop down to 18 place. We have seen this uh, the couple of issues so far to move. I've seen them on screen uh, for month two. Oh, look at that. Ben Page trying to get past number 57 of Isaac Lord. This is over third place. That was well driven by both of them, actually. Firm but fair racing. Isaac Lord could have turned in. Ben Page could have ploughed his way through. Neither of them did. Good to see. Shows that you can go side by side through, uh, through Oziers. Opportunity now for Carl Dunford to stick that one down the inside. Is he going to get fourth place? Yes, he is. Very nice from Ben, uh, from Carl Dunford there. It's Fitton's having a go now. He goes through, and here comes Ben Davis. He's going to have a go now at Ben Page. Ben Page has been mugged off here, and that's the problem. He lost a bit of momentum, I feel with that attempt on Isaac Lord. Look at it now, he's lost one, two, three positions. The space of a lap really has changed things for uh, for his race. The fastest lap of the race so far, 45.455 for Alex Eads. He's just in, he's just in total control, total control of this race is Eads. Not worrying at all about those behind. Running to his pace, running consistently. Look at this, Fitton trying to go past the inside of Davis and has got the move done. Ben Page is going to try and fight back as well. Davis returns the favour. Swapping back and forth in sector number two. And in comes Harry Gibson as well. And William Young. William Young there in the number 24. He's gone back from where he started in this race. Not lost any of that zest. Or moving through the order. Yes, Young has got up to eighth place in all of that, just ahead of Alex Holgate. Two minutes and 40 seconds to go. Two seconds is the lead for Alex Eads ahead of Iron uh, Ecclef. Lord still in third place. He's got Carlton for attention just behind. Just to see them pass a few shot there. Ben Davis will be trying to pump in a few quick laps here. Close that gap down. Ben Page down the inside of Max Fitton. Goes for sixth place. William Young will be looking to take advantage of this as well. Is there going to be a move on down? Oh, I thought there was perhaps going to be Cartwright down the inside onto the toe of the boot. But William Young is better of it. And he goes, well, it's a little bit early in the race, but that's still two minutes plus one lap to go. Every time I look at the timing screen to see what Alex Eads is doing, Purple, 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 purple. Another one, 45.282, 2.3 seconds now. The lead for Alex Eads. Ward's continuing to soak up the pressure from Carl Dunford there in third. Tell you what, ben Davis is being worked hard here today. You never know. Back at the end of this championship, this drive here, 14th on the grid, up to 5th. This is a drive of a champion in making, perhaps. The Weaver is now up to 10th place. He's not giving it up. There he is in the number 40, coming out to find Lady. Now, a bit of a touch there with Tom Taylor. Can be a pinch point on the run up to Christmas Corner, the small uh, kink with the kerb on the driver's right. That was just an example of it. Less than a minute on the clock to go. Still overtaking absolutely everywhere in uh, uh, in this race. Uh, Gibson has got past Tom Taylor as well for 11th spot. So we've been now closing in on Alex Holgate. 88, 89 there, Lewis Wild. Trying to fight through. Here's your fight for third place. This has been going on for a few laps. Isaac Lord and uh, Carl Dunford. And now Dunford goes down the inside. He's had enough of sitting there in fourth place. He's gone for third and got it. Very well done from Carl Dunford. Maybe just aware. And the, no, Isaac Lord's going to go back down the inside. Retakes the position through Ashby. And here comes Ben Davis. Oh, look at that. Ben Davis down the inside. Taking everyone by surprise. 
takes another position. Could Ben Davis get on the podium from 14th on the grid? That would be a brilliant drive from Ben Davis. Last lap board is out. Unbelievably, Alex Eads has had his uh, fastest lap taken away from him. It's Ryan Mekalev is now the fastest driver out on circuit, but this is a big battle. Those two drivers not in championship contention. Can Ben Davis find a way past Isaac Lord to take third place? Ben Page is having a look. A half defending, half on the attack. This group of six carts from Isaac Lord in third down to Max Fitton there in seventh place. Sorry, William Young in eighth. And it looks like, oh, yes, Ben Page has got through past Ben Davis. These are all crucial positions on the last lap of the senior Rotax final. Alex Eads is going to come across the line to take a perfect weekend, makes it look easy, takes the win in senior Rotax for round 10 of Super 1 2022. Who's going to get it on the line for third place? It is going to be Isaac Lord. Ryan Mickliffe finishes in second place, and Isaac Lord, a great, great day. Well put together, kept out of trouble. I uh, do believe, yes, that is a first final podium of the year for a number 57, Isaac Lord. A big, big move for Isaac in this championship. Very well done to him. Had to fight off some big, big opposition there. Ben Page finishes in fourth, Ben Davis fifth, Max Fitton sixth, William Young in seventh, Carl Dunford in eighth. Joe Weaver, after dramas on lap one, recovers to ninth place. Tenth for Harry Gibson, eleventh for Alex Holgate, twelfth for Jack Davies, thirteenth Lewis Wilde, Daniel Jones and Joshua Valance completed the top fifteen. Tom Taylor, sixteenth. Alicia Bradshaw, seventeenth. Ewan Janali, eighteenth. Nineteenth. Wow, what a day's racing here at Wilton Mill for his tenth round of this Super One. 22 uh, series championship do hope you've enjoyed it at home and we will be back in three weeks time on sunday for the nation of the championship we'll have uh, saturday's use set up day uh, or round number 11 do keep an eye out for all those big thanks to everybody here at wilton mill the staff the marshals super one uh, the sponsors to give them uh, one last mention big CWG choices, AST signs, JKH, RI helmets, uh, at Double Dash MM across social media if you've enjoyed uh, the commentary here today. Big thanks to all the Alpha Live team for putting on the stream. Do give them a follow and a like uh, across the social media networks as well. Big thanks to all of you watching from, uh, from home or around the world or here at the circuit. Thanks for your continued support of the championship. We will see you in three weeks' time at Shennington Kart Racing Club near Banbury for the culmination of the 2022 Super 1 Series Championships. Thank you very much for watching. Do enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Until Shennington in three weeks' time, take care. Goodbye.